Chapter 51, Revelation Adrian then spoke to Sirius and Kenlon to get ready. The duo looked at each other and nodded. It seems that they already knew the battle plan they would use but there was still doubt on Marlin's mind. How are those cute monsters going to fight anyway? Marlin thought and did not voice out because it would be rude to his best friend but by the next second his eyes almost bulged. He could see his best friend's soulbounds becoming bigger. Sirius grew to the size of a bear and Kenlon became 10 meters long. He was speechless on the two summons transformations and greatly admired the real form of the two. He was most shocked by Kenlon because it was a dragon. I mean, who in the whole of Pandemonium right now owns a dragon? There may be people who owns wyverns by now but a pure-blooded dragon was a different story. There are three types of dragons that are currently known in the game which are low-class dragons, pure-blood dragons and dragon kings. Low-class dragons are dragons that are mixed species with other creatures like wyverns or drakes. Low-class dragons have some intelligence but not like that of the pure-blood dragons. Pure-blood dragons are dragons that are purely draconic in nature without a mix of other creatures. It is said that pure-blooded dragons are given birth by the mother of all dragons, Delpine using the energy of the world. Delpine was believed to be the daughter of the dragon god, Marduk. Dragon kings are the pinnacle existence of dragons that rule over the all the pure-blood dragons and strike fear and respect to low-class dragons. Adrian then told Cena to guard Marlin and heal him when he gets injured. The magpie then gave a chirp of delight indicating that it has understood its mission. Cena hovered on top of Marlin's head with eyes full of confidence. Adrian believed that Cena could heal Marlin if a he suddenly acquired the overheal status. The overheal status is a status where the healer of the group heals tons of damage and manages to attract the attention of the mobs because the monsters are equipped with the basic AI that tells if their attacks are effective or not. The difficulty of this status condition is that it does not have a gauge or indicator but requires the player to have situational awareness and good grasp of the monster's aggro. Usually, this status could be avoided if there was a tank with a taunt skill in the party but they do not have one. Even though Marlin was overleveled for this dungeon, that does not mean he must not be careful of uncertain enemies. They were even rumors of some dungeon bosses having superior AI that they ignore the taunts of tanks. The duo both prayed that the boss monster would be a simple dungeon boss but Adrian is having this foreboding feeling that it was not the case yet he put that thought in the back of his mind. Adrian then commanded his soul bounds. Sirius use Howl and Ken Lon initiate with your breath attack. Aim for different enemies to divide their attention. Adrian commanded. Marlin was about to ask what else Adrian would do when he saw his best friend's weapon enlarging and his best friend charged to the enemies. Adrian used his skill assault charge to hit a nearby cursed treant. Marlin did not find what Adrian did was strange but he recalled that Adrian has magic. He knows that summoners that get magic would not invest much on the strength attribute because the essential stats like dexterity and endurance would fall behind by a lot but the questions would be for later when they finished the dungeon. He then focused on the battle and started healing Adrian's summons that fall to half health. He used the basic priest skill heal that is the main skill that players of that job class learn on their job acquisition. Skill, Heal. Effect, Restores the health of the target by 100 plus, 10 times devotion stat. Cooldown, 5 seconds. Cast time, Instant. Mana cost, 50 MP. Marlin's devotion stat is at 100. Some people might say it is low but for a level 45 player that is already quite high. Usually, Priest players at his level will have their devotion stat at 40 to 50 because of the grueling task of increasing it which is one of the reasons that there are few players that are priests and even fewer that are not affiliated to a guild. Top guild are willing to invest in priest players because of their usefulness in raids and parties. Adrian is sure that Marlin has offers from guilds but chose not to because of he wants to be on the same guild as Adrian. If Marlin had a backing of a guild he would probably be on the hundreds level by now. Adrian really admires his best friend and treats him like a brother. They even call each other's mother as aunt because even their mothers are good friends. Adrian was not only doing physical damage but also magical damage by conjuring space mines to confuse the cursed treants attacking them. Ken Lon's fire attribute breath is very effective on the cursed treants because of their wood attributes. Sirius on the other hand has been having difficulty because of the tricky branches that suddenly grows which is why Cena's healing skill is focused on Sirius when he is in range. When Ken Lon managed to take down a cursed treant, Several level up prompts flooded Adrian's vision. Cena has leveled up. 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 Cena leveled up ten times from one cursed treant. 
the cursed treant give huge experience but has little to no drop items. Literally, there was no item dropped. Not even, bronze coins which is why no player even bothers going here even if the experience is high plus the immense health of the cursed treants. An ordinary player would give immense effort for ordinary returns but Adrian does not have the strength to complain because there are nine more cursed treants remaining to topple down. When Adrian was occupied in his thoughts, a cursed treant managed to grip him using its branches. Adrian's HP is being drained continuously as he is being squeezed alive. Marlin noticed this and immediately cast one of his offensive spells that are effective on creatures that are affiliated with evil. May the light of the goddess, shine on your atrocity and purge you of your sins. Holy smite! Marlin chanted and something like lightning came down from the heavens to strike the cursed treant. Skill, holy smite. Effect, deals 300 plus, 50 times devotion stat, to the target. Deals double damage to enemies that are affiliated to evil. Cool down, 1 minute. Cast time, 1 second. Mana cost, 500 MP. When the skill hit the cursed treant, its grip loosened enabling Adrian to escape from his bindings. Marlin immediately cast heal on Adrian so he could once again fight and was shocked because of the system prompt that appeared before him. You have saved the favored child of the twin gods. Your devotion stat has increased by 5. Adrian did not want to use magic because he noticed that the cursed treants had high magic defense which is why even Kenlon with an elemental advantage takes time dealing with just one. Kenlon has already managed to put another treant in under 50% HP when Adrian hit it with a space mine it suddenly collapsed. It was then that Adrian remembered one of his titles. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods. Effect, Enhances Likeability for Races with Asmodian Heritage. Enhances Effect of Healing Spells by 10%. Chance to Execute Enemies Under 50% Health by 5%. Adrian has never triggered this effect once or he has never seen it trigger with his eyes. He probably triggered it when he was fighting in the Forgotten Cemetery but did not notice because of the numerous enemies coming at him. Now that he witnessed it, he could not deny it was overpowered. This effect probably only affects normal mobs because it would be game-breaking if he could instantly execute bosses. It also has the modifier chance which is the reason it does not trigger often even though it has the percentage of 5%. Adrian speculated that it probably would trigger under very special circumstances or it could be due to RNG but he did not bother thinking about it now and only focused on the battle. With 8 more remaining, Adrian wanted to ease the stress on Sirius that was busy confusing the enemy. Adrian would cast Chrono Lag on a Cursed Treant when it would almost catch Sirius. Adrian has perfect view of the battlefield even though he moves all the time. He ordered Kenlon to sync with him to beat one Cursed Treant at a time. It would be a difficult battle. Chapter 52, The Truth Revealed Numerous system messages has appeared on the duo's screen indicating that they finished a group of monsters. Sirius has leveled up. Kenlon has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. Kenlon has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. Player Equinox has leveled up. Player Equinox has leveled up. Player Levin Cloud has picked up Cursed Bark X2. Player Equinox has picked up 8 bronze coins. Sina is now level 14, Sirius level 18 and Kenlon level 17. Adrian is now level 21 and is happy that experience is still fast growing. Adrian also noticed that different creatures have different experience gauges. It seems that when creatures evolve or are a higher tier, they need more experience than normal monsters. Sina has low experience gauge probably because it was still a magpie despite being of mythical descent. Adrian now understands why some summoners prefer prioritizing one or two monsters first before others. Luckily, Adrian has no problem with grinding experience since he knows that there are downsides of having multiple monsters at your disposal. Adrian and Marlin took a long time dealing with the remaining cursed treants that they have been battling. Due to the five-hour battle, both Adrian and Marlin are fatigued and their stamina depleted. Even Sirius and Kenlon were visibly tired despite their high stats. Adrian and Marlin also depleted their mana which made them a bit lightheaded. When a player bottoms out their mana, they would experience a status called mana deficiency which would trigger lightheaded status which is a far cry from the way NPCs of the game experience it. For NPCs mana deficiency would not only give them a splitting headache but they would have blood coming out of their orifices which is one of the reasons some kingdoms do not like players because of them being favored by the gods because players never truly die while they could. They are resting so that their stamina would fill up naturally and even eating the hard bread and jerky to further hasten the process. Marlin then asked the stuff that he has learned from his friend. So aren't you gonna tell me on how you got your soul bounds? 
I mean one is actually a dragon. D-R-A-G-O-N. You are like the only one I know who has a pure blood dragon while only a handful of top players could only get low class ones. Tell me, is Ken Lon like the patrons of the Dragon Keen? You know the ancestors of the Dragon Keen the colored dragons. What is his species? And Sirius, what is he? Sirius does not look like the normal wolf species. How did you change their sizes? Can you change your size as well? Also, I had an odd alert when I saved you from that cursed treant. Marlin asked excitedly. Okay, okay, one at a time, please. First, Sirius is a demon wolf. Ken Lon is a fire dragon and is not like the ancestor of the Dragon King which are colored dragons according to the official backstory posted on the forums. They could change sizes because of a spell that I cast on them. It would be quite a hassle dealing with people since they are both eye-catching. I happened to chance upon Ken Lon in a dungeon I went to. I did not know it was a dragon egg because I got the egg from a red salamander dungeon. Adrian said continuously which made him out of breath. What was the alert that you got? Why was it strange? Adrian asked. It was strange because it told me that you are like a favored child of Gia or something and I even got devotion stat just from healing you from mortal danger. I mean aren't we all? That was the backstory of us players. It's not like you are like the chosen one or something. Marlin said amusingly. I think I know why the prompt was like that. Said Adrian while he was deliberating to himself if he should tell the truth. Tell me then. Marlin said as he was very curious. I think it is better to show you rather than tell you Adrian said while undoing the effect of the glamour spell. The spell effect wore a from head to toe and revealed his half white hair, horns and his skin tone. When the spell effect wore off, Marlin was so shocked he took a deep breath before attempting to speak. Dude. You're a demon. Awesome. How did you become one? Why are other players unable to pick your race then unlike what happened to the Dragon Keen? Marlin fired off questions one after the other overwhelming Adrian. Adrian calmed down his Armalite question firing best friend before telling him how he got to his position. Marlin was so engrossed in the story that he became somewhat jealous which Adrian noticed and told him that if he finds an item to change race then Marlin would be the first to know about it. So, you are an imp species from the Demos race. Your race are considered as demons and are different from devils but all the church aligned with good treats you like an evil being which means that the top officials of the churches do not know of this. Marlin stated. I think that they know the truth but are deliberately not saying anything. Devils are actually aligned with evil because of their race compulsions of trickery and generating chaos using devilish schemes. Adrian said with a grave smile. Oh. The prompt said twin gods but from the Church of Life's doctrine, Gia does not have a twin. Marlin stated again. This simple fact actually made Adrian dumbfounded because this was one of the first piece of true history that he acquired when he was just beginning. From what Marlin stated, it means that the world is unaware of the god of death, Abaddon, or more specifically chose to bury his faith. Adrian then recounted the history of the gods that he knows to Marlin and even though it was boring his best friend thought it was really interesting because it means that even upright organizations bury truth when it does not align with them. They probably hid it because people might become scared at the notion of worshipping the god of death. Even I did not know they buried that information because priest player are secretive of their doctrines so that other players would not know of their secrets. Adrian stated like it was an undeniable pact. A few moments later after Marlin heard the story, a system prompt appeared in his interface and he heard a voice. You have learned of the dark secret of the Church of Life. Be careful not to alert the Pope of the truth that has been spoken to you. The Goddess of Life, Gia, has seen your plight and wanted to talk to you. My child, the true friend of our champion. Now that you have learned of the secret that my wayward children has kept hidden, you would be in danger if they learn of this which is why my brother and I have decided to send you to a mission to uncover the forgotten truth. You have heard the voice of the goddess of life, Gia. Devotion stat plus 100. The voice of the goddess was so nice to hear that it felt like your own caring mother was singing you a lullaby to put all your doubts and worries away. After a few seconds, a quest notification appeared on Marlin's quest log. Quest notification. Uncover the truth I, link quest. The Church of Life has concealed the records of history containing the creation of the world. Retrieve these records and make sure that the higher-ups of the Church do not know of your identity. Clear condition, find records of the real history of the world without being suspected. Reward, random epic skillbook, priest class. Failure, excommunicated by the Church is aligned with good. Final link quest reward, unique job class envoy of the twin gods. 
Time limit, none. Marlon rubbed his eyes in disbelief because he did not expect a quest to pop up. Even hearing the goddess herself was shocking because only the Pope could hear the goddess voice according to the higher-ups of the church. But he heard it himself and he got 100 devotion stats just from hearing it. While Marlon was doing theatrics, Adrian became confused of his best friend's actions. Adrian did not know what Marlon was doing so he waked him from his stupor. Are you okay? Adrian said with a worried expression. Marlon snapped out of his stupor and immediately hugged Adrian and stated that Adrian was his lucky star. Adrian then separated himself from Marlon and calmed him down and told him to explain the situation which Marlon happily agreed. A few moments later even Adrian's eyes were bulging because of the revelation. Adrian did not expect that he would generate a quest just by telling him about the true history of the birth of the world and the gods. This means that if I had chosen a priest, I might have gotten the, the unique job class envoy of the twin gods but it does not bother me. I already chosen summoner because I want to enjoy the game first before succeeding in it. Adrian thought. Adrian's speculation was correct. If he had been a priest he would have gotten the unique job class dot but he also did not support that theory because he became a demos because of Sirius. It was Sirius that triggered the event for him in the town of Genesis. The reward equivalent to the unique job class that Adrian got was probably the Asmodian prowess passive skill that erased the Sirius grind for experience for summoners. What Adrian did not know was that there were different triggers in order to get the Amulet of Chaos. Players were just too excited to exit the town of Genesis to be bothered to notice. There was a trigger for each job class but alas ignorance bliss. Let's just focus on the dungeon. We will talk about this topic later. Adrian said as he beckoned Marlon to venture forth the dungeon and continue their quest. Chapter 53, The Adventure Continues Adrian and Marlon decided to continue with the dungeon run since their stamina and mana have recovered. It is speculated by the player base that the time to clear the dungeon also plays a role on what drops the boss would give but Atlas Incorporated has not released an official statement about it even if the players wanted to know. They only released a statement that players should uncover the secrets themselves because the game was made for players to explore possibilities. As the party is going deeper inside the dungeon, they realize that the area is becoming wider. It was then that both knew that the dungeon's structure has changed from what others have posted on the forums. Adrian then decided to go for an aerial view. Adrian sprouted his wings and took to the sky but barely saw anything because of the dense forest. The Demos race also has night vision like the dwarf and gnome race because they have evolved themselves in dimensions with very little sunlight unlike the dwarves and gnomes who got theirs because of being inside caves due to mining or finding rare metals. Adrian sighed because even with his night vision he could barely see a trail which is why he looked at Sirius and spoke. Could you smell anything Sirius? A different smell unlike the smell of a swamp. Adrian asked. It seemed Sirius has understood the question, he nodded and closed his eyes and pointed his nose upwards. A few seconds later, Sirius opened his eyes and barked as if beckoning the party to follow him. After walking for about 30 minutes, they managed to arrive at a clearing that was muddy with another forest entrance at the other side. The entrance is the same as that of the entrance at the beginning of the dungeon which is unusual because of the recorded structure of the dungeon in the forums. The next stage should have been available after they exited the forest and there was no clearing in the original dungeon which means the dungeon has been altered because of the quest that Adrian got. He did not want to accept the situation that they are basically walking blindly to their destination. Adrian was about to take another step when Sirius became agitated which means an enemy is coming. The party readied their stances when they saw that the mud started moving towards the middle of the clearing. The mud moved like it had intelligence and little by little it was forming a mound until it reached the height of a small hill. The party tried to move but could not since they were locked in place. It seems they would be able to move after the mini-boss becomes whole. A few moments later the mud hill stared to form a humanoid shape and it even grew limbs. It was not entirely made of mud but also some dead grass and twigs that was swept up by the mud then it was joining together. When the construction of its limbs were finished, three holes could be seen forming in what it seems like its head. The formed face looked like common mask of a ghost that is seen in Halloween but made with mud. Roar. The mud golem roared with the intensity of thunder and the party finally was able to view the monstrosity in front of them. Monster, Great Mud Golem. Level, 30. HP, 1,000,000,000 slash 1 million. Description. A golem made of the mud in the Silver Moors. The Silver Moor Banshee made this golem with her newfound powers. As the golem was made with mud, it has high physical defense but low magical defense. Its body exhibits the characteristics of normal mud because it was not magically enhanced or another substance was mixed in its creation. Damn, 
it has a million health points as expected of a golem Marlin shouted in surprise before he began chanting a spell. Adrian ordered Sirius to get the golem's attention. He ordered Kenlon to support Sirius if he gets caught by the enemy. Adrian then took to the skies and used assault charge. He flew like a comet to strike the mud golem but was dumbfounded. Eh, I am stuck. Adrian said when he collided with the mud golem and instead of dealing damage to the golem, he got stuck in its body. Adrian tried to get off of the golem but struggle all he might, it did not even budge. He was even getting sucked inside the mid golem's body. Adrian started to panic and struggled even more when he suddenly had an idea. I hope dot this works. If not, I would just hurt myself. I can do this. Adrian said to himself to encourage his resolve. A second later a magic circle formed in the space in front of Adrian and touched the mud golem. Adrian immediately detonated the space mine and was blown away by the impact and was even damaged. You have been dealt 178 damage. You have dealt 38,997 damage to the great mud golem. Adrian flew a great deal but managed to steady himself in the air using his wings. He now understood that physical attacks are not desirable because of the special constitution of the mud golem's body. Marlin noticed this but did not stop his chanting for his spell. He told Adrian that he needed 30 seconds to complete his spell that might help with fighting the mud golem. Adrian then switched his battle plan and focused on dealing magic damage instead of physical damage. Sirius, protect Levin Cloud until he managed to cast his spell. Cena support me with healing. Ken Long use your breath on its limbs until the mud dries and harden Adrian said. Adrian then moved from his spot to distract the mud golem because he is now the target because he currently hold the most aggro. The mud golem then tried a grabbing motion to Adrian but was unsuccessful because it was sluggish and more so when Adrian casted chrono lag to slow it down further. Adrian started his spell casting spree on the mud golem. He positioned multiple space mines on its body because the mud golem was immobile for the time being. It even regenerated the damage that Adrian dealt to it a few moments ago. The mud it was missing was filled by the mud on the ground it was standing. The mud golem then switched aggro to Kenlon who was dealing damage to it using its fire attribute breath. The mud was heated up and started drying up little by little and steam even rose from the mud golem's body as the water in the mud evaporated. Kenlon would then swung its tail on the dried mud to deal devastating damage. Kenlon has dealt 75,823 damage to the great mud golem. The mud golem raised its hand to grab Kenlon and was about to succeed when something exploded mid-air scattering mud like rain. The golem regenerates 20,000 HP per second because of the bountiful mud in the area which greatly irritated Adrian because this means that the mud golem has to be bombarded with dozens of spells to deal significant damage. It was then a giant magic circle appeared below the feet of the mud golem. To be more precise, the whole clearing was covered by the magic circle. Let the goddess of life bless this infertile land and bring about abundant growth. Gia's blessing. Marlin said as 30% of his mana pool instantly depleted. Skill, Gia's blessing. Tier, epic. Effect, gives blessing to a wide area that the player has chosen. Deals damage to enemies by 0.5 of their max HP every 5 seconds and heals allies in the area of effect by 1.5% of their max HP every seconds. The terrain will be converted to a soil with rich properties that promotes the growth of plant life of different species. Cooldown. 1 hour. Duration, 1 minute. Cast time, 30 seconds. Mana cost, 30% of the caster's total MP. Plants of all kinds started sprouting some even with flowers. The muddy clearing started becoming a flower field and the mud became loamy soil that inhibited the great mud golem's regeneration. Marlin cast one of his ultimate spells that he currently has. He deemed it worthy to use because of the traits of the mud golem. The mud golem roared as if realizing its current situation and immediately shifted its attention to Marlin which the latter did not like as Marlin immediately broke into a sprint to avoid the colossal hand coming down at him. Adrian smiled and immediately detonated 15 quantum space mines that he conjured. The mud golem roared as if in pain and Kenlon immediately fired his breath attack directly at the face of the mud golem. The whole party kept this momentum until the golem dropped to 50% of its HP and it immediately retracted its limbs and formed a flying sphere of mud in its location. Chapter 54, The Mud Battalion Monster, Great Mud Golem, Conversion Mode Level, 30 HP, 500,000-1,000,000, 50% Description, A Golem Made of the Mud in the Silver Moors The Silver Moor Banshee made this golem with her newfound powers. As the golem was made with mud, 
it has high physical defense but low magical defense. Its body exhibits the characteristics of normal mud because it was not magically enhanced or another substance was mixed in its creation. The party observed the floating ball of mud and had a bad premonition. Adrian immediately ordered Ken Lon to focus its breath attack on the gigantic floating mud ball and even he did not stay still but started covering the space around it with space mines. When the mud ball dropped by 1% HP, some parts of it came off and landed on the ground. The mud that came off started forming into another type of monster. Monster, Mud Pawn. Level, 30. HP, 10,000-10,000. Description, A mini golem made by the great mud golem of the Silver Moors. It has low health compared to its other golem counterparts but it would resurrect once if defeated. It has the same properties as the Great Mud Golem of the Silver Moors but with slightly higher magical defense. Every time the group shaved 1% of the giant mud ball's HP, it would release some of the mud to form mud ponds which is not a problem but a nuisance to the team. Even if they could kill the mud pond in one shot with a magic skill, it would deviate from the damage that they are going to use for the giant floating mud ball. The party decided to prioritize the giant floating mud ball and try to dodge the incoming mud ponds because they did not even give experience even if they were defeated and have sluggish movements. After a few minutes of struggling, the party managed to finally reduce the giant floating mud ball's HP to 30%. The giant floating mud ball emitted a shock wave that knocked back all its attackers by a few meters when it started to condense into a smaller mud ball which is now only 5 meters in height. Adrian's party tried to attack once again but was blocked by the mud ponds that numbered to 20. The mud pawns showed a behavior that they did not exhibit before which is they grouped up and protected the descending mud ball. Before the mud pawns would just charge recklessly but now they would even intercept Ken Lon's breath attack with their body which baffled the party. It's as if they are being commanded by a general or a commander. Adrian and Marlon simultaneously said. The floating mud ball descended onto the ground and the great mud golem revealed its new form. Monster, Great Mud Knight Golem, Incomplete Version. Level, 30. HP, 300,000-1,000,000, 30%. Description, A Golem Made of the Mud in the Silver Moors. The Silver Moor Banshee made this golem with her new found powers. As the golem was made with mud, it has high physical defense but low magical defense but after it condensed its monster core it was able to acquire average magical defense. Due to external influences, it was not able to fully condense its core thereby making it incomplete. It has acquired armor and a sword by condensing its magical powers to change the structure of the mud but due to being incomplete the armor and sword only exhibits the properties of steel. The Great Mud Golem now transformed to a 5 meter tall Great Mud Knight Golem. It looks like a knight statue that are in museums by made purely of mud. The armor and sword it has looks like mud but has smooth surfaces and detailed artistry that would put a master clay sculptor to shame. The party is once again faced with a difficult opponent because when Adrian tried detonating a space mine that was near the Great Mud Knight Golem and was frowned at the damage he dealt. You have dealt 4,983 damage to the Great Mud Knight Golem. Adrian's previous damage to it was in the 10,000s and now it was only in the thousands which was a big leap in magical defense considering Adrian has magic penetration. The party was ready for the Mud Knight Golem to attack them but it did not. Instead the Mud Knight was standing like a general in the battlefield and commanding the Mud Pawns audibly of course but it used hand gestures which was peculiar. Adrian tried attacking the Mud Knight but was shocked by the damage he dealt. You have dealt one damage to the Great Mud Knight Golem. He ordered Ken Lon to launch its breath attack on it but Ken Lon only dealt five damage which was one damage per second of its breath attack. Adrian shared his finding with Marlon and asked him to attack the Mud Knight Golem but the result was the same but his epic skill Gia's Blessing still did its percentage skill health damage. Adrian was thinking that it should be absurd that the Mud Knight would only be dealt percentage health damage. He was thinking while swatting the mud pawns away when Marlon suddenly spoke. I think for us to damage the Mud Knight, we should deal with the mud pawns first. Since it is protected by some kind of aura when it planted its sword in the ground. Adrian nodded to Marlon's conclusion because it was a logical deduction and he trusts Marlon's judgment. Adrian then instructed Sirius to join Ken Lon in attacking the mud pawns that numbered to 19 since the party already killed the first one that spawned. It seemed that the mud pawns defenses have increased because they could not kill it with one shot but with three to four hits. It was then that Adrian noticed that the mud pawns have the same kind of aura like that of the mud knight. It took a good 30 minutes to defeat all of the mud pawns because they would revive again once the mud pawns were struck down. Adrian was visibly tired because his stamina was almost depleted. He was kneeling on the ground because of exhaustion when he heard Marlon's warning. 
Adrian watch out. Adrian was thinking why his best friend said that when he looked at the previous location of the Mud Knight and it was not there. He then saw the shadow of a sword aiming at his neck and he did not have time to evade. He crossed his arms to seemingly block the blow when the blow did not come. Instead, Sirius used his body to shield Adrian of the blow. Sirius has been hit by the Great Mud Knight Golem's execution blade skill and was executed. Adrian was shocked and used assault charge instinctively. The Mud Knight was pushed back because of the sudden attack to its head that toppled the 5-meter Mud Knight to the ground. Marlin then hurriedly cast Earth Tomb to pin the Mud Knight to the ground. Skill, Earth Tomb. Tear, Uncommon. Effect, forms Earth spikes around the targeted area to trap it for 5 seconds. This skill does not deal damage. Boss monsters are only trapped for half the duration. Cooldown, 20 minutes. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 150 MP. Adrian saw Sirius turn into white particles which saddened Adrian because that was the first time he lost a soulbound to battle. Ken Lon became enraged and his attacks became fiercer towards the Mud Knight and even Cena was visibly pissed because it was throwing a tantrum while flying but it only looked cute instead of menacing. Adrian almost lost his mind when he remembered he has a skill that he has never used before. Skill, Rewind. Tear, Epic. Effect, Rewinds the time for a selected area with a circumference of 3 meters. All skills used in health loss or gained will be returned to the state it was 10 seconds before the spell was cast. Can revive fallen comrades to 10% health if used towards fallen allies and the allies must be revived within 3 seconds upon the allies' death. Cannot be used to revive NPCs. Cooldown, 3 hours. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 1000 MP. Adrian took a mana potion to immediately refill his mana and cast rewind. Adrian almost did not made it but was delighted when he saw the skill effect. The area was covered in a bubble with gears and clocks going backwards as if telling the time was being reversed. When Marlin saw the effect that even the terrain was returning to its former look he suddenly muttered. Isn't that skill too OP? A few seconds later Sirius was standing once again in the area he was executed. Adrian flashed a smile and Sirius looked puzzled but soon sported a battle stance as if signaling his master that the battle is not yet over. Marlin immediately healed Sirius and restored about 40% of its missing health. Adrian seemed more determined in fighting the Mud Knight because he muttered. Let's end this. Chapter 55, The Hidden Bloodline The Mud Knight's HP went down to 23% because of Ken Lon's concentrated attacks but Ken Lon's HP also went down to 30% because of the reckless attacks towards the Mud Knight. Sirius barked as if saying to Ken Lon that he is fine and Ken Lon managed to escape his enraged state. Adrian now noticed that the Soulbounds are not just simple AI monsters that are in servitude of him but the Soulbounds have super advanced AI that could make judgment and even show emotions. The special AI of the Soulbounds should be the reason that summoners are only allowed to own on average 9 Soulbounds, 3 for the base job class and an additional 2 per job class advancement. Summoners could still seal monsters even if they already have a full slot but cannot use the monsters that are not dedicated as a Soulbound. Since the summoner class is just a newly added class, there has not been much known about it and the rank 1 summoner Mariposa is only at level 72 even with the full support of her guild. The Mud Knight was toppled by Ken Lon and was struggling to get up because Ken Lon would strike it back down with its tail. It seems that because of the hardened armor the Mud Knight can now be dealt with physical damage although it still has high resistance. Still with it being able to be pinned down using brute force, Adrian could now do what he imagined and Cyrus could now join the battle. Adrian flew up in the air and used assault charge and increased his momentum using gravity and his wings as thrusters. Others would think that this would be suicide and a waste of a weapon because of durability but his demi-gauntlets have infinite durability in geoforce mode which is why Adrian could be this reckless. Adrian directly hit the chest of the Mud Knight and heard a crack. The Mud Knight's HP directly went to 10% because of the successive attacks of the party and Adrian's high damage that pierced the physical defense of the Mud Knight. The Mud Knight grabbed Adrian who was suffering from velocity sickness and threw him away. The Mud Knight was able to stand with pieces of its hardened mud armor crumbling and a core was seen embedded in the chest of the Mud Knight. The core was spherical and had a circumference of 1 meter. It had a muddy brown color and would shine if light hits it. The party finally found the golem's core that all golems have to function but the armor was regenerating at a rapid pace. Adrian upon seeing that the armor was regenerating immediately used chrono lag onto the golem and was happy to see that even the armor regeneration was slowed down. He quickly cast a space mine on top of the area of the core and immediately detonated it. The mud knight was dealt immense damage and a screech was heard from the golem like two gears scraping each other that the party had to cover their ears because it was unbearable. 
You have dealt 51,521 damage to the Great Mud Knight Golem due to attacking its weak spot. A Golem's core is its Achilles heel because it is where it derives its energy from. It seems that the Golem felt extreme pain from the attack to its core. Hurry and finish him while the core is exposed. Adrian shouted. The party all converged their attacks at the golem's core that almost been covered by hardened mud but was blocked by the shield of mud that the golem's sword transformed into. Yet, the golem started crumbling and Adrian managed to know the reason why. Sirius dealt 363,894 damage to the great mud knight golem using its skill Ragnarok and attacking its weak spot. Your soulbound Sirius has awakened its hidden bloodline because of experiencing the world of limbo. Adrian was happy and shocked by the news he read while his best friend was looking at him at a new light. He is becoming a monster and he is only at the level 20s. Marlon thought while he smiled wryly and told himself that he must do his best and looked at the quest that would do just that. Player Equinox has leveled up. Cena has leveled up. Cena has leveled up. Sirius has leveled up. Ken Lon has leveled up. Party member Levin Cloud has leveled up. Acquired the epic skillbook Execution Blade. Acquired the Great Mud Golem Recipe. Acquired the Core of the Great Mud Knight Golem. Acquired the Rare Skill Book Mud Pit. The party received immense experience points that even leveled up Marlin who had his experience bar 80% filled. The best friends decided what to do with the drops first before they head to the next level that would probably the boss fight. Marlin would get the Rare Skill Book Mud Pit because Adrian could not use it. They decided to auction the Epic Skill Book Execution Blade because they cannot use it anyway. Name. Execution Blade Skillbook Tier, Epic Description, A book containing the skillbook for the Knight class, Execution Blade Effect, A blade that contains pure killing intent that could kill the target if struck Has a 10% chance to execute the target and increases to 30% if the target is below 50% HP Deals 500% physical damage and bleeding if the target is not executed Execution does not work on boss monsters, named NPC enemies and in PvP Cooldown, 1 hour. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 500 MP. Condition, Night Job Class Tree. The execute was a good condition but cannot be used to kill boss monster, named NPCs, and even in duels and is class specific but still it is an epic skill book which would still have high demand. There are also many users of the Night Job class and would love to have a powerful skill at their disposal since knights are considered a balance class which has good offense and defense but lacks powerful skills. Thankfully the auction option is not blocked inside a dungeon. You could place an item for auction but cannot buy items inside a dungeon so that the players would prepare for the dungeon instead of just buying items that are necessary for dungeon conquering. The best friends decided to do a bidding option for the skill since they do not know the exact price but they put a base price of 100 gold which is the base price for epic skill books. Adrian felt slight attraction to the core of the Great Mud Knight Golem and decided to get it. He tried giving the Great Mud Golem recipe to Marlin but the latter declined because he was not interested in alchemy. Golems cannot become soulbounds because golems are not really alive but instead could be made by alchemist and is considered as consumable soldiers but making one takes time and tons of materials which is why good golems are pricey because they are considered as an item that could be kept inside Tiga inventory. If you are not going to use it. I know an alchemist that specializes in golem creation. He would pay a lot just for an epic golem recipe. We could even sell this recipe for 1000 gold at minimum because we even saw its power. Marlin stated. I'll hold on to it then and try to find a buyer. If presented the chance we could even put it onto an auction house because the recipe is upgradable. Adrian added. As the party was restoring their stamina and mana, Adrian decided to look at Sirius's status and was shocked. Name, Sirius. Name, Sirius. Species, Demon Wolf, Fenrir Strain. LVL, 19. HP, 2000 slash 2000. MP, 1500 slash 1500. EXP, 86.3% slash 100%. Skills, Active Skills, Expand. Passive Skills, Expand. Sirius now had a new modifier in his name. Adrian was excited because he knows what a Fenrir is. He immediately checked the evolution requirements. Evolution, Fenrir. Evolution Requirements A. Level 150 B. Acquire the title Alpha, completed C. Acquire the item Shackles of the Gods D. Kill the world boss Fenris Adrian was expecting difficult evolution requirements but did not expect hopeless ones. 
world bosses are not easy to kill because some have territories while some even roam around the world. There were even rumors in the forums that a top guild managed to find a level 100 world boss but was instead guild wiped even though they had player in the 140s and from the level requirements it seems that this Fenris would be above level 150. Adrian just sighed and put the requirements in the back of his head because it would still take time before he could reach those level. He then checked serious new skill. Skill, Ragnarok, Degraded. Tier, Legendary. Effect, deals 500% pure physical damage to the target with 50% physical armor penetration. Cannot be avoided. The user will be weakened for 10 seconds after the skill has hit the target. Cooldown, 6 hours. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 5% of max HP and 700 MP. The skill was powerful but had serious backlash and high cooldown. It would be accurate to say that it is a finishing move. It also has the degraded modifier which means it is not complete probably because Sirius was not a Fenrir yet and he is even extinguishing his health to even use the skill. The party then stood up and walked towards the entrance. Chapter 56, The Wailing Woods The party entered the door leading to the next level and was surprised that the surroundings were vastly different. The dead trees are no longer present but it was a lush forest that is teeming with lively plants but the eerie thing about the place is that it was quiet. Not even a sound of a cricket was present. It was so quiet that it was making Adrian's skin crawl and even his soul bounds feel that something is not right because they are in high alert and ready to pounce the enemy if it shows. Even Cena looks serious but instead of looking cool it looked adorable. As they ventured deeper in the forest, Adrian heard a whisper in his right ear. Go back. Adrian reflexively looked towards his back but found no one there. It creeped him out. Another voice came from elsewhere and it was Marlon who heard it this time and he even felt being embraced. Welcome to the Wailing Woods, darling. Marlon jumped from the sudden fright and stumbled down. Adrian immediately helped his friend up and told him to not be afraid because it shows in his status. Party name, Best Friends Bus Ride. Equinox LV22. Levin Cloud LV46, Fear Status. The reason that Adrian knows that they were inflicted by the fear status was because it showed in his system prompt. You have resisted the fear status. When the system prompt appeared, Adrian knew that this was probably a trap designed to inflict the challengers with a status effect to corrode their senses and mind. The fear status effect was not permanent but it was like the bleed status that stacks upon the user and if the stacks increase by about an increment of 10 then the player would finally be afflicted with the terrorized status that drops stats by 50% for a few minutes and even hours depending on the stacks that accumulates. Adrian has a 50% chance to nullify status effects that are cast on him because of his 50% Asmodian bloodline. It gives him chills that one day he could be 100% immune to status effects. Adrian then ordered Ken Lon to carry Marlon to the middle of the woods which could probably be the location of the boss because the voices are telling them not to go there. Adrian grabbed Cena and jumped at the back of Sirius and told him to run towards the center of the forest. Numerous voices was heard there were some which were audible and some coherent. Do not enter there. Stay away. She she. Get away. You cannot handle hair rumor. Abasushsa. What are you doing get away I. Numerous system prompts appeared in the party log. Party member Levin Cloud has been afflicted with fear. Party member Equinox has resisted the fear status. Party member Equinox has been afflicted with fear. Party member Levin Cloud used Purify. The party has been cleared of negative status effects. Skill, Purify. Tier, Uncommon. Effect, cleanses the party of any negative status effect. Has a 50% chance to cleanse greater curses or greater status effects. Cannot cleanse curses made by gods, devils, dragons, or any being that equals that of a god. Cooldown, 10 minutes. Cast time, 2 seconds. Mana cost, 300 MP. A few minutes later, the party made it into a clearing and wails of different voices started to be heard. It was like four different orchestras playing together. The sound of the wails were deafening and could make your head spin but it all stopped when a woman who was sitting in the middle of the clearing suddenly standed up. There was complete silence in the meadow, when the woman suddenly spoke to break the silence. Era era, I did not know we had visitors. The woman's voice was clear and sounded serene. It was a cleat sounding voice that could woe the gods. The woman wore a beautiful dress that was black in color. It looked like a funeral dress from the Victorian era. She also had a veil that was black in color but it did not hide the beauty that she has. She moved with grace and elegance like she was of noble birth. The most noticeable feature was her long flowing silver hair that shines when moonlight struck it. 
the best friends were enamored by her beauty but was struck by terror when they read her description using the inspect skill. Name, Argent Soul Screech. Tier, Legendary. Level, 35. HP, 500,000 500,000, 100%. Description, The Silver Moors Banshee that has regained some of her former powers due to siding with the corrupt ants. The Silver Moors Banshee was once a follower of the God of Death and a noble of the Krishna kingdom before becoming exiled due to her prophecies of death that she made towards the royal family of her kingdom. Due to being exiled, she used the powers given to her by the God of Death to harm the living. She was cursed by the God of Death because of the abuse of the blessings he has given her. She was cursed to be nameless and to never be able to receive eternal peace. She managed to recover some of her powers back and broke the curse because of the contract she made with the corrupt ants. Adrian was now regretting jinxing himself. He should not have even imagined that the boss would become stronger because of his quest. To make matters worse the previous Silvermore Banshee was an old hag. She was not youthful and was erratic. She did not even wore decent clothes but wore rags and had disheveled hair. Yet reality was different, the boss transformed into a named NPC which only numbered in the thousands according to the rumors. Named NPCs are different from other boss monsters because they have lower health compared to dungeon boss monsters that are in their level range but is more intelligent and even show supreme judgment compared to normal dungeon bosses or NPCs. The reason that the name Silvermores came to be was not because of silver-colored plants growing inside the dungeon but because of the hair color of the Silvermore Banshee that resided inside of the dungeon. The Silvermore Banshee was infamous for her sonic attacks and her quick change aggro because she immediately switches her aggro to anyone that landed a hit on her. But now it is different. The two best friends can no longer rely on the guide in the forums to kill her. All their battle plans went up in smoke because they were not prepared to take down a named NPC. Named NPCs have a tier system to distinguish their impact on the world view of the game. The Silvermore's Banshee now had a proper name which is Argent Soul Screech and was even a legendary named NPC. An NPC king only had the tier of Epic which was divulged from one of the broadcasts when a nation was under attack and a knight player had to defend the king at all cost. A skip in tier also meant a power spike. The power spike was not linear but exponential which means the higher the tier for the named NPC, the stronger it is. Even if Argent Soul Screech is just level 35, the legendary indicator is a nightmare to deal with. Numerous ideas on how to deal with the situation was popping into Adrian and Marlon's head when Adrian suddenly started walking towards the named NPC. Marlon tried to stop him but could not because he was restrained by an unknown force which means it was a cut scene. You should not have made a contract with the corrupt ants, wench. The god of death, Abaddon, was planning to reduce your sentence because he thinks that you have been suffering long enough. Adrian spoke with conviction. Well at least his AI possessed body did. Inside, Adrian was crying because he never once in his life called another woman a wench. Era, era. A puppet of Abaddon dares lecture me on what I wanted to do with my life. Why don't you crawl back to the pit you came from demon and tell your master to extinguish his essence for he is just a forgotten god to the residents of this world. Argent said with a murderous glint in her eyes. The people might have forgotten about the god of death but he has not forgotten about his people. A true god does not need numerous prayers or devotion which Abaddon is. Unlike your pitiful new masters who require sacrifices for sustenance because they do not have power to even apply their power in this world. They who defile the laws of this world are no different from a hoodlum hiding in the back alleys of cities. Adrian said mockingly. You dare demon. I who have been abandoned by not only my people but also my god. You will regret opposing me who is now more powerful thanks to the power given to me by my new gods. You shall meet your god today, demon. Argent screamed knocking Adrian back to his previous position. The party now regained back full control of their bodies which means the fight has finally started but Adrian's mind lies elsewhere. I must never tell my parents about this or else I would be forced to pray the rosary every day. Chapter 57, The Battle with Argent Part I Following the events that happened inside the Silver Moors dungeon when the scream was heard, every NPC and player who held the Oracle job class received a divine message from the gods they have served regardless of affiliation. Even the hidden neutral powers have sensed her magic because she used a lot of her magical powers to conjure up a barrier that covered the Silver Moors which deterred other players from entering the dungeon but they would not move until they were directly threatened by this new power. Some players reported this as a bug when they posted on it online. Church aligned with good message. The banished wailing woman has finally been freed from her shackles. She will bring horror and unspeakable carnage towards this world. Put her to rest. Church aligned with evil message. 
the banished wailing woman has finally been freed from her shackles. She will bring horror and unspeakable carnage towards this world. Entice her to join our cause. All the churches started sending out scouting teams to find the subject of the divine message. The various leaders of the churches even sent their elite team to find the subject of the divine message. A few seconds after the oracles received their divine messages, a world message occurred that shook the whole player base. The bringer of death's prophecy has sided with the corrupt ants and regained her former glory and acquired forbidden power. Subjugate her to bring balance back to the world. If she ever reunites with the corruptant followers, she would bring death to the inhabitants of this world. All player except the ones inside the Silver Moors dungeon heard the world message because Adrian and Marlin were under the effect of the Banshee's scream skill which nullifies even the blessings of gods now that it was empowered by the corrupt ants. Since gods can barely influence the mortal plane, they appoint envoys and do not know if their voices reach them once they start to guide them using their words. The communication for God to their subject is like a pager which is only one-way communication which the sender would hope that the receiver would get the message. This is the reason why Adrian and Marlin did not receive the divine message even though Adrian is the champion of the twin gods and Marlin is a child of Gia. The whole player base was excited because it seems that a world boss has appeared. All the guilds sent their finest trackers to find the location of the world boss. They even prepared for a guild war in case other guild find the world boss first. The top guilds started searching for the special names that were on the world message. Their players who had the scholar sub-job classes were assigned to dig up any info on what the bringer of death's prophecy and the corrupt ants was. Adrian and Marlin was about to charge the named NPC when a prompt appeared in front of them. It was a mini-quest. A mini-quest is a quest that only occurs inside a dungeon and is usually the clue in order to clear a part of the dungeon. Usually mini-quest would entail details like survive for 10 minutes or arrive at the next stage without using flight magic or flight-related skills. The details of the mini-quests that the two received was quite bizarre because it was for fighting the legendary named NPC. Urgent mini-quest 1. Disable the vocal ability of Argent. 2. Deal at least 10% of her maximum health points towards Argent. Reward, clearance of any silver more related quest and 500% experience to all party members. There were two mini-quests given to them which is why there are also two rewards. If this was a normal situation both Adrian and Marlin would be jumping for joy but it wasn't. They were told to shave 10% of her max HP which would not be difficult in a sense but why did the mini-quest detailed it like that? The mini-quest detailed it like that because it would be difficult to even shave some of her HP. It means dealing damage to her was difficult and possibly borderline impossible but the AI of the game does not give hopeless missions to players which is why it was only 10% HP to be dealt as damage because from the challenger's standpoint and stats, they could at minimum deal 10% HP damage to Argent and 15% HP damage at best. The boons did not stop there though because another system prompt appeared before them. You have encountered an enemy individual who has higher persona than you. All stats have been boosted by 50% and skill cooldowns have been reset. The best friends were thankful for the power up and cool down reset. Adrian looked fearful while Marlin was bewildered on what was the meaning of higher persona. The party could not have reprieve because Argent started to move. Argent suddenly started mumbling words that are reminiscent of the old and runic language. Barriers started materializing around her body. She stopped until there were three layers of transparent barriers erected upon her. It seems that although she became a legendary named NPC, she has not yet reached the peak of her strength which is why Adrian had an inkling of hope they could finish the mini-quest. Adrian whispered to Sirius Ear on what his main task was while he ordered Kenlon bring Hellfire to Argent. Marlin was once again casting the Blessing of Gia skill that decreases percentage HP which would really help them of their problems while Adrian used Assault Charge and made Space Mines to envelop Argent. When Adrian made contact with the barrier he was in disbelief because You have dealt 107 damage to Argent's first barrier of the triple barriers. Remaining health of barrier till first barrier is broken 567-1000. He only dealt 107 damage to the barrier using his skill. Even Ken Lon's breath attack only dealt 40-50 to 50 damage per second to it. He even tried detonating some of the space mines and was shocked by the damage. You have dealt 273 damage to Argent's first barrier of the triple barriers. Remaining health of barrier till first barrier is broken 167-1000. Adrian detonated four space mines and only dealt that much damage considering that he had magic penetration. A smile was seen on the face of Argent when he saw Adrian's look of disbelief and she even spoke mockery. You and I are not on the same league demon. Even your giant lizard could not harm me. 
Adrian did not even listen to Argent's ramblings and started bashing on the barrier but he only dealt around 20-30 damage. Argent was pleased of the suffering look of the demon who mocked her as he continued bashing on the barrier that she conjured. She was enjoying the sight when she noticed a pool of divine energy being collected by the elf that was in league with the demon. She was a bit threatened by the amount of holy power that the elf was pooling. She then did her signature move to stop the elf from completing his spell. She screamed so loud that Adrian had to cover his ears while he was blown away by the sonic wave that came from Argent. All the magic that was cast and being cast was destroyed or disrupted. Even Adrian's quantum space minds shattered like glass due to the power of the scream. Skill, Banshee's scream, corrupted. Tear, legendary. Effect, destroys magic formations and disrupts magic that is being cast while damaging enemies in a cone by 1000% of miasma gathered. All those who hear the scream of a banshee cannot get blessings or any other divine intervention would be rendered useless for a few seconds. Cool down, unknown. Cast time, voice activated. Mana cost, unknown. Both Adrian and Marlin's ears were ringing due to the intense sonic attack that they were hit. Adrian's HP directly went below 50% while Marlin's HP was reduced by 30%. That one attack terrified both of them because they were like paper when they were hit. Even if Marlin was not near Argent, he still received tons of damage. Argent stopped screaming and started laughing when she saw the terror on her aggressor's faces. Ken Lon managed to recover and started unleashing his breath attack once again but this did not stop Argent's laughing. She did not even feel that a demon wolf cast his skill phantom rush on her area. Sirius moved in the great area with ease like no one could hinder him. There Sirius was liberated from the shackles of the world and bypassed the barriers that Argent put up. Sirius dealt 300 damage to Argent Soul Screech. Sirius dealt 260 damage to Argent Soul Screech. Sirius dealt 317 damage to Argent Soul Screech. Sirius dealt 292 damage to Argent Soul Screech. Sirius managed to attack Argent about 30 times in the time frame of 5 seconds and deal 11,645 damage to her. What's more he managed to hit her throat a bunch of times and even afflicted the bleed status on her. You vermin. Argent screamed as she suddenly targeted Sirius with curses as she tried healing herself but Adrian saw differently. Adrian now finally burned with hope that they could actually do this. Chapter 58, The Battle with Argent 2 Argent grew her nails into claws and aimed at Sirius. The nails looked extremely sharp when she swung at Sirius because he trimmed some fur off of him. Sirius immediately became wary and maintained distance. Sirius is now the priority target of Argent because of his abnormal attacks that pass through barriers. All that the party has to do now is protect Sirius for 10 minutes which is the cooldown of the skill Phantom Rush. It seems that having Supreme AI is also a weakness since they experience human emotions. Since Argent seems to be the prideful and looks at every person below type of woman and is probably the reason for her downfall and why the God of Death punished her. It seems that in order for Sirius to survive, Adrian has to have a spiteful tongue to shift the NPC's aggro. Hey, abandoned wench. I am pretty sure it was your nasty temper that got you cursed in the first place. Adrian hurriedly said because Sirius could no longer dodge because Argent seems to slowly but sure catch up to Sirius' speed. What did you say? Insolent brat. Argent shouted as she shifted her aggro towards Adrian. Adrian immediately sensed danger so he took flight. It seemed that Argent was not in her right mind because she jumped to the air to catch Adrian. When Argent jumped through the air, she seemed to lose her barriers which the party did not fail to notice. Adrian hurriedly thought of an ingenious but nasty idea. Ken Lon burn her. Adrian ordered as he cast some spells behind her. Ken Lon dealt 10 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Ken Lon dealt 19 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Ken Lon dealt 13 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Argent cast a wind barrier to deflect the flames coming towards her but still received some damage and cast wind magic to propel her forward. Adrian smirked at what she did because she was already struggling. It seems she is still not at full power and is trying to recuperate by sucking the energy from the silver moors but she lost that connection when she followed Adrian to the air. She needs to be physically in contact with the area that she is draining energy from. Due to Argent's vision being clouded by the fire breath that is being spewed by Ken Lon, Adrian used that as cover. Adrian punched Argent's face which is the most valued part of beautiful women. Argent was furious because an inferior demon dared to hit her mesmerizing face. There was a bruise but there was no drop of blood even though Adrian's giant gauntlet hit her nose dead center. Player Equinox has dealt 135 physical damage to Argent Soul Screech. 
Player Equinox has dealt 335 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 159 physical damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 367 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. As expected from a legendary named NPC but can you handle being thrown like a bag in the air? Adrian thought as his eyes glinted with malice. Though there was no bruise in Argent's face, the force still sent her flying towards the quantum space mine that he conjured earlier on. The result was as Adrian expected. Argent was sent flying back towards Adrian's direction and she was hit again flying towards another quantum space mine. Due to the recoil of being bounced back and forth, Argent's mind was clearing and she was starting to think rationally again. Player Equinox has dealt 335 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 159 physical damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 367 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Even Ken Lon started participating with the beatdown when Argent was blown off course and Ken Lon would hit her back to Adrian with his tail. Ken Lon dealt 289 physical damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 159 physical damage to Argent Soul Screech. Player Equinox has dealt 367 magic damage to Argent Soul Screech. Marlon gulped at the sight of a one-sided beatdown from his best friend and thought, note to self, do not antagonize Adrian. This continued until Adrian could no longer continue due to the lack of stamina and mana. Argent was flung back towards the ground which she spewed a few words before crashing down. You would experience extreme torture, demon. When I return back down, I would take my time killing all of you. Argent shouted while gasping due to the wounds on her neck not healing fast enough because of the bleed status effect. Argent crashed back down to the ground. Adrian managed to deal more or less 30,000 damage to Argent. Only a bit more till they reach the 10% max HP threshold. Argent was trying to stand up but was unable to because the crater that was formed suddenly turned into a mud pool that constricted her movement and most of all dirted her clothes which was unacceptable to her. She started searching for the insolent fool who did this and her eyes landed on the elf that did not participate in the aerial assault on her. Skill, Mud Pit. Tear, Rare. Effect, turns the area selected into a muddy pool in which all units in the area are constrained for 3 seconds and cannot use movement skills that uses the lower body. Deals 50% of magic damage per second to all enemies inside the pit. The area converted to a muddy pool would only be activated once an enemy stepped on it. Cooldown, 15 minutes. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 250 MP. Argent started searching for the insolent fool who did this and her eyes landed on the elf that did not participate in the aerial assault on her. She glared at Marlin but he was not faced but smiled instead and was once again casting Gia's blessing. In pandemonium interrupted spells would not consume their cooldown but would have a temporary cooldown and consume the mana that was used to cast the spell. Rare spells with a long cast time would have a temporary cooldown of 5 minutes and an increment of another 5 minutes per rise in tier which means Marlin's skill had a temporary cooldown of 10 minutes. He also started casting the skill when Adrian told him that he was out of mana and would send Argent back down to the ground. He managed to successfully cast the magic this time without being interrupted by Argent's scream. Gia's blessing Marlin said as the scenery before them started to change into a flowery field and Argent started feeling her connection to the silver moor starting to be cut off as soon as the ground she was standing on started transforming. It was even using some of her life force to bloom the flowers and plants. Argent was beyond irritated but she had to admit that she underestimated her opponents by a lot which led to her face being bruised and her beautiful clothes being ruined. She would not make the same mistake once again. Spirits of the damned come to me and protect your mistress. Argent shouted as the invisible souls that taunted and induced fear to the party started to manifest and show their real bodies. The ghosts were like gases that were made of white smoke with the eyes and mouth having illuminated by some yellow light that was emanating from inside their body that was made of gas. They numbered in the thousands and were swirling near Argent protecting her from Ken Lon's breath and serious attacks. Monster, Spirit of the Damned. Level, 30. HP, 500 slash 500, 100%. Description, souls of humans that have been turned into monsters due to the perversion of death magic. They were turned into mindless souls destined to roam the world until they disappear into the void and not be able to be reincarnated. Totally immune to physical damage. When Adrian read the description, he was so pissed because a total immunity to physical damage. He immediately drank mana potions that filled his MP. He had an idea how to clear all the ghosts that has been increasing by the minute. Marlin looked at Adrian and asked him. Do you have an idea? 
I would love to clear every ghost here. Actually, I have. Thankfully our stats are boosted in this battle or else I would not be able to use this skill. Adrian said excitedly. Skill, Vortex. Tier, Legendary. Effect, creates a black hole above the caster that pulls in enemies in a circumference of 50 meters. The closer to the black hole the stronger the pulling force. Deals 300% magic damage to all enemies pulled per second and stuns them for the duration of the skill. Duration, 10 seconds. Cast time, 30 seconds. Mana cost, 2000 MP. Cooldown, 3 hours. When Adrian used the skill, the world around him looked weak. He could feel immense power in his hand. As if a star was condensed in his palm and it started floating upwards. Numerous ghosts tried to stop Adrian and he was about to get hit but the ghosts were repelled by an invisible force which is expected for a legendary skill. It cannot be interrupted once cast. When the star-like thing reached 10 meters into the air, Adrian snapped his hands and an explosion was heard with the sound of glass breaking. Argent tried to use her scream attack but could not because of her bleeding vocal cords. It is even a shock that she could muster words. A black hole was conjured and sucked every ghost in the area which immediately disintegrated once inside the black hole. Argent was even sucked and bones cracking can be heard faintly but the party was looking at the marvel of the black hole and its might. Chapter 59, Weapons Falling from the Heavens The black hole circulating and sucking all the enemies around it that were produced by Argent and even herself and all of them were receiving devastating damage. Numerous system prompts appeared before the eyes the two best friends. You have extinguished the life of the spirit of the damned. Experience points have been earned. You have extinguished the life of the spirit of the damned. Experience points have been earned. You have extinguished the life of the spirit of the damned. Experience points have been earned. You have extinguished the life of the spirit of the damned. Experience points have been earned. Player Equinox has leveled up. Player Equinox has leveled up. Sirius has leveled up. Sirius has leveled up. Ken Lon has leveled up. Ken Lon has leveled up. Cena has leveled up. Cena has leveled up. Due to the immense number of spirits of the damned, Adrian leveled up twice and so did his soul bounds. Even if the experience gained was but a drop per spirit of the damned, thousands would still cause a massive rain that could burst a dam which is why the huge experience boost was swept by the party. After the duration of Vortex, Argent could be seen to have tattered clothes and she looked like a beggar which is a far cry to her previous appearance that looked like a dignified noble. Her hair was in a mess with bruises all over her body. She no longer had the ability to talk due to the her status condition which was read using the skill inspect. Name, Argent Soul Screech. Level, 35. HP, 439,786-500,000, 87 87.95%. Status, Unconditional Bleeding, Intense Hate. Unconditional Bleeding meant that the bleeding status condition would not stop unless a legendary or higher healing skill would be used to stop it which only the top brass of churches could use. She would lose 0.1% of her HP every minute because of her status as a legendary named NPC which because of her state of being, she has increased tenacity that lessens the effect of status conditions against her. Due to the constant damage dealt to her by Adrian's party, the managed to drop her health by 12% which is the more than the required number that they had to deal. They focused on Argent and see if she would make a different move or enter her next phase but she just stood there glaring at all of her enemies and even smiled creepily. Before Adrian's party could even dodge, an invisible force constricted him and all of his party members. Ken Lon was pushed back down to the ground. A few seconds later, Argent started giggling but was unable to audibly laugh and her contorted body started to fix itself back again. Her bones that were not aligned started straightening. The process even made sound of bone cracking which could make someone faint due to the numerous sounds of bones being fixed back into position. Thankfully, Adrian and Marlon are addicted to the horror movie genre that they were not that bothered by the sounds and even the visual they are experiencing. The party started to struggle because they knew that once she was fixed, she would start her assault and they would likely perish if they did not release themselves from being bound. You are bound by a force greater than anything that your mortal soul could handle. You are bound indefinitely. A few minutes later which felt like an eternity of struggling to Adrian and his companions, Argent was finally able to stand upright and with a posture like she did when she encountered her aggressors. After repairing the bones in her body, she wiped the blood on her neck using her right hand and let it drip towards the ground. When the blood dropped, the previous flowery and plant-filled area started to lose its vibrant color because all living things started to wither and die. When the whole area became lifeless, tons of energy was gathering onto the hands of Argent. 
she looked at her aggressors with ferocity that would kill if looks could actually kill a person. When the magical energy in the area was bled dry because of Argent, numerous notifications appeared in front of both Adrian and Marlin. Magical energy has been depleted in the area. Due to the lack of magical energy, it has become difficult to breath. The spirits of nature are weakening. Spells would have twice as much resource consumption because of the depletion of magical energy. It was at that moment that both of them knew that they would be killed and just braced themselves for the upcoming end. Argent fired the energy that was condensed in her palm and it became a beam filled with tyrannical energy that Adrian's group could barely breath because of the force. Adrian's group was going to get hit when a giant sword that was as black as night came down from the heavens and blocked the beam of destructive energy. The sword was about five meters in length and has runes engraved on the glaive that pulsed with blue light. You have read the runes on the Blade of Death. You have not fully comprehended the meaning of the runes. The runes for the Symphony of Death has increased your understanding of the world. The scribe's intuition skill has increased to mastery level 5 from mastery level 1. Scribe mastery has increased to beginner level 4 from beginner level 1. Adrian was shocked because he just read some of the runes that he could recognize that was written on the sword and his skill scribe's intuition jumped straight to 5. He also went from scribe mastery beginner level 1 and jumped immediately to beginner level 4. Adrian was amazed due to the runes and studied them even further because he wanted to use some of the unfamiliar ones. He would definitely write some of them later in his scribe journal after this whole fiasco. Adrian was so focused on the battle that he forgot to check the mini quest if it was properly registered and to his glee it definitely did. Urgent mini quest. Status, finished. 1. Disable the vocal ability of Argent. 2. Deal at least 10% of her maximum health points towards Argent Soul Screech. Reward, clearance of any Silver more related quest and 500% experience to all party members received after the dungeon instance is over. Adrian whispered to Marlin that they are finished with the quest and is probably in the middle of a cutscene which is why they have not received their rewards yet. They told each other that they should let it play out and see if they were really meant to be able to kill Argent. A black sword was stopping her attack which means another legendary named NPC could have been summoned because they cleared the mini quest. Yet a doubt rose in Adrian's heart when he saw the sword but a warrior not coming to grab it back. A few seconds has passed but Argent's beam of energy still did not waver but instead she became irritated because an unknown sword pierced through her barrier and is currently blocking it so that she could finally kill the pests. Argent then stopped firing the beam and condensed the energy into spheres in both her hands instead. Since a beam cannot pass through that sword, I would just have to bombard the whole area until those pests are hit. Argent thought to herself as she once again bled all the silver moors of its magical energy and this time it encompassed all of it which even the RESP onintrients were bled dry of energy. Let us see on how you deal with this attack. Argent said in her mind that she unleashed the power inside of the spheres she filled with magical energy. The beams became arrows of light that flew through the sky and started raining down on the group and this time for sure they were sure of their demise because the sword did not move from its place where it was planted on the ground. Adrian looked at his struggling soulbounds and they also looked at him. Their eyes communicated as if Adrian was telling them, it is okay to rest for now. Do not struggle in vain. He even closed his eyes so that he could prepare for the inevitable. Arrows made of concentrated magical energy are about to bombard the group from different directions when another object fell from the sky. A shield dropped from the heavens and emitted a jade glow that generated a green barrier for each of the individuals in Adrian's group. No matter how much force or how many arrows punctured the barriers it did not show signs of breaking, there weren't even cracks. Adrian opened his eyes because there was no notification that he died and was amazed even further. He looked around to see who was the one who helped them but there was no one present. Who the heck is helping us? Was the only thought in Adrian's mind. Chapter 60, The Descent of the Twin Gods Adrian wondered if it was raining weapons or something because if it is, he hopes it would rain forever. The sword was already a good shield for them then what's more if it were an actual shield. Adrian looked at the shield intently like when he looked at the black sword and he once again saw runic characters of which some were familiar and the others a total mystery. He was once again assaulted by the sensation of having his sub-job class mastery rising. You have seen runic characters that are not of this mortal plane but failed to comprehend completely. Unable to replicate the runes for Symphony of Life. The scribe's intuition skill has increased to mastery level 9 from mastery level 5. Scribe beginner level 4 has increased to beginner level 7 due to discovering runes not of this plane of existence. The sound of the system prompt was like music to Adrian's ears because he could hear his mastery rising due to his unique circumstance. Adrian now has a rough idea on how to increase his mastery level quicker though he felt that deep inside opportunities like this are hard to come by. 
As soon as this was over, he would go to different sites that are reported to have runic symbols and languages but he would only do it in passing if he ever stumble near their locations because his main priority is to level up his main job class not his subjob class. After a few minutes of constant bombarding, Argent stopped because there was no longer any energy in her hands and she was sure that the pests are already dead by now. She did not realize that a shield descended to the ground and conjured up barriers to protect Adrian's group. Once all the dust settled, the look on Argent's face was of pure annoyance because another mysterious force protected the pests that attacked her. She was so furious but she could not move due to the excessive use of magical energy and the forceful usage of it just to destroy these pests. Now, she thinks that they are more like cockroaches rather than pests because they are becoming harder to kill. Argent did not felt fear because she used the power of her new contractors to bind the pests. The binding would not dissipate unless she gets killed or be removed by someone like a Pope of the Church is affiliated with good which would not be possible because she already locked this area with her barrier. What made her worried are the two weapons that came from somewhere. She used the skill Detect Life but was unable to get a response. Detect Life is an epic skill that can be learned by any magic-based job classes at level 200. Not only is it an epic skill but it also comes with hard restrictions. Skill, Detect Life. Tier, Epic. Effect, uses the user's magic power to sweep the surroundings in a radius of 50 meters. Cannot be used while moving. Cooldown, 1 hour. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 10% of user's maximum mana. This skill is used to find hidden targets and when its mastery is upgraded the search radius also becomes bigger. When Argent used this skill, it literally spanned the whole Silver Moors. The only response she got was the pests in front of her which made her suspicious. Maybe it is one of their skills but why use this now rather than earlier? Argent thought and since she could not question them due to her neck and vocal cords barely recovering. She also cannot move due to extreme fatigue due to push her herself too much. She would be able to move in about five minutes and she thought, that would be the end of their life by then. Argent was bidding her time when the sword that was pierced to the ground suddenly became smaller and became one meter in length instead of its first form that was five meters. The black sword floated on on air and suddenly spun backwards and pierced Adrian's chest. Interestingly enough, no blood was spilled and instead he was fine that even his HP did not decrease. Black smoke started forming from the ground and was gathering towards Adrian. He was wondering what was happening because he started floating and black smoke was gathering towards him in greater mass. He then heard a system prompt. You binding force that was restricting your movements has been dispelled by an even greater force. You can now regain mobility. Your body is experiencing possession. Cannot be dispelled because an almighty being will be borrowing your body. Adrian then heard of the voice of a male that was full of masculine energy and force that would make the world itself bend before it. I will take over from here my champion. You are not her opponent as of yet. The male voice said. The black sword suddenly merged with Adrian's body and he was no longer in control. The black smoke became thicker and formed a black sphere of smoke with Adrian at its core. Not far from him. The shield that protected them from harm by generating a barrier flew towards Marlin and fused with his chest. He then received the same notifications that Adrian did when the sword pierced his chest. You binding force that was restricting your movements has been dispelled by an even greater force. You can now regain mobility. Your body is experiencing possession. Cannot be dispelled because an almighty being will be borrowing your body. The shield then started merging with Marlin's body. Instead of smoke, the plants below his feet started growing at a fast pace and started covering Marlin from head to toe. He looked like a mummy with plants as bandages. Contrary to the voice Adrian heard, the voice Marlin heard was filled with feminine energy and warmth that could melt even the coldest of hearts. Let me borrow your strength for a moment my child. The female voice said. Argent who saw this happening started to become terrified because she started feeling immense divine power coming from Adrian and he wasn't even a priest. A few seconds later she also felt the same immense divine power from the elf priest. She did not know how both the pests dispelled the binding that could even bind demigods but she did not want to learn how. Her instincts as a banshee started to kick in and she saw the shadow looming over her. She was predicting her own death. She mustered every remaining energy on her body to repair her vocal cords quickly because she needed them to use a communication spell. She felt like an eternity but it was only seconds in the real world. Argent started to panic because she could feel it. She could feel death's door waiting for her to open it. When she could partially speak, she started shouting words. Lich King. Veldrax. Hurry and retrieve me from this place. 
Arjun started shouting with a hoarse voice and her neck even receiving more injuries as she started screaming for her life. I believe nobody could save you now, filthy betrayer. A male voice suddenly spoke from Adrian's location. The source of the male voice was now visible scene. He wore a black helmet that was fashioned like that of medieval knights in Europe. He wore armor that was made of a black metal that seems to absorb all light. The armor had three spikes protruding on its shoulder guard. He wore a cloak reminiscent of the night sky filled with stars. He looked like a human dark knight but the difference is half of his body is incorporeal. What made his lower half was his cloak and black smoke emitting from below him like it was billowing out of him continuously. Do not be so harsh on her brother. Today would be her final day living. A female voice was heard and it came from Marlin's direction. She had on a translucent veil that hides her face but you could roughly see her face and one could tell that it was extremely beautiful. She was wearing a white peplus which was a long tunic and her skin was smooth as jade and white as marble. She had golden ornaments adorning both her hands and feet and even a crown that was made of the most beautiful flowers resting on her beautiful head. She was lying down on a bed made of roses that did not have thorns on the stems. She looked relaxed as she is lying down with her alluring pose. Impossible. This cannot be happening for real. These were the words that left Arjun's mouth because she could not believe the phenomenon that she was experiencing right now. It was then all the players in Pandemonium read two world messages that would shock them for the rest of their gaming life. A God has descended. A Goddess has descended. Chapter 61, Parizo. The players in Pandemonium were well, how do you go about it, in Pandemonium? The world message indicating that a God has descended was already shocking enough but now there were two. All the top guild, the assassin guilds and even the mercenary guilds used all of their forces to search for the gods that descended. If they get a God's blessing that would be even greater. Even a minor blessing could be an overpowered passive. There were even rumors that these blessings could be upgraded if a player experiences stat awakening every 100 levels. All players be it a noob or a ranker stopped what they are doing and started to search because this chance does not come often. The whole player population became engrossed in a fierce competition to find the the god and goddess that descended. Even the reporters who were supposed to search for the world boss joined the search and have forgotten the job that they were supposed to do. Meanwhile, the two best friends Avatar's soul has been transported elsewhere. Both of them received a system notification that indicated their location. Your soul has been transported to the God of Death, Abaddon's domain. Your soul has been transported to the Goddess of Life, Gia's domain. Welcome to the Twin God's domain in Heaven. Paraiso. For being the first travelers to ever step foot on a God's domain, you have been given a reward. All stats plus 50. Adrian and Marlin's souls were transported in what you would call a floating island above the clouds. At the center of the island there stood a tall tree that its top branches and leaves encompasses the whole floating island giving it shade. The tree itself is peculiar because it is half dead and half teeming with life. The duo decided to look closer towards the tree and was astounded to see the state of the floating island. The island was split into two sections. The other half teeming with life like flowers and animals of different variety which if one step on this area they would be filled with warmth and be filled with energy. The other half of the floating island is a desolate place that is filled with just the beauty of natural rock formations that would awe anyone who has seen it. Any person who enters this domain would feel a soothing and calm aura that would put every fiber of their being to rest. The most mind-blowing part is that it is like the tree itself dictates the partition of the island. When the two best friends reached the tree they were awestruck because they looked like ants compared to the height of the majestic tree. The duo then tried using their skill inspect in order to look at the details of the tree. Name the Tree of Life and Death, Yudrasal. Tear, Divine. Description, The Tree of Life and Death that is the combination of the Tree of Life, Yggdrasal, that is rooted in the overworld and the Tree of Death, Yu, that is rooted in the underworld. Due to the strict rule that only one Tree of Life and one Tree of Death could be rooted in all the planes of existence, the Twin Gods decided to fuse the two trees that represented their beings. This tree is the most divine and most resilient tree that has ever taken root. It has both the powers of the Tree of Life and the Tree of Death. The Twin Gods also call this tree the Tree of Reincarnation because the souls that are deemed worthy to be reborn are sucked from the underworld using its half that has the God of Death's powers and passed through the other half that has the Goddess of Life's powers and is brought back as new life. This is the most treasured possession of the Twin Gods and it represents their connection to one another which is there is no life without death and there is no death without life. The two best friends were still awestruck that they did not realize that their mouths were agape this whole time that they were appreciating the majesty of the tree. They were only woken up because of the countless system prompts that they heard. You are in the presence of the tree of life and death, 
Yudrasil. Due to being the champion of the twin gods, you are not smit by the other gods for arriving at the domain of the supreme gods of creation. Your title, champion of the twin gods, will be upgraded due to your resonance with the tree of life and death as it has grown fond of you. Yudrasil has blessed you. You will now receive a three times multiplier for your experience points for 30 in-game days. You have been bestowed with the title chosen by Yudrasil. You have acquired the new skill Yudrasil's Blessing. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods. Effect, Enhances Likeability for Races with Asmodian Heritage. Enhances Effect of Healing Spells by 100%. Gives the title holder a permanent percentage chance of 1% to execute any enemies under 50% health points, includes dungeon bosses, world bosses, and named NPCs. Adrian was shocked to see that a title could be upgraded because no one has encountered someone who upgraded a title that has effects to enhance battle prowess. It also gives him a permanent execute chance of 1% regardless of what type of enemy he would face which include powerful world bosses, dungeon bosses, and even named NPCs. Adrian could not wait to try out the effect of his new title. It even boosts all heals that came from him by 100% which means his skill invigorate would automatically restore his soul bounds with 100% their total health points. Even Cena's heals would be affected. He also looked at his new title that he managed to get. Title, chosen by Yudrasil. Effect, the title holder has gained the affection of the Tree of Life and Death and would be able to cheat death once. The title holder was given the skill Yudrasil's Blessing. Skill, Yudrasil's Blessing. Tier, Transcendent. Effect, able to be brought back to life if the owner of the skill dies. The player revives with full health points and mana points. The player would not be given the penalty when he revives. Cooldown, 24 hours. Cast time, passive. Mana cost, none. Adrian almost fainted when he read the skill description because this skill itself is a transcendent revive skill and it only has a 24 hour cooldown which would be the envy of all the players that they would probably pay billions just to have this skill. A priest player could not even revive a player which is why this would be the most treasured skill any player could get. Meanwhile even Marlin was convulsing because of the system prompts that he is receiving. You are in the presence of the tree of life and death, Yudrasil. Due to being a child of Jia, you are not smit by the other gods for arriving at the domain of the supreme gods of creation. Your main job class, child of Jia, has achieved resonance with the, the life aspect of the tree of life and death and it has grown fond of you. Yudrasil has blessed you. You will now receive a 1.5 times multiplier for your experience points for 30 in-game days. You have been bestowed with the title chosen by Yudrasil, Partial. You have acquired the new skill Yudrasil's Blessing, Partial. Title, chosen by Yudrasil, Partial. Effect, the title holder has gained the affection of the Tree of Life and Death and would be able to cheat death once. The title holder was given the skill Yudrasil's Blessing. This title could be upgraded if the title holder would gain resonance with the death aspect of Yudrasil. Skill, Yudrasil's Blessing, Partial. Tier. Mythical. Effect, able to be brought back to life if the owner of the skill dies. The player revives with 80% health points and mana points. The player would not be given the penalty when he revives. This skill would be upgraded when the title chosen by Yudrasil has been upgraded. Cooldown, 48 hours. Cast time, passive. Mana cost, none. Marlin almost cried because of the valuable skill that he has gotten. He also observed that he only got the partial blessing and not the full one because he has yet to become the envoy of the twin gods. If he managed to change into the class then he would no doubt upgrade the skill because he would gain resonance with the death aspect of the tree of life and death. This even made him even more determined to achieve the unique job class because of this very important skill which would revive a player upon death and without suffering any penalty from dying when the skill is active. There was a table set with a crystal ball in the middle near the tree of life and death. The two best friend heard a voice in their minds. Come and sit. Look into the crystal ball. The two looked at each other and immediately took a seat and was astounded on what they have witnessed. Chapter 62, Dark Gods Adrian and Marlin casted their skill inspect on the crystal ball before looking inside of it and they were surprised. Name, True Seeing Crystal Eye. Tier, Divine. Type, Miscellaneous Item. Effect, enables the users to view parts of the universe as long as they focused on what they wanted to see. Cannot pierce through areas that have been polluted with miasma or corrupted mana. Users can only see the chosen location and not be able to communicate to anyone or any creature they view using this item. Requires mana to operate. Mana cost, 1, mana point per second. 
Conditions, none. They were shocked because this was the perfect spying item to be ever created. The perfect spying item if it ever landed on a player's hand which would be close to impossible since its tier was the never before heard divine tier. Two judged that the divine tier would probably be the next higher tier after transcendent. This tier would probably be reserved for the gods of the game or any god class type of equipment and you would have to be a god in order to wield those items unless it was like this crystal ball that was made to be used by anyone as long as one provided it mana. The two best friends then proceeded to sit comfortably though they did not know how exactly because they were in spirit form but apparently they did. Adrian then volunteered to be the first to supply the mana himself. He injected his mana by imagining it being transferred from his body to the crystal ball. It seems that the item responded fine and Adrian was glad that it was easy to use. He then focused on the silver moors and more specifically the location of their bodies. He wanted to know what was happening to them because they were suddenly teleported which to be more specific their souls were placed here in Paraiso. After a few seconds, a reaction was observed in the crystal ball. Adrian focused with great intent and was shocked because he heard a system prompt. Congratulations! Due to your excessive concentration, you have unlocked a new stat. You have gained the secret stat willpower. This stat cannot be increased using status points. You have gained willpower plus 20. Marlon read the expression on Adrian's face and asked him if something was wrong. Adrian told him the reason and Marlon just nodded. Marlon told Adrian that he also managed to unlock that stat during his trial when he was trying to unlock his class now. He got it when he was subjected to the one of the test for his job change. After a few seconds, they managed to finally see clearly the silver moors or more precisely a bird's eye view of it. It was like they were using satellite imagery to see the situation from above. Both of them thought that it was pretty cool. They were like two spies using their unbelievably sophisticated tech to see the movements of their targets. It took a few seconds for them to be released from their fantasy and both of them focused on what was happening before their eyes. Meanwhile in the Silver Moors, Argent was sweating all over and was scared to the bones. She did not expect the twin gods to actually descend. It must have taken them immense power to even breach the defense of the mortal realm. They probably exhausted a hefty amount of divine energy just to descend and it will probably be only a short time until they ascend back to their divine realms. Argent then thought to buy a bit more time until her help will arrive. She already contacted the corrupt ant that would help her. Although that one was not the top dog of the corrupt ants, it was still a god from another universe nonetheless. She started to spouting words to ridicule her former god. Well, well, who would have thought that you still remember me death god Abaddon? Argent said with a ferocious glint in her eyes. You would have been forgiven Argent if you had only endured for a few more years but it seems your heart is more wicked than I thought. You have been corrupted ever since I bestowed upon you my blessing. Abaddon said with a sad expression. You were beloved child yet my brother did not expect that power would actually corrupt you. You should have been content with what my brother has given you yet you wanted more. You started turning towards the dark gods. It was a good thing we managed to stop you before you made contact but we have sacrificed a lot in the process. You have brought upon death and destruction when you were on the run therefore we would not tolerate your existence any longer. Gia said in her usual lovely tone. Although the two best friends could not hear the conversation with the crystals, they could hear it in their soul's mind. This would be something like when a person in a coma and when he wakes up he would say that he heard all their conversations even when he was in a coma. Their souls were still connected to their body it's just that they could not control it. The twin gods sent their soul to their domain because if they did not, the two would die and be resp on in their recovery point, save point. The two were also having a discussion about what they have heard. It seems that she has done more damage to the world than we have thought. TSSK, it was a good thing that we were presented with a mini quest or else we would probably have failed my job class advancement. Said Adrian while he stares at the quest log. The game developers would have not made it impossible for you to complete it. Marlon said reassuringly. What both of them did not know was that if only Adrian himself went in the dungeon, he would have just encountered the normal dungeon boss and he would have probably would trigger a different event that would lead to lesser rewards that they had collected. They specifically triggered a main storyline scenario in which the future of the game's scenario would be changed differently because a legendary named NPC was returned to sanity. Meanwhile at the development team office. Inside the room the people were panicking because someone triggered a main scenario that was supposed to be triggered after the Undead King event. They only monitored individuals that are said to be unpredictable according to the Atlas CEO. They only put the player named Equinox on the to be monitored once a month list because of the Dragon Egg fiasco. It seems that the planning director would get scolded a lot because of this. 
he did not expect that a new player would create this much headache. Ah! That player Equinox, should have just soloed the dungeon like he always do. Why did he have to invite someone in from the Church of Gia to boot? The planning director said angrily. He was annoyed because they triggered the event for Dark Gods Rising. He was also annoyed because the specific trigger for that would be that two people who are either related to the God of Death and the Goddess of Life must form a party and investigate the Silver Moors to trigger the event. It would have been fine if the player Equinox went by himself or invited a normal priest class player from the Church of Gia but Equinox's friend just happened to be a child of Gia which is one of the most difficult priest classes to obtain if not the hardest. The planning director had to sigh and give up redoing everything and focused on patching the event. Listen up you fools. It would seem that our work is cut out for us. After the scenario is ended, immediately put a server update notice for 24 hours. We would have to patch the loopholes that were made. We would be here all night so do not expect to get some sleep. Also put that Equinox player on the always monitor list. The planning director ordered. But sir is it not coincidence that they managed to trigger it? Why should we put him in that list? An employee asked. I for one do not believe in coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. We have to monitor him closely because his character is vital to the current undead event. The planning director rebutted and spoke again, modify all the quests relating to the revival of the Church of Death and also we would need to push back the investigate the traces of the Dark Gods quest that those two would receive. Push the encounter with the remnants until they reach level 150 so that we could have breathing space. Chop. Chop people onto your battle stations. The employees in the room gave a sigh and one thing was on their minds, at least we would get paid overtime. Chapter 63, A Glimpse of the Past The twin gods, the god of death Abaddon and the, the goddess of life Gia, needed to do what they were supposed to do because of the limit of the body that they are possessing. They could stay longer on the mortal realm but that would strain the bodies of their hosts and that would weaken their champion and potential envoy. They could summon their a part of their divine realm to the mortal realm for a few minutes but that would either pollute the mana or punch a hole in the mortal realm space-time continuum. The real reason gods ascended or to be more specific made the divine realm was to nurture the inhabitants of the universe and recuperate their injuries from fighting the dark gods or more widely known as the corrupt ants. A system prompt appeared in front of the two best friends and their minds started viewing memories of the past. You have deeply resonated with the will of the god of death Abaddon. He has given you permission to view a glimpse of the past. You have deeply resonated with the will of the goddess of life Gia. She has given you permission to view a glimpse of the past. As if the duo were watching a movie, they saw dark smoke, an unimaginable amount of casualties and the sounds of war. There were the inhabitants that were recognized as people and even other races like night elves, dark elves, asmodians, angels, devils, elementals, giants and even the dragons were fighting against monsters of unspeakable forms and looks of pure horror. There were also those who were tempted by the power that the Dark Gods promised and started transforming into an aberration of their former selves. It was straight up a catastrophe. It was then that the Gods found a conclusion. The conclusion was that they would separate or make a barrier so powerful that even the Gods themselves would not be able to break it. The barrier that they would make would separate the Gods from the normal inhabitants of the world that the Twin Gods created. This used massive amounts of energy in which the souls of those who died in the battlefield gladly sacrificed their life force and the gods almost depleted their divine energy. The twin gods successfully created the barrier with that the gods and the dark gods were expelled from the mortal realm. The more powerful of the dark gods tried to resist the repelling force but was unable to do so and was forbidden from entry. It was then before the twin gods were expelled from the mortal realm, they used the remaining ounce of power they could muster and sealed the most powerful fighters of the army of the dark gods. The totem they used for the seal looked more like a tablet made of some kind of stone which had the image of the Separat on one side and the image of the Clefoth on the other. The corruptant army now without their most powerful of fighters started cowering before the remaining army of Pandemonium's gods. The remnants of the corruptant army were almost driven to extinction, others hid themselves from the world while others blended in into the ranks of the Pandemonium army and bid their time for revenge. The last part of the flashback was the tablet split into three parts and given to three Asmodians one of which Adrian was familiar with because he was the one who have given him his inheritance. They were tasked to hide the relic from the eyes of the remnants of the corruptant army. The three then departed to accomplish their mission. The duo's vision ended and when they looked back at the crystal ball, the twin gods, Abaddon, and Gia could be seen casting a spell. During the time Adrian and Marlin were viewing the memories of the past, this was happening. Argent was seeing hope from her current predicament and she could feel her rescuers looming in towards her location. She just needed to bid a little bit more time. 
she started getting back her motor skills which means her time in fatigue is almost over. She was about to start to run when hands made of souls emerged from the ground and bounded her. She could barely move. She looked at the source of the spell that bounded and rooted her from the ground. Death's grasp obeyed on muttered. Death God. Rel ease me. Said Argent as she was struggling to mutter words do the wounds on her neck. You should just accept your divine punishment, child. Although I love all of creation, I could only endure too much from the destruction you bring. Nature's embrace Gia said. As soon as Gia cast the spell Nature's embrace, multiple plant vines started constricting Argent's body and she could no longer try to even struggle. Even her mouth was covered which made her unable to even utter a word though she could still produce muffled sounds. The rage in her heart was burning hot like the sun and she swore that when she reincarnates she would exact revenge on all of creation. Look sister. It seems she is already plotting her revenge. She is even fusing her grudge with her soul in order for her reincarnation to exact her revenge. How pitiful. The once envoy of the Church of Death transforming into this state. I feel ashamed of my lack of judgment. Abaddon said in a sarcastic tone. Oh brother, we could talk about your misjudgments later. We should finish this now. It seems guests are arriving to crash our party. Gia said nonchalantly. The twin gods actually did not descend because they were worried about Argent but they descended in order to bait a dark god who possessed a creature back then before they lifted the barrier thereby making it immune to the effects of the repulsion barrier. Some of the dark gods did the same and possessed creatures to be nullify the effect of the barrier but it was only the weaker ones who managed to avoid the effects of the barrier. Of course, possessing a creature also greatly decreases their power as dark gods. The gods of Pandemonium then ordered their champions to hunt those dark gods who possessed creatures and they were somewhat successful but some still remained. In this age, the followers of the gods could barely hear or even if they hear their divine message, their followers do not listen to them which is why the twin gods made the amulet of chaos and bide their time for their champion to appear. The twin gods waited for centuries until a person passed the prerequisite to become their champion. They did not mind that their champion was currently weak because it seems those dark gods who possessed creatures started making their moves. The dark gods were planning behind the scenes this time unlike their time when they flaunted their power upon the gods of Pandemonium. The twin gods themselves will nurture their champion to fight against the looming threat. Back to the perspective of the two best friends. The two best friends saw Abaddon and Gia collecting great energy into their hands. They started using divine energy they used in order to descend to the mortal realm. Even Argent could feel the intensity of the energy that the two were collecting. Argent struggled like her life depended on it and when she could not break free, she started feeling despair. Is this what those I tormented felt? Argent thought and then her eyes started having the glint of a maniac. She then lost her mind and started utilizing her soul as a conduit for a magic barrier. Abaddon saw what she was doing and only muttered, foolish girl. He knew what exactly what Argent was doing and he could no longer feel remorse because the moment she signed the contract with the Dark Gods, her soul was no longer hers. She did not notice it but Abaddon and Gia did. Her soul was already tainted by the Dark God she had contracted with and the Twin Gods will use that connection to bring damage to that Dark God. From seeing her soul, they could infer that Dark God planted about a quarter of its soul into Argent in order to use her as a vessel. Now that same Dark God was running towards here because it senses its soul quivering. For that Dark God to come here means that Dark God inserted its divine essence into her even though it only used a quarter of its soul. Told Gia telepathically to Abaddon. It seems it is willing to sacrifice, its current host just to acquire Argent's body. She would be the perfect vessel because she was an envoy of a god. Her body has been reconstructed to handle divine energy. We should almost reach the threshold needed to cast our magic anyway. Abaddon responded back telepathically. Actually, the moment the twin gods descended, they were already casting the spell they were going to use because it takes too much time to even cast what they were going to do. It would not only invalidate Argent's resurrection but also wipe that dark god's existence. Chapter 64, Synchro Skill Soon vast energy was being absorbed by the twin gods, Abaddon, and Gia. Due to them using vast amounts of divine energy, the silver moors started to show life once again and slowly it returns to being a lush forest and not a swamp. The twin gods who started the creation of the universe was affecting their surroundings just by channeling power to themselves. Argent started losing what was left of her mind and burned her soul just to manifest a barrier. The barrier she manifested using her soul was the reflection of her very own soul which was black as night and even had some type of screaming faces. The two best friends who saw this could only utter one word. Gross. The two best friends then shifted their attention to the twin gods who were building their power. 
the twin gods could be seen with floating orbs in their hands. The orb in Abaddon's hands was colored gray with streaks of white swirling in a perfect sphere. Gia's orb was colored green and had streaks of white swirling in it. A few seconds later a creature with what you could only call an abomination appeared a few meters away from the twin gods. The abomination looks like a creature that was the combination of several octopi and squids. It uses it four tentacles each to form what is equivalent to a human's limbs. Its body was an ever-squirming mass of tentacles that would horrify a person to never eat a squid or an octopus ever again. If this was real, even I would barf. Even if we are already used to horror that creature there would definitely win Creature of the Year in any film festival or any other expo. Marlon said with a face with slight disgust. Well the dark gods or the corrupt ants are not really known for their looks aren't they? Adrian replied while still observing the crystal ball. The abomination jumped from where he was standing towards Argent to act as another shield instead of trying to attack the twin gods when the abomination saw the twin gods, Abaddon, and Gia, fusing the two spheres together to form a giant ball of energy. The giant ball of energy emanated an energy that was so fearsome even the dark god that possessed the abomination abandoned its current host and started transferring the remaining parts of its soul to Argent's body while its husk remained there to protect Argent's body from the initial strike. The twin gods then thrust their arms forward and spoke the spell's name. Void Demolition When the twin gods, Abaddon, and Gia, shouted those words, a beam of energy with streaks of grey and green with speckles of white was fired from the giant ball of energy. The beam was fired so fast and so powerful that the grass that grew was obliterated without even leaving molecules. The beam then landed on the abomination and what happened put the two best friends in great shock. They, they, that, thing just, got disintegrated like nothing. It did not even show a bit of resistance. Adrian exclaimed while still glued to the crystal ball. The two best friends thought that the same would happen to the barrier but were surprised it managed to endure the blast to a certain extent maybe at least a second at most until it broke like feeble glass. When the barrier broke, Argent could be seen frothing at the mouth and no longer had resistance and had eyes like that of a dead fish. It is understandable that is what has happened since the barrier that she erected was powered through the very essence of her soul itself. It would turn any other normal person into a vegetable regardless of her being a legendary named NPC. It was at that time that the dark god who planted its god essence into Argent got control of, of Argent's body because of Argent's broken soul. It was not able to fully possess Argent's body as a part of her soul still lingered and still has some control to her body but the dark god managed to control her mana manipulation and erected another barrier using its divine mana. It managed to hold up the beam for a few seconds before the barrier started cracking. The barrier finally broke but the dark god managed to teleport out to safety but was still hit by the beam momentarily. So the rat managed to escape us brother Gia said. It is still acceptable dear sister. We managed to wound him. A wound like that would still tail years to recover and would render that dark god into slumber which would give time for our champion enough time to finish the job. Abaddon replied. You are right dear brother. We must not stay for long or the mortal realm's barrier will not hold any longer and we might bring other pests in. Also, we should not exert our vessels too much or else they would die. Gia said with still a bright tone. A few seconds later black smoke and green light escaped from the two best friends' avatar and was whisked back to the sky. The two best friends' soul was then ejected from the divine realm and once again joined back to their bodies. Then two new world messages appeared. The god has ascended back to the divine realm. The goddess has ascended back to the divine realm. This world message once again shook the whole pandemonium community but not in a good way since they wanted to at least meet the gods and by a tiny bit of chance and hope earn a little bit of blessing. Still the new world message did not deter them from searching where those gods landed. There might be some crumbs they could at least pick up right. A few moments after being teleported away from being fully hit by the dangerous disintegrating beam of the twin gods. A woman was seen without a right arm and her right leg. It was perfectly erased that not even blood was dripping on the damaged holes as if it was stopped magically. Those twin gods. I will have my revenge. I will raise this universe that you two love so much. Argent said or more specifically the dark god Veldrux, who possessed her said. She then spoke again, but first I would need to recover my strength. A few years in slumber is but a, a second for a god. Then dozens of tentacles sprouted from the ground and formed a wriggling cocoon with her inside. Your soul has returned to your body. Your body is in critical condition due to being strained both physically and spiritually. These were the two notifications seen in the system prompt of the two best friends. Their health was in the single digits and they had the weakened status condition. They wanted to exit the dungeon but was astounded by the skill they learned. You have learned the synchro skill void demolition. 
They seemed in a daze but snapped back into existence when another system prompt appeared. All users will be logged out of the game in 5 seconds. All progress will be saved and those inside dungeons can resume once they re-logged back to the game. Those inside a dungeon and fighting the boss monster will be transferred outside the boss room and would be able to re-battle the dungeon boss with the same stats before being logged out. You will now be logged out. Sorry for the inconvenience. The two did not even had a glimpse of their new skills description before they got logged out. The game pod opened and Adrian went out of it. He closed the game pod back again and clicked the sanitize function of the game pod so that it would be clean once he steps in again. Adrian was feeling great and went to his bed to start chatting with Marlon about their adventure. He called Marlon and a few moments later Marlon picked up the call and had an energetic tone in his speech which indicates that he was so excited. I could not believe we got a new skill but what the heck is a synchro skill? Asked Marlon in a puzzled tone. If I would guess that would probably be the skill that the twin gods, Abaddon and Gia, used on Argent. Adrian answered. Are you serious? That is awesome we get an overpowered skill like that. Marlon said excitedly. That overpowered skill probably has strict restrictions and we would probably not be able to use it yet. Adrian said dropping a bucket of water onto Marlon's excitement. Aish. You know I really hate that buzzkill personality of yours. Marlon said in a displeased tone. Adrian sighed and the started exuding an excited energy and started talking, OMG. We got a skill that even gods use. I mean what could be cooler than that? The two best friends started a night-long conversation while the rest of the player base was feeling dejected. Chapter 65, A Day in the Sun Adrian spent his remaining time helping his mother with miscellaneous housework and when he finished them he would go outside to their terrace and look at nature. He was in their backyard and is happily relaxing in the shade of the mango tree that he planted himself when he was little. Adrian could now walk with an aide and his legs are becoming more responsive than before. It seems that after a week he would switch to a skeletal walking aid which is something like one of the best friend of a billionaire superhero war when he had trouble walking. Adrian would probably be reluctant to part with his awesome wheelchair but he decided he would donate it to someone who really needs it. Adrian was never a person who really loved animals but his time inside Pandemonium somewhat changed his perception of house pets. I would like to have one but I would probably have no time to take care of it. If I asked mom, she would probably push the responsibilities on taking care of it on me. Adrian thought. Adrian knows that although their house is somewhat on the quaint side but he knows that his parents were loaded because who owns a house on a hill in this day and age. They also have a number of guards stationed at the foot of the hill. His dad was almost inside his office in their house but he only goes inside like three hours a day and only goes out if his businesses need it. Her mom was the CEO of a company according to his father when they met so it means that she must have had shares in her previous company though she is a full-time housewife now and is enjoying it because she would randomly say that things like this is far easier work than what I did before. It seems his parents wanted a simple house and a simple life that they could spend their time on their family. What Adrian wanted to know was why haven't his parents introduced him to his grandparents but he is not too bothered as his parents' love was more than enough for him. Adrian also has a cousin but he treats her more on an elder sister because his parents raised her because her parents passed away a little too early. Adrian was reminiscing about his memorable times with her cousin Mina when he unexpectedly got a call from her. Hey, how are doing little brother? Mina said with a cheerful tone. She is still as cheerful as usual. Adrian thought before he answered, you know chilling at the backyard and stuff. I could walk with an aide so that's good news. When are you coming back home? Mom and Dad miss you. Mina or her full name Carmina Constancio was a female beauty that embodies what you call the oriental beauty. She has long black hair and small face with big eyes that exudes feminine allure. Adrian's mother once told her that she would probably be a magnet for boys when she becomes a full-grown adult and she did. She has a perfectly sexy body that is not thin but has a bit of muscle due to her being sporty. She was also trained by Adrian's father on anything business related which in turn made her get flying colors in college which she finished early because of her intelligence coupled with her hard work. She is five years older than Adrian and is very protective of him. Due to her business knowledge she earned enough money that would last her until she dies due to the immense wealth she gets from her investments. She now tours the world to accomplish her dream of traveling the world and seeing new things. She has been traveling for about two years and there were only a handful of places she has not visited yet. I finally managed to persuade mom and dad to buy me the game I wanted to play. I also have been playing it for about a month. What are you up to? Adrian said. Oh, just here in the Amazon right now and managed to see a bunch of scientists and planning to invest in their research since it seems promising. Mina replied. Geez, 
you always think about increasing your revenue. You will never get married at that rate or even get a boyfriend at least. Adrian teased. You're lucky I am not there right now or I would have whacked your head by now. I am still young anyway. What is fun about that game you are yammering about anyway? It's just another game anyway. Mina replied. A game. A game. You dare call pandemonium just a game. Adrian said in a voice reminiscent of a movie character. Fine. It's not just a game okay so stop the acting and tell me about what you are doing inside the game. Mina said while shaking your head. Adrian then recounted his adventures and what he achieved to Mina and about the popularity of the game. Mina W.A. surprised because she thought it was just like any other game that have a niche group of players playing it but it seems it exceeded her expectation. She did think that the game would do well but not astronomically well. Mina sighed and then spoke, I should have invested in the game when I had a chance but their investment shares is limited due to it already having about dozens of shareholders and only minor ones were available but that too was snatched up by the other countries. On the bright side, the game is very interesting and by your story, it is why to have different contents that would satisfy anyone. It is like another reality even. Tell mom and dad that I would return at least after two weeks since after my trip here I would like to be laid back like someone I am talking to. Adrian nodded and told her to stay safe and call in advance so they could pick her up at the airport. They ended their call there and Adrian received a notification in his Halo Swatch that the update notes for Pandemonium has been posted in their official website so Adrian went to the site and read the update notes. Pandemonium Update Notes 1. All summoner soulbounds will now be able to listen to commands more clearly and respond faster than before. 2. Some new quests have been added. 3. New dungeons and fields have been added. 4. Father's Day event has been started. Please talk to the special NPC Father Bear for more details. He is only available in one location so please find him. 5. Updated stamina bar to also decrease when hunger drops. Players will now be in a weakened state when satiety will drop below 10. When satiety is above 90 added stat bonus up to 5% during battle. 6. Added new status conditions, blinded, mute, deaf etc. Thank you for your patience and may your adventures be always great inside pandemonium. Dev Team Adrian was not that shocked by the patch because it was mostly an upgrade in life update. At first food was mostly used as a buff mechanism because some dishes increase stats and skill damage but now players must be able to cope with the new satiety bar that would also affect the stamina bar. This mainly is a hard blow on physical damaging classes because some of their skills consume stamina which means if they fall below 10 then their stamina would be consumed faster and they would enter a weakened state which is deadly to any player during battle. Another noticeable thing in the patch is the Father's Day event. It seems to be an event that will reward players with some good items and from the Father Bear NPC, it must have been derived from a children's story. There were also new status conditions that has been added which means new skills to inflict them were added but usually skills with status conditions are mainly used by shamans since they are the ones who mainly buffs and debuffs. Overall the patch was okay in Adrian's opinion. The patch is probably long because they are redesigning a dungeon since Argent desolated all of it. I wonder what will happen to our game avatars? Will we be ejected out of the dungeon or be placed before the boss room? Technically we did not defeat the boss of the dungeon yet anyway. Adrian mumbled as he returned inside the house to have snacks. Meanwhile at Atlas Inc. Headquarters. Dias, please run an analysis on all players that could potentially tilt or redefine the predicted story of the Undead King quest. A handsome middle-aged man said. Detecting, please wait, done. After about a million simulation and probability calculations, there are currently four individuals who fit that category. The player undergoing the Valkyrie job change quest, Frey. The player undergoing the Dark God Envoy quest, Eldritch. The Divine Archer candidate, Ho Yiwei. And lastly the demon, Equinox. Hey, a new one has been added. I hope he entertains me very well. The middle-aged man asked. Chapter 66, Logging Back In and Job Class Advancement. Tomorrow came and the update to the game has been finished. Adrian excitedly logged in back into the game after his morning routines which includes folding his bed exercising eating and then taking a bath. He placed himself comfortably into the game pod and contacted Marlin that he would log back into the game and Marlin replied that he would soon follow. Scanning user, complete. Enter Atlas ID, complete. Welcome user my crafty son. Sheesh, this login screen never gets old. Adrian said as his vision blacked and when it returned he was now in an area that was now a lush forest. It seems the whole area has been transformed. 
It used to be a swamp and now even the name of the dungeon is different. Adrian uttered. Dungeon name, Silent Forest. Adrian was about to check out his newly acquired skill when a slew of system notifications flooded his eyes. Urgent mini quest has been completed. Rewards will now be given as the dungeon has been completed. All quests relating to the Silver Moors have been completed. 500% experience points earned. Due to your experience point multiplier, you received 1500% experience points. Player Equinox has leveled up 15 times. You have successfully completed the job advancement quest. Inheritance ceremony will now initiate. When Adrian saw the last notification, his vision became blurry and his body floated in midair. Smoke that was colored in streaks of white, violet and gray started getting absorbed into his crown and it started forming a blue flame in the hollow middle part of the crown while Adrian was teleported elsewhere. The player base has just logged in when they heard yet another world message. The champion of the end of times has succeeded in claiming the power of the first seal. Prepare for the beginning of the end. The player base reaction was something like seriously our world messages that easy to trigger. Meanwhile the guild leaders of the top guild all have one idea on what the world message meant and that was, the player who triggered the world message has succeeded in advancing to his first job class advancement hence the first seal. By their speculation, the reason his job class gets broadcast means only one thing. His job class is a unique job class that is only available for one person and is probably relevant to the story of the game. They are familiar with this because one of the monster players are known to as Eldritch is currently undergoing this class change quest since he had a run-in with other players during his class quest and he triggered a world message after beating those players that were in his way. Meanwhile the player in question did not even hear the world message because he was in a different world per se. You have been transferred to Limbo. Due to your job class, you have resisted the effects of Limbo in which only the souls of the dead could set foot on. Adrian was transported to a world where everything was in ruins. When you look up into the sky, you will only see dark clouds that is circling like a storm is brewing instead of a bright sun or a moon. He was then floated towards on what looks like a pyramid that was surrounded by an artificial lake with four pillars erected a few meters away from its four sides. Adrian's body was then floated inside the pyramid and what he saw raised the all the hair covering his body. There was a gate inside the pyramid that was five meters tall with two humanoids with jackal heads standing beside it. The gate was swirling with blue and white energy as if it was sucking the souls of the dead inside it. Adrian was being floated closer to the humanoids with jackal heads and he now could clearly see what they were wearing. The humanoids were adorned with armor that was made of pure gold. The jackal humanoid on the left was holding two swords in his hands while the one on the right was holding a spear. The two then noticed Adrian floating towards them and the two could be seen to have a surprised look on their face but only for a split second before they returned to their stoic expression. When Adrian stopped floating before them, they clashed their weapons and the swirling energy of the gate disappeared and their voices were heard. The gate to the underworld will be closed temporarily the left humanoid jackal said. Wandering souls of limbo. You will be transported to other gatekeepers. The right jackal humanoid said as he tapped the bottom of his spear on the ground and all the souls that were queued inside the pyramid suddenly became smoke that was swallowed by the swirling dark clouds in the sky. What brings you here wanderer, the left jackal humanoid said to Adrian. Can you not see, brother? He bears the, the crown of souls. The right jackal replied. Adrian did not know what to do but his game avatar suddenly spouted words. Gatekeepers of the underworlds. Children of Abaddon. I, the current inheritor of the legacy of Havila, implore you to share your power with me. Adrian said with a tone of respect as his avatar bowed while in midair. The two jackal humanoids then straightened their posture and no longer had their playful tone. The two jackal humanoids the spoke in unison. In accordance with the pact the children of Abaddon, the Anubises, has made with Havila. We forge a new pact with his successor. He would be our shepherd in the overworld and we would give him strength in exchange. The two Anubises chanted with their voices reverberating to all parts of Limbo. When the two Anubises finished speaking, multiple colored lights came crashing down towards the sky and started targeting Adrian to which he got nervous and closed his eyes. He thought it was an attack that was aimed towards him but he opened his eyes a few seconds later and sighed in relief that he did not get damaged. The lights raining down from the sky was not meant to damage Adrian but to feed the blue flame that was hovering in the middle of his crown. After the light show died down, a system notification appeared in front of Adrian. You have properly finished the ascension ritual. Adrian then checked his character sheet to properly confirm if he actually really had the job class advancement. Name, Equinox, Status, Weekend. Race, Demos, Half-Asmodian. Species, 
Imp, Lesser Demon. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods, Undead Killer, Expand. Job, Soul Summoner. Sub Job, Scribe, Beginner. LVL, 37. EXP, 4.5% slash 100%. HP, 2600 slash 2600. MP, 1500 slash 1500. VIT, 125 plus 5. STR, 130 plus 25. Int, 130 plus 20. AGI, 125 plus 10. DEX, 125 plus 15. And, 123. Available stat points, 132. Skills, Job Skills, Expand, Active Skills, Expand, Passive Skills, Expand, Racial Skill, Origin Magic, Expand. Adrian smiled and another notification appeared. Your job class skills will be given after returning to the overworld. The Anubis on the right then spoke to Adrian. Speak your name, Inheritor. It is Equinox, Anubis sir. Adrian answered in a panicked voice since he did not expect the question. In accordance to our pact. You, the new soul summoner, shall be the shepherd of lost souls in the overworld. You will be the one to lead them towards limbo so that they could be judged by our father, the god of death, Abaddon. The two Anubis said simultaneously. Adrian then acquired a mission. He read the mission details and had a face that once could see that is full of questions. Quest Notification Shepherd of Lost Souls You as the inheritor of Havila has been assigned as the new Shepherd of Lost Souls by the Anubis as the children of the God of Death. You are tasked to bring lost souls to limbo for them to be judged. Difficulty, varies. Clear condition, varies. Reward, unknown. Adrian was about to ask questions when he was suddenly cut off by the Anubis in the right. Well then that is all, Equinox. The right Anubis said as he tapped his spear on the ground two times and Adrian was whisked away. Wait. I haven't even asked my question yet. Adrian protested as he became smoke and was swallowed by the swirling dark clouds. When Adrian regained his vision, he was once again inside the dungeon silent forest. He stomped his feet in protest because he was not able to hear about the details of the quest the Anubis has given him. It was then a flood of notifications filled Adrian's vision and sounds of dings that irritated his ears that he disabled the sound of notifications because of it. When the notifications stopped popping, he was about to check each notification but a login sound was heard behind him and Marlin's avatar was seen and he spoke. So, what did I miss? Marlin asked. Oh. Not much really to which Adrian replied. Chapter 67, Soul Summoner Adrian was now looking at the numerous system prompts that appeared before him and his soulbounds have flocked towards him enthusiastically. Congratulations! You have successfully completed your job class advancement. You have now changed jobs from summoner to soul summoner. Summoner skills will now be updated. Summon skill has been upgraded to greater summon skill. Seal skill has been upgraded to greater seal skill. Obtained the soul summoner exclusive active skill summon, Psyche Armament. Obtained the Soul Summoner Exclusive Skill Essence Collector. Obtained the Soul Summoner Exclusive Skill Soul Form Manifestation. Obtained the Soul Summoner Exclusive Skill Soul Resonance. Player Equinox has obtained the title Shepherd of Lost Souls. You have gained the skill Dark Blue Evil Eye. Your Inspect skill has fused together with you Dark Blue Evil Eye skill. Received Job Class Specific Quest A Call to Arms. Adrian read each notification and nodded that he managed to get five new skills and his base summoner job skills was upgraded to the next tier. He read the description of each new skill that was given to him and also the title. Skill, Greater Summon. Tier, Rare. Effect. Active, calls forth the soulbound monster to fight for you. Passive, increases the chances of summoning a higher tier monster using soul stones. Increases summon capacity by two. Max capacity of summoned soulbound. 5. Cooldown, 10 seconds. Cast time, 5 seconds. Mana cost, 100 mana points. Skill, Greater Seal. Tier, Rare. Effect. Active, seals monsters or creatures into the soul chamber. Can be used to seal all soul bounds in the sight of the summoner. Passive, increased chance in sealing creatures or monsters regardless of the status of the monster or creature. Soul chamber. A place in the depths of the summoner's soul to house the sealed monsters. Cooldown, 15 seconds. Cast time, 1 second. Mana cost, 
150 mana points. Skill, Summon, Psyche Armament. Tier, Legacy. Effect, Summons a Psyche Armament imbued with the power of your soul and possessing the qualities of your currently equipped weapon. Each Psyche Armament contains three skills and consumes essences instead of mana to cast. Once all three types of skills of the Psyche Armament is used, the Psyche Armament will disappear because it could no longer sustain its corporeal form. Only one Psyche Armament could be summoned at a time. Number of armaments that could be used currently 3, Bow, Pair of Daggers Sword. Cooldown, 15 minutes. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 500 mana points. Skill, Essence Collector. Tier, Legacy. Effect. Active, Empower skills by consuming essences. The greater the consumed essences, the stronger the empowering effect. Cooldown, 10 seconds. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, none. Passive, damaging enemies will harvest a part of their soul and give you essences. The greater the damage dealt, the greater the number of essences collected. The total number of essences that could be collected is 100 and would be increased by 25 every 100 levels. Every 10 stacks of essence gives you 1% status increase. Stacks are permanent unless consumed. Current number of essences, 0. Cooldown, none. Cast time, none. Mana cost, none. Skill, soul form manifestation. Tier, legacy. Effect, shrouds the target with the power of limbo and transforms the target into their soul forms. Targets in soul form cannot be harmed by physical attacks but will be dealt twice as much damage by magical attacks. Grants the target invisibility during soul form. Any form of attack by the recipient or being dealt damage will undo the effects of soul form manifestation. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Cast time, 5 seconds. Mana cost, 500 mana points. Skill, Soul Resonance. Tier, Legacy. Effect, enables you to transmit your thoughts to your soulbound via your soul link. You do not need to vocalize commands to give orders to your soulbounds. Cooldown, None. Cast time, Instant. Mana cost, None. Title, Shepherd of Lost Souls. Effect, grants the title holder the skill Dark Blue Evil Eye. Enables the title holder to accept quests given by the spirits of the departed or lost souls. Skill, Dark Blue Evil Eye. Tier, Legacy. Effect. Active, reveals information about the target. Needs to be seen in order to see details. Cooldown, None. Cast Time, Instant. Mana Cost, 10 Mana Points. Passive, enables the skill bearer to pierce unto the depths of any soul either dead or alive. Can also assess the quality of the soul. Beings of higher realms could nullify this effect. Cooldown, none. Cast time, none. Mana cost, none. Quest notification. A call to arms. Due to the attack on your predecessor, some of the Psyche armaments have been scattered throughout the continent. Retrieve the remaining Psyche armaments in order to claim back what was once your predecessor which is now yours. Your soul crown will react when a Psyche armament is near your location. Difficulty, varies. Clear condition, when the remaining four Psyche armaments have been reclaimed. Reward, unknown. Adrian was relieved that he managed to succeed in advancing to his next job class. He was a bit depressed though because not all of the Psyche armaments have been recorded but if he thought about it. It must be something akin to getting new skills through the job instructor. Since he does not have a job instructor, the mission given to him must be something of a guide to him. A normal player with a job would have to go to a job instructor and apply for his job advancement. When the player succeeds a job advancement, the job instructor will award him the job change item and that player could get skills pertaining to their new job class. Since my predecessor is technically passed on to the afterlife, I have no job instructor. Well at least I got tons of passive skills. Adrian sighed as if having a headache. Adrian was in deep thought when his best friend woke him up from his trance. Dude. Hilu. What new skills did you get? Asked Marlin with an enthusiastic tone. Oh. Wait, I'll send a screenshot to you. Adrian replied. As Marlin was reading the skill details, his eyes started bulging but he was not that shocked because he too possessed some skills that were strong due to his hidden class but this was the first he encountered a skill with a tier rating of legacy. He doubts that his best friend was lying about his job class just being a hidden job class. 
Adrian did tell him that he inherited his job class and it was likely that Adrian's job class was one of the unique job classes but his best friend has just not realized it yet. Adrian was the reason he got a quest to unlock a unique job class so it makes a bit of sense that his best friend possess a unique job class. He put it in the back of his mind as he was more interested on the skills now. What do you think the legacy tier mean? Also can you use your new active skill? I wanna see the effects because you know I like cool and flashy skill effects. Marlon teased. Legacy probably mean that I inherited the skill since I had like an inheritance ceremony or something. I'll use the skill now then. Adrian answered and prepared to use his skill. Which weapon should I summon then? Asked Adrian earnestly. How about you summon the sword armament? It is the most basic of weapons. Still I am surprised that a summoner could actually summon weapons. LOL. Marlon answered with eyes sparkling. Summon, Psyche Armament Sword Adrian chanted. The blue flame on top of Adrian's crown disappeared and reappeared in front of him. The flame shined bright and his demi-gauntlets started receding from his hand and started to fall off from his and towards the blue flame. The violet scales of the demi-gauntlets became the sword's hilt. The cross guard was the same as the hilt with the scaly texture and the orbs located in the middle of the demi-gauntlets became the centerpiece of the cross guard. The orbs became somewhat of a case for the most eerie part of the sword which is an ITHST moves as if surveying its surroundings. The flames burned brighter and a whitish blue blade popped out of the cross guard. There was only one word that the two best friends uttered when they saw this skill animation which was, wicked. Adrian swung it a few times and he felt that the sword almost had no weight. He once again read the skill description to check if the sword did have the same properties as that of his demi-gauntlets and he uttered the magic word, Geoforce. The sword enlarged and became the size of a great sword that was as big as Adrian himself and the most ridiculous of all it weighed close to nothing. Adrian then remembered something important after swinging the enlarged sword a bunch of times like it was a hollow plastic toy. He remembered that he still has not checked the synchro skill that he and Marlon got. Have you looked at the synchro skill that we got? Asked Adrian. Not yet. I did not view it yet because I am more interested in your new job class skills. Marlon answered. Let's check it then. Adrian said as he opened the skill interface while his eyes immediately bulged and he heard a thud beside him. It seems his best friend fainted. Chapter 68, Parting Ways When Adrian heard a thud sound from his back and learned it was from Marlon, he was not surprised because even he would faint from the skill details that he read. Skill, Void Demolition, Death Energy Half. Tier, Divine. Type, Synchro Skill. Effect, Commune with the powers of the God of Death, Abaddon, to gather all death attribute energy in the surroundings and form it into a sphere of astronomical energy. Once sufficient energy has been accumulated, combine this energy to its other half void demolition, life energy half. When both halves combine, fire a beam of concentrated null energy in a straight line of about 100 meters and 10 meters wide. This skills deals 10,000% of both users physical and magical damage as true damage. Gains 10% chance to execute enemies under 20% health points. Cannot be disrupted when channeling but both users are still vulnerable to damage. Cannot be used when the other half has not been channeled together with the user. Both users must be at least 2 meters apart in order to cast. Cooldown, 30 days. Cast time, 30 minutes. Mana cost, 90% of maximum mana points of both users and 30% maximum health points of both users. Restrictions, obtain third status awakening. Adrian told Marlon to send his skill description if they have similarities but it seems the skill is a bit different. Adrian even slapped Marlon's cheeks to wake him up of his fantasizing of being something like a last boss character that he has been murmuring a few seconds after his collapse. Skill, Void Demolition, Life Energy Half. Tier, Divine. Type, Synchro Skill. Effect, Commune with the powers of the Goddess of Life, Gia, to gather all life attribute energy in the surroundings and form it into a sphere of astronomical energy. Once sufficient energy has been accumulated, Combine this energy to its other half void demolition, death energy half. When both halves combine, fire a beam of concentrated null energy in a straight line of about 100 meters and 10 meters wide. This skills deals 10,000% of both users' physical and magical damage as true damage. Gains 10% chance to execute enemies under 20% health points. Cannot be disrupted when channeling but both users are still vulnerable to damage. Cannot be used when the other half has not been channeled together with the user. Both users must be at least 2 meters apart in order to cast. Cooldown, 30 days. Cast time, 
30 minutes. Mana cost, 90% of maximum mana points of both users and 30% maximum health points of both users. Restrictions, 150,000 devotion stat. Adrian smiled wryly at the skill. The skill might be overpowered and deals true damage but it also came with lots of restrictions. Adrian's restriction is that he should have his third stat awakening while Marlin's was the 150,000 devotion stat that would more or less be attained at the same time as his third stat awakening also. They have a divine tier skill that they are years in the making to even use but nevertheless, the two treated the restriction as a challenge and they even bet each other on who would lift their restriction first. Look at me my friend for I will become a grinding machine for the next 30 days. Ha ha ha. Adrian declared boldly. Well, you need to catch up buddy. I am already ahead of you by 20 levels. He <laughs> he. Replied Marlin in a I am better than you tone. I think I'll return first to the paradox planes. What are you going to do? Asked Adrian. I'll jump straight into investigating the Church of Life and pick up missions along the way. You know two birds, one stone sort of thing. Marlin answered. I will probably clear some field monsters and go into dungeons to familiarize myself with my new skills. If you need any help you can call me. I will be sure to show up since I kind of owe you one for helping me here. Adrian said with conviction. Don't stress about it dude. What are friends for? I will head out first then I am a bit excited in accomplishing this quest you see. See you later. Marlin said while saluting and then heading towards the portal as he disappeared from Adrian's vision. Before Adrian left he read a few system notifications that he passed by because it did not tell him about his new job class skills or details. Due to your skill demo score that doubles your status point inquisition, you will not have bonus status points that is given during job advancements. Requirements for next job class advancement shall be given when player reaches level 150. Adrian thought that this would happen because double status points in itself is overpowered. He did not get the bonus 100 status points but he did not fret over it. It was only about 30 or so levels that he needed to grind anyway to get them. In the end, he had permanent double stat points while others only get them during job advancements. The locked job class advancement quest was a load off of his mind because he does not want to be pressured in completing it since he has a lot on his plate currently. Will others of the same race as I am get the same treatment when I unlock the demos race? This was the question in Adrian's mind. Adrian was now left inside the boss dungeon inside before tearing up one of the teleportation scrolls that he was given. Adrian and his soulbounds reappeared before the paradox planes and he hurried towards the portal site in order to test his new skills to familiarize himself with it. He picked an area that was not infested with other players and was five levels higher than him because he has a new goal and that is to become a greater demon. He looked at the quest that was given to him by a scholar to see his progress. Quest Log Awaken the Persona, Ongoing a scholar wants you to become stronger so that you could rise to the top. He sees promise in you so do not fail him. Clear condition, become a greater demon. Reward, epic spatial magic skillbook. Requirements. A. Reach level 50. B. Condense your demos core. C. Defeat enemies 5 levels higher than you, 31 slash 100. He also has another quest that slipped his mind because he was busy with his class advancement quests. This was a bit urgent due to it being a time-limited quest. Quest Log Ancient Heroes 3 The twin gods, Gia and Abaddon, are pleased that you managed to get one of the three relics used to seal the breach made by the corrupt ants. Now they want you to find traces of the undead king and find the group of acolytes that plans to revive him. Clear conditions, find traces of the undead king and acolytes. Reward, Weapon Enhancement Stones X10 the quest did not have a time stamp on it but Adrian knows that if someone was faster than him to find the clues and if they managed to find all of it then this quest would be deemed as failed. The dark god that possessed Argent seems to be irrelevant to the Undead King event and is not part of it since it did not trigger this quest. Adrian calmed himself and managed his breath to focus. Ahu. Breath in and out. Adrian murmured and then thought to himself, there is no need to rush. Rushing often leads to mistakes. If the quest vanishes then it means I am not yet good enough and should train even harder to cover what I lack. Adrian then went to a spatial fracture that lead to a field called Thrall Plateau where there are trolls in the level 40s all the way to level 200 depending on how deep you venture in the field area because it is vast. Adrian used his skill glamour and polymorphed his soulbounds before jumping straight into the spatial fracture with them. Meanwhile in a cave somewhere deep inside a mountain, a cocoon made of wriggling tentacles that numbered in about a hundred. 
a young man that was dressed in a black robe with unknown symbols written on it and the symbols pulses eerily in red light. He took off his hood revealing his silver-colored hair and his eyes with black pupils and red corneas that made him seem like an absolute villain that must be defeated by humanity. The young man then spoke in a tone that seems like what horror movie directors use when a person is possessed by an entity. Look at your pathetic state Veldrix. It is funny looking at you in that state. The young man said in a mocking tone. The cocoon seemed to have reacted to the insult and the tentacles vibrated and formed a makeshift mouth but crazily enough, the mouth that formed spewed words. You dare mock me when you are just using a proxy to even just speak to me. Who is the weak one here? When I regain my strength, I will be unstoppable. The tentacle mouth declared like it was a fact. I did not come here to fight. I came here to form an alliance with you since you need help and I need your help. Think about my offer when I return in the following days. The young man uttered and he disappeared with a puff of black smoke. Chapter 68, Parting Ways When Adrian heard a thud sound from his back and learned it was from Marlin, he was not surprised because even he would faint from the skill details that he read. Skill, Void Demolition, Death Energy Half. Tier, Divine. Type, Synchro Skill. Effect, Commune with the powers of the God of Death, Abaddon to gather all death attribute energy in the surroundings and form it into a sphere of astronomical energy. Once sufficient energy has been accumulated, combine this energy to its other half void demolition, life energy half. When both halves combine, fire a beam of concentrated null energy in a straight line of about 100 meters and 10 meters wide. This skills deals 10,000% of both users physical and magical damage as true damage. Gains 10% chance to execute enemies under 20% health points. Cannot be disrupted when channeling but both users are still vulnerable to damage. Cannot be used when the other half has not been channeled together with the user. Both users must be at least 2 meters apart in order to cast. Cool down, 30 days. Cast time, 30 minutes. Mana cost, 90% of maximum mana points of both users and 30% maximum health points of both users. Restrictions, obtain third status awakening. Adrian told Marlin to send his skill description if they have similarities but it seems the skill is a bit different. Adrian even slapped Marlin's cheeks to wake him up of his fantasizing of being something like a last boss character that he has been murmuring a few seconds after his collapse. Skill, Void Demolition, Life Energy Half. Tier, Divine. Type, Synchro Skill. Effect, Commune with the powers of the Goddess of Life, Gia to gather all life attribute energy in the surroundings and form it into a sphere of astronomical energy. Once sufficient energy has been accumulated, combine this energy to its other half void demolition, death energy half. When both halves combine, fire a beam of concentrated null energy in a straight line of about 100 meters and 10 meters wide. This skills deals 10,000% of both user's physical and magical damage as true damage. Gains 10% chance to execute enemies under 20% health points. Cannot be disrupted when channeling but both users are still vulnerable to damage. Cannot be used when the other half has not been channeled together with the user. Both users must be at least 2 meters apart in order to cast. Cool down, 30 days. Cast time, 30 minutes. Mana cost, 90% of maximum mana points of both users and 30% maximum health points of both users. Restrictions, 150,000 devotion stat. Adrian smiled wryly at the skill. The skill might be overpowered and deals true damage but it also came with lots of restrictions. Adrian's restriction is that he should have his third stat awakening while Marlin's was the 150,000 devotion stat that would more or less be attained at the same time as his third stat awakening also. They have a divine tier skill that they are years in the making to even use but nevertheless, the two treated the restriction as a challenge and they even bet each other on who would lift their restriction first. Look at me my friend for I will become a grinding machine for the next 30 days. Ha ha ha. Adrian declared boldly. Well, you need to catch up buddy. I am already ahead of you by 20 levels. He <laughs> he. Replied Marlin in a I am better than you tone. I think I'll return first to the paradox planes. What are you going to do? Asked Adrian. I'll jump straight into investigating the church of life and pick up missions along the way. You know two birds, one stone sort of thing. Marlin answered. I will probably clear some field monsters and go into dungeons to familiarize myself with my new skills. If you need any help you can call me. I will be sure to show up since I kind of owe you one for helping me here. Adrian said with conviction. Don't stress about it dude. What are friends for? 
I will head out first then I am a bit excited in accomplishing this quest you see. See you later. Marlon said while saluting and then heading towards the portal as he disappeared from Adrian's vision. Before Adrian left he read a few system notifications that he passed by because it did not tell him about his new job class skills or details. Due to your skill demos core that doubles your status point inquisition, you will not have bonus status points that is given during job advancements. Requirements for next job class advancement shall be given when player reaches level 150. Adrian thought that this would happen because double status points in itself is overpowered. He did not get the bonus 100 status points but he did not fret over it. It was only about 30 or so levels that he needed to grind anyway to get them. In the end, he had permanent double stat points while others only get them during job advancements. The locked job class advancement quest was a load off of his mind because he does not want to be pressured in completing it since he has a lot on his plate currently. Will others of the same race as I am get the same treatment when I unlock the demos race? This was the question in Adrian's mind. Adrian was now left inside the boss dungeon inside before tearing up one of the teleportation scrolls that he was given. Adrian and his soul bounds reappeared before the paradox planes and he hurried towards the portal site in order to test his new skills to familiarize himself with it. He picked an area that was not infested with other players and was five levels higher than him because he has a new goal and that is to become a greater demon. He looked at the quest that was given to him by a scholar to see his progress. Quest Log Awaken the Persona, Ongoing A scholar wants you to become stronger so that you could rise to the top. He sees promise in you so do not fail him. Clear Condition, Become a Greater Demon Reward, Epic Spatial Magic Skillbook Requirements A. Reach Level 50 B. Condense Your Demos Core C. Defeat Enemies 5 Levels Higher Than You 31-100. He also has another quest that slipped his mind because he was busy with his class advancement quests. This was a bit urgent due to it being a time-limited quest. Quest Log Ancient Heroes 3 The twin gods, Gia and Abaddon, are pleased that you managed to get one of the three relics used to seal the breach made by the corrupt ants. Now they want you to find traces of the undead king and find the group of acolytes that plans to revive him. Clear Conditions Find traces of the undead king and acolytes. Reward, Weapon Enhancement Stones X10. The quest did not have a time stamp on it but Adrian knows that if someone was faster than him to find the clues and if they managed to find all of it then this quest would be deemed as failed. The dark god that possessed Argent seems to be irrelevant to the undead king event and is not part of it since it did not trigger this quest. Adrian calmed himself and managed his breath to focus. Who? Breath in and out. Adrian murmured and then thought to himself. There is no need to rush. Rushing often leads to mistakes. If the quest vanishes then it means I am not yet good enough and should train even harder to cover what I lack. Adrian then went to a spatial fracture that lead to a field called Thrall Plateau where there are trolls in the level 40s all the way to level 200 depending on how deep you venture in the field area because it is vast. Adrian used his skill glamour and polymorphed his soul bounds before jumping straight into the spatial fracture with them. Meanwhile in a cave somewhere deep inside a mountain, a cocoon made of wriggling tentacles that numbered in about a hundred. A young man that was dressed in a black robe with unknown symbols written on it and the symbols pulses eerily in red light. He took off his hood revealing his silver-colored hair and his eyes with black pupils and red corneas that made him seem like an absolute villain that must be defeated by humanity. The young man then spoke in a tone that seems like what horror movie directors use when a person is possessed by an entity. Look at your pathetic state Veldrix. It is funny looking at you in that state. The young man said in a mocking tone. The cocoon seemed to have reacted to the insult and the tentacles vibrated and formed a makeshift mouth but crazily enough, the mouth that formed spewed words. You dare mock me when you are just using a proxy to even just speak to me. Who is the weak one here? When I regain my strength, I will be unstoppable. The tentacle mouth declared like it was a fact. I did not come here to fight. I came here to form an alliance with you since you need help and I need your help. Think about my offer when I return in the following days. The young man uttered and he disappeared with a puff of black smoke. Chapter 69, Grinding and Channeling One's Inner Hunter Adrian was teleported to the Thrall Plateau when he jumped towards the fracture leading there. He landed on an area reminiscent of a forest and his current location was at the bottom of the Thrall Plateau. He first scouted his surroundings by ordering his three soul bounds. When the three soul bounds returned and waved their heads side to side indicating that there was no one around, Adrian breathed a sigh of relief. He wanted to go crazy by himself and test the limits of the skill summon, Psyche Armament. 
the skill description only detailed the general description not the specific limits like weapon durability and such. Adrian once again looked at the skill description for the skill. Skill, Summon, Psyche Armament. Tier, Legacy. Effect, Summons a Psyche Armament imbued with the power of your soul and possessing the qualities of your currently equipped weapon. Each Psyche Armament contains three skills and consumes essences instead of mana to cast. Once all three types of skills of the Psyche Armament is used, the Psyche Armament will disappear because it could no longer sustain its corporeal form. Only one Psyche Armament could be summoned at a time. Number of armaments that could be used currently, 3, bow, pair of daggers, sword. Cooldown, 15 minutes. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 500 mana points. Adrian tried summoning a different weapon to feel the difference between each Psyche Armament. He summoned the bow by shouting the spell's name and the weapon of choice. Summon, Psyche Armament bow, Adrian chanted. The scales on Adrian's twilight demi-gauntlets receded once again and merged with the blue flame that once again appeared in front of him when it disappeared on top of his head. The half-orbs that was in his demi-gauntlets became whole and also had an eye with a dark blue color and a cat's eye motif. The scaly armor of his demi-gauntlets was transferred to the design for the body of the bow. In between the scales pulses a violet light like that of his demi-gauntlets. The bowstring was not present but when Adrian picked up the bow, a bluish-white string made of something like an aura or mana appeared. Adrian pulled the bowstring made of some kind of energy and an arrow made of the same bluish-white energy appeared. The end of the arrow was being pinched by his right hand that he used to pull the bow and the arrow tip was situated perfectly at the center of the bow. Adrian pulled the bow to its limits and funny enough the bow bended like the bowstring was stronger than the bow. Adrian released the arrow by targeting a nearby tree and he felt like something left his body the moment he did. He checked his status and saw what was different. Name, Equinox. Race, Demos. Half Asmodian. Species, Imp, Lesser Demon. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods, Undead Killer, Expand. Job, Soul Summoner. Sub Job, Scribe, Beginner. LVL, 37. Experience, 4.5% slash 100%. HP, 2600 slash 2600. MP, 990 slash 1500. His mana was reduced by 10 mana points which means that instead of an arrow with a physical body, his arrows uses his mana instead as a catalyst for an arrow. This carries pros and cons that have to be deliberated with utmost care because if he uses the bow and fired arrow like a maniac then he would easily consume all of his mana points. On the plus side, he just needed to pull the bowstring and an arrow will conveniently appear but that would also mean that he would not be able to add special properties to the arrow like conventional arrows that blacksmiths make. Still he was glad that he has long-range weapon at his arsenal. At least there would be a use in all of that training that my parents subjected me when I was young. Adrian thought. When Adrian was young, he was suddenly subjected to a jungle survival course courtesy of his parents, mostly by his mother. They told him that he must be able to manage in any environment if he wanted survive in this world. At first, Adrian did not believe what his parents were doing and he thought it was his parents' way of a practical joke but he was wrong on the money. He endured three months of hellish training that a normal ten-year-old would not have experienced but he picked up a few set of skills along the way. His parents taught him how to make some weapons and that included a makeshift bow and arrow from wood. Adrian does other sports as hobby like archery when he wants to unwind and relieve stress. Adrian is not the best but the basics are drilled into him enough to properly aim an arrow since there is no auto-target feature in this game plus the bow training in this game helped him improve. Adrian looked at the tree that his mana arrow hit and was satisfied with the damage. The mana arrow managed to at least penetrate four inches into the tree's bark. He looked at the details of the weapon using his new dark blue evil eye skill and strangely enough it was the information of the demi-gauntlets that popped up. Weapon, Twilight Demi-Gauntlets, Growth Type, Character Bound, Psyche Armament, Bow Form. Tier, Rare, Upgradable. Description, A soul glove destined to be worn by the champion of the twin gods. It was forged by the god arts and craft, Hephaesto at the request of the Twin Gods. Damage modifier, 100 to 150, increases in response to bounded characters level and weapon tier. Effect, int plus 20. STR plus 10. Dex plus 10. AGI plus 10. Can be upgraded by assimilating better weapons. Slots, 1, Rune of Explosive Force. 2, Empty. 3, Empty. 4, Empty. 5, Empty. 
His Twilight Demi Gauntlets now have a damage modifier. It seems the hotfix was done simultaneously with the update. Since his weapon was a growth type weapon, the damage modifier is dependent on the weapon tier and his character level. The 100 to 150 damage modifier is already pretty high for Adrian's level of 37 since weapons are level restricted to an increment of 5. This means that Adrian's Demi Gauntlet should have the damage modifier of a level 35 rare tier weapon. Weapons of this level normally have a damage modifier of 75 to 100. The damage modifier jumps to a higher number every 50 levels. Overall, Adrian was satisfied of his weapon. Adrian scouted the forest stealthily like it was ingrained in his body what to do in an unfamiliar and dangerous location. A few minutes of scouring he managed to finally encounter or see a monster. He used his skill to look at the monster's details and smiled because it would be a turned into a good punching bag for his skills. The monster was all alone and was feasting on what seems like a deer. Monster, Lesser Troll. Level, 45. HP, 80,000-80,000-100%. Description, a weaker species of the proud troll race hence the lesser in its name. Although considered a lesser species, it still retains some of the qualities of a troll like a troll's excellent vitality and devastating physical force. Due to being a lesser species of a troll, it only mostly rely on its own instincts and is incapable of communication. As expected of a troll species. It almost has health in parallel as a mini-boss. Even though it is a weaker species a troll is still a troll, Adrian softly murmured. The lesser troll was green in color and was about 2 meters tall which for Adrian's standards is a giant target. The lesser troll was chowing down on a deer that it seems to have killed. Its powerful canines biting the deer and an audible crunch can be heard even if Adrian was 10 meters away. Adrian pulled the bowstring and an arrow appeared. He let go of the arrow and it struck the back of the troll but Adrian was dismayed because the lesser troll only scratched the area where the arrow landed as if it was an insect's bite. You have dealt 100 mixed damage to the lesser troll. Adrian then looked at the lesser troll's health points and was shocked. Monster, Lesser Troll. Level, 45. HP, 79,908-80,000, 99%. The lesser troll's health was rising rapidly. It was truly form the same troll family and is a big nuisance to kill. This however did not dismay Adrian and his fighting spirit kicked in and he accepted the challenge. He fired multiple arrows until he lost about 500 mana and managed to get the attention of the troll since he managed to hit some spots where it looked like it hurt because the lesser troll flinched when he was struck. Adrian managed to deal about more or less 7,000 damage due to arrows alone because of the varying damage he deals which ranges from 100 to 150 because the lesser troll does not even wear armor only a rag to hide his essential parts. The lesser troll flared up when it was hit right in the mouth and it even roared as if warning the attacker but alas it was driven mostly by instincts. The lesser troll threw the deer parts it has yet to finished and charged towards the direction of the arrows. Chapter 70, Pisky Armament Skills, Bow. Adrian is now confusing the lesser troll about his location by actively firing arrows from different directions thereby disorienting the troll. It was so confused that it just picked a random path opposite of Adrian and trampled everything that caught its sight regardless if were trees or rocks. Adrian smiled at the easy prey that he managed to encounter. Adrian now getting familiar with his bow psyche armament now looks at the skills that are available for the bow. Skill, Shooting Star. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, the mana arrow produced by the Psyche Armament will be charged for 5 to 10 seconds and become empowered. The arrow would deal 300% of the total magic damage and would gain the piercing effect. The arrow travels about 50 meters to 100 meters depending on the time the arrow is charged. This skill could be interrupted during charging. When charging is interrupted the required essence will still be consumed and the cooldown will be cut down in half. Cooldown, 20 seconds after arrow is released. Cast time. Instant. Essence cost, 15 essence per cast. Skill, Soul Piercer. Tier, Legacy. Type, Toggle. Effect, Arrows will gain the piercing effect and will deal true damage for the duration that the skill is active. Unable to generate essence while the skill is active. Cooldown, None. Cast time, Instant. Essence cost, 5 essence per arrow released. Skill, Orion's Wrath. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, Ascend to the sky and fire three shooting stars. Each shooting star will have 500% of your total attack power as mixed damage. The shooting star that is fired will have the maximum range regardless of charging time. 
you will remain airborne until the skill is finished or you are affected by a status effect. Gain the Farsight status while airborne. Farsight, enhances vision and become able to view everything in sight in a hundred meter radius. Cool down, 20 minutes. Cast time, 2 seconds. Essence cost, 75 essence. Adrian nodded at the skills as they were meant as something akin to becoming a sniping archer play style. As the lesser troll was still rampaging and Adrian following behind it and him assessing the number of essence he managed to get. He managed to hit the troll with about 50 mana arrows and he was rewarded with 50 essence in total. He gets one essence per successful hit on the lesser troll. He does not know if this was applicable to all the psyche armament but he would find out later when he will test the other two. Adrian has 50 essence currently and he would try and using the first two skills first because he did not have enough for the third skill yet. Adrian used the first skill and pulled the bow. The arrow then became white in color and had the shape resembling that of a comet. Adrian charged it for the full 10 seconds as the lesser troll was about 80 meters away from him by the time he charged the skill since he was immobile when charging the skill. Adrian let the arrow loose and its speed was unparalleled that the lesser troll did not even realize that a hole the size of a basketball was blown through its stomach. The lesser troll stumbled down due the chunk of damage it received and was hit by the stun status. A lesser troll is still a troll from Adrian's perspective because when he moved closer to the troll the hole was visibly repairing itself although at a slow rate but the troll's health points remained the same. Monster, lesser troll, status, stunned. Level, 45. HP, 56,265-80,000, Adrian shaved off about 15% of the lesser troll's health points with one attack or specifically skill. The game's system probably factored in the area where the damage was taken which is why the damage was massive. Adrian did not relax as the lesser troll was regenerating the hole albeit slowly. He unhesitatingly used the second skill Soul Piercer. Adrian's mana arrow looked a bit sharper than usual and the bow was shining a bit indicating that the skill was activated. Adrian fired off arrows until he ran out of usable essence and he managed to fire about 7 mana arrows. The 7 mana arrows did not disappear when it hit the lesser troll's body instead it pierced holes in its body that were the size of coins. The lesser troll screamed in pain as its natural defenses were breached by this unknown hunter that did not even show its face. It screamed angrily at the bushes as if saying, get out and fight me head on coward. Adrian snickered at the lesser troll's attitude. Adrian just continued firing mana arrows until the lesser troll became particles of light and he consumed all his mana. The lesser troll screamed in agony for he did not know why it was facing injustice. It was just enjoying its meal when an unknown assailant started firing arrows at it. Adrian picked up the loot and looked for his next victim mean target. It did not take long for Adrian to spot other lesser trolls in the vicinity. He continuously used the cover of the forest and his sniping skill to kill every lesser troll he had in sight. He was like a hunter that lived in the wilds all his life and was familiar with the woods like it was his backyard. He managed to kill about 10 more and managed to level up 2 times thanks to his 3 times experience gain. Adrian was feeling refreshed by gaining 2 more levels that he still continued despite hunting for about 5 hours in game already. He said one more before going to each his lunch since he has yet to test the last skill. Adrian was feeling that his body was feeling the hunger and said to himself, oh whatever and used the skill Orion's Wrath anyway. The skill action was 2 seconds because he first tossed the bow upwards to the air and he soon followed. Adrian was standing on what seems like an invisible platform with the pattern of the Orion star formation with a pose like he is ready to fire the arrows anytime. From an outsider's perspective, Adrian looked cool because of the skill effect and his master archer pose that has one of his legs folded slightly which makes his legs form a triangle. Yet, in Adrian's perspective this pose was embarrassing. It felt like he was a superhero or something. Shaking off his embarrassment, Adrian was amazed by the effect of the farsight status because he could see even the ants as long as he focused his field of vision. It did not take long for Adrian to find monsters that were walking about. He pulled the bowstring and automatically it registered a shooting star arrow. Adrian's target was not a lesser troll but what looks like a goblin. Actually Adrian was able to activate even his dark blue evil eye skill in synergy with his farsight status which amazed him even more. The monster was more specifically a goblin warrior. Monster. Goblin Warrior. Level, 48. HP, 55,000-55,000-100%. Description, an evolved and more powerful version of the goblin species. It looks like a slightly taller version of a goblin but carries a sharp weapon like swords. It is often mistaken for an average goblin due to its uncanny similarities which leads to the deaths of inexperienced adventurers. 
Finally Adrian saw one of the most common fantasy monsters ever created even though it's an evolved form. It still counts as a goblin. Thankfully the goblin warrior did not have as much health as that of the lesser troll but it does wear something akin to leather armor but in Adrian's perspective, the goblin warrior's head is unprotected which is why he would aim for a headshot. Adrian pulled the bowstring and imagined a comfortable shooting position and like the platform he was standing on received an order it tilted a bit to the side which surprised Adrian. He was tilted 45 degrees in the air and he was not even using his wings to fly. Adrian was defying gravity from his perspective but he found it interesting as the platform seems to respond to his thoughts which he deeply appreciates. Adrian fired the arrow and the shooting star was seen dropping at a fast speed from the sky. The goblin warrior as if sensing something coming towards it from above, instinctively looked up. The goblin warrior did not even notice what hit it was its whole head was blown or by the attack it received head on since it was not wearing a helmet. Adrian received a system notification indicating that he killed the goblin warrior. You have dealt devastating damage to the goblin warrior by aiming at its vital spot. You have gained experience. Wow. I never thought it was that powerful. Piercing attacks sure are scary. Adrian said as he looked for more targets for the two more shooting stars he could fire. Unknown to him, something was eyeing him from above the clouds. Chapter 71, Father's Day Event As Adrian was looking for two more targets for his remaining two shots of shooting star which is courtesy of his Orion's Wrath skill, a figure from above the clouds was surveying him as well. Ken Lon who was flying beside Adrian that is acting like his guard sensed the killing intent that was present above them. Ken Lon then saw a figure descending from the cloud that is as fast as the speed of sound. The figure's silhouette was descending at a fast rate and is becoming bigger than anticipated. At first it was the size of an ant but a few seconds later, it became as big as a bus. Ken Lon then urged Adrian to look up and before Adrian could turn around Ken Lon already transformed back to his original look. Ken Lon and the figure clashed about 50 meters away from Adrian and created a shock wave but fortunately it did not cancel the skill. Unfortunately, Ken Lon died in a single shot from the clash of both powers. Adrian was shocked of what happened because that thing just one shot a dragon. Adrian fired the last two shooting stars at it but it managed to dodge the one of the shooting star and its right wing was grazed by the last one fired. Adrian managed to see the details of the mysterious figure before his screen blacked out and his remaining soul bounds were unsummoned. Adrian's avatar was split in half by the monster named the Thunderbird. Monster, Thunderbird. Level, 200. HP, Slash, 99.99%. Description, Majestic gigantic bird said to one of the rulers of the skies. Its whole body is a giant conductor of natural lightning and could swoop down upon its prey with the sound of thunder and as fast as thunder. This birds are extremely territorial of its territory and would attack anyone haughty enough to fly the same skies that it declared as its territory. Mortal enemies with the great horned snakes and also their favorite meals. Adrian's avatar fell down from the sky and landed on the ground. He was shouting at his incompetence of information gathering that he did not know that Thunderbirds actually fly through the skies of the Thrall Plateau. He was about to grumble about his loss of experience and maybe an item but he heard a system prompt about two seconds later. Player Equinox will now revive due to the effects of the skill Eudrossel's Blessing. Adrian rejoiced because he was given a free revive every 24 hours. He thanked the RPG gods for this wonderful skill. That was given to him. Adrian resurrected at the place where his avatar's corpse landed. Well, where the upper body landed anyway. Seriously. Why are there strong monsters up in the sky? Now I know why some of the Dragon Keen rarely even fly. The sky itself is a whole new battlefield. Adrian grumbled for a few minutes to someone that is non-existent and decided to eat his lunch since he already tested the skills for the Psyche Armament, bow anyways. Adrian logged back inside the game 45 minutes later at the same spot he logged out. He was still inside the Thrall Plateau outskirts anyways. He looked around him before casting Glamour once again on himself since it was dispelled when he died and forgot to recast it before logging out due to him grumbling at the air. He also resummoned back his soul bounds because they were sealed back when he died. He once again casted the polymorph skill on them and decided to avert even taking to the skies due the predator roaming it. Adrian decided to try and head to a town when he spotted a peculiar person or more specifically an NPC. It was standing just outside the field entrance for the Thrall Plateau. The NPC was peculiar because OT was like as if a person was wearing a bear costume with big guns on its body both physically and physiologically. The bear was buffed like a bodybuilder and had the name Papa Bear floating above his head. Adrian tried to remember where he read that name and it suddenly clicked. This was the NPC for the time-limited Father's Day event. 
Adrian did not know what kind of rewards will it give if you accept its mission since it was not in the patch notes but he decided to try it for the sake of fun. Adrian walked towards the NPC Papa Bear and before he could speak Papa Bear spoke first. Dear adventurer would you spare your precious time for accepting the request of little old me? Papa Bear said with a cute face but it was all shattered by its buff body. Adrian just smiled and replied, sure. I have nothing better to do anyway. Ooh finally someone who wants to listen. You see it seems that somebody kidnapped my son and all I have as evidence is this strand of golden hair. Would you be so kind to accompany me in saving my son? I managed to trace their scent to a cave somewhere. Do you think you could help me as a backup since the strength of the monsters are too much for just myself? Papa Bear said with conviction but it was difficult to take him seriously because of its character model. Adrian decided to wholeheartedly participate in the event so he accepted the quest that was given to him. Quest Notification Find my son. Papa Bear has been wandering around looking for his son. Help him dive into a cave where he found traces of the perpetrator. Difficulty, adjusted in response to player level. Clear reward, unknown. Failure, spanking from Papa Bear. Adrian did not know whether to laugh or cry because of the punishment upon failure. The reward is unknown but in Adrian's mind is it would not be that difficult because the difficulty was scaled to his level. Adrian along with Papa Bear and his soulbounds was teleported to an instance dungeon. The instance dungeon was called Orm Cavern and like the name implies there was golden rocks glittering inside the cave. It did not take long before an enemy appeared before them. Monster, Cold Soup Slime. Level, 39. HP, 50,000-50,000-100%. Description, a monster reminiscent of a slime but instead of a clear body, it has a soup body. The soup is said to be very healthy for the body and would cure colds and such. Due to it being cold, it has an acquired taste to be able to eat it. It can shoot ice elemental magic at its foes and even a part of itself as a physical missile of sorts. Somewhat immune to physical attacks. Adrian now knows the inspiration for this event. It was from a children's fairy tale. Either way it is still an enemy. Adrian urged Ken Lon to deal with it and he provided support using his magic. Ken Lon fired a breath attack upon the cold soup slime and its health was visibly decreasing. Papa Bear also delay damage using a flamethrower that suddenly materialized in its hand. It did not take long for the party to deal with the cold soup slime because they used an element that was its counterpart or weakness. The cold soup slime melted and what filled the cavern was a delicious aroma. You have been allured by the delicious smell of the soup. Satiety decreases by 1% or every 5 minutes. Ooh, what a delicious smell that makes my tummy rumble. Papa Bear muttered. We should continue on. We need to find your son in a hurry. We do not even know what happened to him yet. Adrian stated to snap Papa Bear of its current situation. You are right. Let us go. Do not worry son. Papa is here. Papa Bear shouted and ran past Adrian. Papa Bear's motivation has been increased. His stats are increased by 10%. Adrian tried to shout for Papa Bear to wait for him but the fellow just left him in the dust. Adrian undoes the polymorph on Sirius and hopped on him so that they could reach the super fast Papa Bear. He held Cena in his arms since it's not that fast compared to Sirius and Ken Lon. They arrived at a fork in the road and Adrian ordered Sirius to pick up Papa Bear's scent. Sirius went towards the right path and a few seconds later sounds of a battle could be heard. They finally arrived at the location of the battle and Papa Bear was fighting a slime 5 meters tall which was twice as big as the cold soup slime they encountered earlier. Monster, Hot Soup Slime Level, 39 HP, 60,000-60,000-100% Description, a monster reminiscent of a slime but instead of a clear body, it has a soup body. The soup is said to be very healthy for the body and would cure colds and such. Due to it being very hot, it has an acquired taste to be able to eat it. It can shoot fire elemental magic at its foes and even a part of itself as a physical missile of sorts. Somewhat immune to physical attacks. Weapons could lose durability upon contact with its body. Adrian then ordered Cena through their soul link to heal Papa Bear as it lost some of its health. He would not let the NPC die on him or else the mission might fail. He also ordered Sirius and Ken Lon to strike when there is a chance. He then summoned his psyche armament, Bao since that is what he is currently familiar with. Adrian then entered the battle. Chapter 72, Father's Day Event Finale Adrian with his soulbounds joined the battle that Papa Bear has started. 
Ken Lon fired its breath attack but instead of completely damaging the hot soup slime, it recovered some health points and even managed to get an attack buff. Adrian ordered Ken Lon to stop with its breath attack and deal physical damage instead since he too was immune to heat. Cena was practically flying behind Papa Bear and continuously healing him because he was taking the brunt of the damage. Adrian used the Soul Piercer toggle skill and generated the piercing effect on his arrows since he already has max soul essence gauge anyway and he did not even entertain the idea of using Orion's Wrath skill because the ceiling of the cave could barely fit Ken Lon as it was not that high in the first place. Adrian safely launched mana arrows towards the hot soup slime and it was very effective since it was weak to magic which is probably why Papa Bear himself could not beat the dungeon because he deals physical damage using his weapons of mass destruction. The hot soup slime as if feeling pain bubbled when it was hit by Adrian's mana arrow and switched aggro towards him. It launched parts of itself toward Adrian at a fast speed that Adrian was not able to dodge. Adrian was hit by about a litter of hot soup with bits of potato in it at his face. His health bar was decreased by 150 due to the sudden attack and his face was covered with a thick soup base. You have been dealt 150 damage. You have resisted the burn status effect. Your satiety has dropped by 10 due to the delicious aroma. Your satiety is not below 50%. Adrian was a bit frustrated because not only was he damaged but his satiety was lowered even more. A little more lower and he would gain the weakened status or even worse the hunger status effect. Adrian decided to just blast the thing with mana arrows when he saw that what looks like a tomato is floating inside the body of the hot soup slime. He remembered that in order for monsters that have liquid form to retain its shape without a container there was a need for a core. Adrian tried out his hypothesis and tried firing arrows at the tomato in the body with the soul piercer mana arrow and to his surprise the tomato moved out of the way of the mana arrows. Adrian now had an idea on how to kill the hot soup slime but it seems that the hot soup slime changed aggro towards him again him again because of what he did. Papa Bear distract him for me Adrian shouted while telling his soul bounds through his soul link to assist Papa Bear. Papa Bear nodded and attacked the hot soup slime with more brutality and even Ken Lon and Sirius joined in which made the aggro shift towards them. Adrian then started using his shooting star skill and aimed at the tomato that was floating inside the hot soup slime's body. He looked for an opening and he found it when Papa Bear threw a grenade inside the hot soup slime's body. The grenade exploded and scattered the some soup base of the hot soup slime dealing damage to the members at the forefront. Adrian did not miss this opportunity that the hot soup slime was incapacitated and fired the shooting star at the tomato. When the tomato was hit by the skill, it exploded inside the hot soup slime's body and dyed the parts around it red. The hot soup slime's body convulsed and then deflated like a balloon. You have managed to break the hot soup slime's core thereby immediately killing it. You have gained experience points. Adrian then moved closer to the ones in the forefront and laughed. He did not want to laugh but they were covered in thick soup. Papa Bear then took out a towel from who knows where and started cleaning himself up while Sirius just licked himself clean while Ken Lon heated the surface of his body until the soup disintegrated. Papa Bear then spoke some words towards Adrian indicating that the end of the dungeon was near. From Adrian's perspective, he thought that the dungeon was pretty easy but then again it was an event dungeon and more like a giveaway to player for their patronage so he does not expect an extravagant award since this was not a main story event. I could smell the owner of this golden hair at the end of that tunnel. Let us hurry. Papa Bear urged Adrian. Adrian complied and they rushed towards the tunnel and they reached the end a few minutes later. When they reached the end, they were assaulted by an intoxicating aroma that stimulated one's appetite. You have smelled something very delicious and its aroma is dazzling your sense of smell. Your satiety bar drops by one every minute. What they have witnessed is the scene of a little witch girl with golden hair stirring a large cauldron with a little bear tossing ingredients in it. It was a sight that would really be seen on children's books and they were even smiling while cooking whatever was in it. Son, is that you? Were you here all this time? Papa Bear asked the little bear. As if surprised by his dad's appearance, the little bear faced Papa Bear and he looked so cute that you would want to hug it forever. Papa. What are you doing here? You ruined my surprise for you. The little bear grumbled as he stomped his feet. Surprise? There were monsters in this cave. Papa Bear said in an angry yet caring tone. Oh, yeah, about that. As the little bear wondered his eyes towards two cauldrons that were empty. Adrian could more or less guess what happened since he knows that the little girl with Golden was a witch. My friend and I just wanted to cook something special for our dads but it seems that we messed up the recipe which lead to some complications but Goldie managed to divert them to the entrance of the cave. The little bear said with an almost crying look. Papa Bear eventually forgave his son for sneaking out and told him to always ask for permission. 
The little bear also introduced her friend and told them their gift to their dads which was a soup just right for one's taste. Adrian smiled at what he saw and told himself to hug his dad after this dungeon is over. The little bear waddled towards Adrian and gave him a bowl of soup. This is thanks for escorting my dad here. Please take it as a reward. The little bear said in a cute tone. Adrian gladly took the bowl and put it inside his inventory. He bid the group farewell and went to the shining magic circle that would deliver him out of the instance dungeon. When he was out he logged out and hugged his dad and told him his adventure in the game which put a smile on his dad's face. Adrian logged back inside the game and took a look at the reward he was given. Item, just right soup. Tier, special. Type, consumable. Effect, recovers satiety to full. Increases the eater's level by 1 when the eater is below level 100. If the eater is above level 100 then he would be given a 50% experience boost for a day. Cannot be traded. Adrian was glad that he was given a free level which makes him now level 40 and decided to invest his status points to give him a boost in stats. He immediately drank the soup and experienced a sense of euphoria that his mind was blown away the delicious taste and he even imagined his clothes ripping away from his body. Without even noticing, Adrian drank the whole soup and was disappointed there was none left. He sighed and decided to invest his remaining status points since he was having a hard time dealing some damage to monsters higher level than him. Adrian put 40 status points into both strength and intelligence. 20 points in agility. 20 points in vitality and the remaining 30 points was equally invested into both dexterity and endurance. Now his status looks like this. Name, Equinox. Race, Demos, Half Asmodian. Species, Imp, Lesser Demon. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods, Undead Killer, Expand. Job, Soul Summoner. Sub job, scribe, beginner. LVL, 40. EXP, 33.8% slash 100%. HP, 3000 slash 3000. MP, 1900 slash 1900. VIT, 145 plus 5. STR, 170 plus 25. Int, 170 plus 20. AGI, 145 plus 10. DEX, 140 plus 15. And, 138. Available stat points, 0. Skills, job skills, expand, active skills, expand, passive skills, expand, racial skill, origin magic, expand. With Adrian's stats alone he could now contend with a level 70 player that undergone his or her job advancement. Of course he would not do that because he is still a long way from achieving a high ranking in the leaderboards. He was not even in the top 100 for the summoner leaderboards. He could only slap his face and tell encourage himself. He then remembered the skill book that he put up for auction and decided to view it. When he peered at the current bid price Adrian fell down on the ground and his soul bound circling him as if they were worried. Chapter 73, Soul Form Manifestation When Adrian stopped his dramatic response and stood up, he immediately sent a message to his best friend Marlon the price tag of the skill book. Marlon replied with a shocked face emoji three times. The current auction price for the skill book is 10,000 gold and the current exchange rate for gold is $2.5 per gold coin. The two best friends underestimated the demand for such a skill especially for knights. Knights are one of the most well-known type of warrior job advancement and is the most well-balanced in term of stats. Knights are said to have almost equal attack and defense which makes them ideal as substitute tankers but not main tankers. If played well they could be optimal as a damage dealer and a defender but a glaring weakness is that they rarely have high damage dealing skills and paired with balanced stats they do not specialize in something. Nevertheless, being a knight is still popular due to some people that wants to be in servitude of a beautiful princess or are just fond of the medieval era. Knights are a popular job advancement. The reasons for the high selling price of the skill are two things. The first reason is the execution mechanic of the skill that kills the target directly and if used correctly the player could very well become a ranker. The second reason is the high skill damage modifier if the execute failed which is still very high in comparison to regular knight skills thus the high demand for the skill especially for warrior players with knight related professions. They rankers would definitely want this skill and the price is still rising bit by bit even as Adrian was observing it. The auction would only end if no player bids for the item in about 6 hours since its last bid. Adrian decided to close the auction tab and only focus on leveling up since he still has a long way to go. Adrian looked around to where he was teleported out of the instance dungeon and he was still at the outskirts of the Thrall Plateau. 
He told Sirius and Ken Lon to survey the surroundings and changed them to their chibi forms so that if they get spotted by other players they would not even try to attack them and make them harder to spot since they were smaller. A few minutes later Sirius returned while Adrian was petting Cena. It seems that Sirius found something so through their soul link, Adrian called for Ken Lon. Adrian really loved the versatility of the soul link because he could give orders just by thinking of them but of course he had to practice focusing because it takes great mental capabilities to put it in practice. Sirius led the way to a cave that was only about seven feet in height and was covered by the dense forestry in that area which concealed it perfectly from the eyes of those who do not search for it intently. A little close to the entrance were items that were more of the miscellaneous variety and some coins. This must have been the result of the notifications that showed in front of Adrian and when Sirius returned in his full form. Adrian picked up the items even though they would be of little value because who knows when someone might need it anyways. The cave was 7 meters in height while it was only about a meter and a half in width. It was more fitting for it to be called a crack than a cave. When Adrian used his dark blue evil eye skill, the name of a dungeon popped up. Dungeon, Secret Thrall Plateau Goblin Encampment Outpost. Level Requirements, 4050. Adrian was happy with the unexpected dungeon encounter and with his soul bounds by his sides they entered. When Adrian regained vision, he was on top of a ridge inside the of the plateau itself and from above one could see numerous goblins undergoing training in a large tent at the north of the training grounds. Still, what made Adrian shudder in excitement is the system notification that popped up. You are the first to discover the secret thrall plateau goblin encampment outpost. You will gain two times the experience and double drop rates for the first clear of this dungeon. With just this dungeon, Adrian will get six times the experience with his experience buff stacking. He was excited but not too excited to just charge right into the fray without assessing the situation. It seems this dungeon only has a single layer which has its pros and cons. A single layer meant that parties could easily handle the waves of monsters but the problem is that Adrian was not in a party even though he has great fighting power as a summoner the vast number of enemies in this dungeon is not a number he and his soulbounds could handle wantonly. Adrian decided to sneak in a little closer and to do that he used a skill that he has never used as of yet. Skill, Soul Form Manifestation Tier, Legacy. Effect, shrouds the target with the power of limbo and transforms the target into their soul forms. Targets in soul form cannot be harmed by physical attacks but will be dealt twice as much damage by magical attacks. Grants the target invisibility during soul form. Any form of attack by the recipient or being dealt damage will undo the effects of soul form manifestation. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Cast time, 5 seconds. Mana cost. 500, mana points. He only used it on himself and told his soulbounds to wait for him to signal their attack. When Adrian used the skill on himself, his body started to fade from existence and turn pale white as if he was only a smoky silhouette. He then turned invisible and his form resembles that of a white specter but his soulbounds could see him just fine by his assumption because Cena tried to land on his head but passed right through which she turned her head in confusion. Adrian then moved closer to the training grounds that was filled with goblins that were doing sword swings target practice using a bow and a few who were trying to cast spells. Adrian was a bit nervous that he might be seen since a goblin was walking towards him and he was shocked that the goblin passed right through him though the goblin looked back which made Adrian's body paler than it was. It seems that as long as he does not attack or is not hit by magic in this state he is okay which is why he did not go close to the goblin mage recruits practicing magic. It was their name when Adrian took a look at their status. Monster, Goblin Mage Recruit. Level, 45. HP, 35,000-35,000-100% MP, 20,000-20,000 Description, a goblin that has potential for magic and pursuing its evolutionary path to become a goblin mage. It possesses low health but greater mana than other goblins. Adrian then looked at the status of the other goblins. Monster, Goblin Warrior Recruit. Level, 42. HP, 45,000-45,000-100% MP, 5,000-5,000 Description, a goblin who is pursuing to become a goblin warrior that has mastery over weapons that deal physical damage. It possesses higher health and stamina than other goblins. Monster, Goblin Ranger Recruit. Level, 40. HP, 33,000-33,000-100% MP, 10,000-10,000 Description, 
a goblin pursing to become a goblin ranger that is capable of hitting targets from afar. It is more nimble than other goblins. Adrian was pondering what to do in this situation because the goblin warrior recruits numbered in the hundreds while the goblin ranger recruits are about less than a hundred and the goblin mage recruits numbered about fifteen. It makes sense that there are few mage recruits because the talent for magic is not common in this world. It only became common when the players arrived since becoming a mage was very popular since the game's release. It seems the elites are having a meeting in the large tent but when Adrian was about to go closer, he stopped because it feels as though he should not go closer. It was the right decision because inside that large tent was a goblin mage that could feel mana fluctuations which would alert the goblin commanders that someone snuck inside their encampment. It did not take long for Adrian to be at full mana again and he went towards the center of the training field. Adrian wanted to test out a theory that he just thought of just now and that is to channel a spell while in soul form manifestation. Adrian knew the perfect spell for this dungeon and that was the skill Vortex. Adrian then started chanting the spell and a black void was formulated in his palm and it slow but surely rose upwards in the training field. The goblin warrior recruits and goblin ranger recruit did not feel a thing but the goblin mage recruits suddenly feel mana fluctuation somewhere in the training field but could not detect where it is coming from. With a snap of his fingers, all hell broke loose on the goblin encampment. Chapter 74, A Demon's Rampage when Adrian snapped his fingers a sound akin to glass breaking occurred except it was not glass but space itself was the one that broke and from that broken space a black hole 10 meters in diameter formed and pulled everything that it could muster. Adrian is always impressed by the sheer power of the vortex skill. Not only did it pull all he views as enemies but even things like fences swords and any other thing that was not firmly rooted or able to withstand the pulling force of the vortex he summoned. This object deal additional damage to the enemies sucked into the black hole which is always a plus in Adrian's eyes and with that numerous notifications assaulted his sight. You have dealt 3879 magical damage to a goblin ranger recruit. Additional 467 damage has been dealt due to swirling objects in the black hole. You have dealt 4149 magical damage to a goblin mage recruit. Additional 638 damage has been dealt due to swirling objects in the black hole. You have dealt 3,268 magical damage to a goblin warrior recruit. Additional 159 damage has been dealt due to swirling objects in the black hole. You have dealt 4,243 magical damage to a goblin mage recruit. Additional 827 damage has been dealt due to swirling objects in the black hole. This were the notifications that sprung up in Adrian's field of view and a few seconds later even the tent housing the goblin leaders was sucked into the black hole revealing a goblin with a robe conjuring up a barrier to prevent the three of them. The two goblin guards that are guarding the entrance of the tent plunged their swords at the ground to anchor themselves to it. Not long after all the goblins in the training ground were sucked into the black hole. One might think that hundreds of goblins could not fit into a 10 meter diameter black hole but that would be the uneducated point of view because the concept of space is different inside it but the game designers have used the idea that the black hole has infinite space and is always swirling. Adrian had more or less an idea of this because he has seen a giant tree being sucked inside of it and that every inanimate thing or energy sucked inside would become damage for the beings sucked inside. Can lawn fire your dragon breath inside of the black hole Adrian commanded after he saw all of the goblins in the training ground sucked inside the black hole. Ken Lon breathed fire directly into the black hole and it was absorbed right in and explosions could be heard if you listen closely to the sounds produced inside the black hole but who would be brave enough to come close. The goblin commanders looked at Adrian with hostility that if looks could kill Adrian would probably be death ten times over. The black hole ceased to exist meaning the duration has ended and the goblin commanders hoped that some of their recruits survived the ordeal but fate was cruel. All the goblin recruits that was expelled from the hole become flashes of light once their corpses landed on the ground. You have successfully killed a goblin mage recruit. Experience has been gained. You have successfully killed a goblin warrior recruit. Experience has been gained. You have successfully killed a goblin ranger requit. Experience has been gained. Hundreds of notifications like this was popping up in Adrian's vision that he had to turn them off for the time being because it was distracting him. Adrian and his party was immediately given tons of experience that Adrian leveled up about five times and his soul bounds leveling up about seven times. The bigger one of the three goblin commanders emitted a battle cry because of what he has seen but Adrian was unfazed because of his skill. The goblin chieftain has used the skill war cry. You have resisted the fear status due to your Asmodian prowess. The goblin chieftain was fuming with rage and charged towards Adrian but Adrian's eyes was glued to another area. Adrian was looking at a metal cage that was previously covered with a dirty cloth and it was revealed to be a group of caged individuals which mostly consisted of human females. 
Adrian was enraged even though they were just game characters but actually seeing victims in close proximity is different from just reading about it or seeing it in the media. Adrian already know what was done to them due to some having dead eyes while some had their legs cut off. There were even children inside the cage. Adrian flared with anger and ordered Sirius and Ken Lon via their soul link which was either a good choice or a bad one since even Adrian's anger was transmitted to his soul bounds. Destroy them. Leave nothing behind. Adrian commanded in a heavy tone as Adrian's glamour was dispelled by a spell of the goblin mage that Adrian did not even bother dodging. Adrian's skin tone changed and his horns were revealed that the goblins were surprised. Sirius headed straight for the goblin ranger while Ken Lon charged towards the goblin mage. The three goblin commanders was almost near Adrian when he executed those commands and he was finally shown their status. Monster, Goblin Ranger. Level, 48. HP. 60,000-60,000-100% MP, 20,000-20,000 Description, an evolved species of goblin that is specialized in using ranged weapons such as bows. It is more agile and nimbler than its other evolved goblin counterparts. It uses guerrilla tactics to deal with its prey in a mocking way. It likes to toy with its targets rather than killing them immediately. Monster, Goblin Mage Level, 48. HP, 50,000-50,000-100%. MP, 50,000-50,000. Description, an evolved species of goblin that is specialized in using mana. It managed to learn how to properly wield the mana inside its body thereby evolving to a goblin species capable of harnessing it. It has higher degree of intelligence compared to its evolved goblin counterparts. It is capable of using elemental magic. From Adrian's point of view it was not this two who posed a threat but the goblin who was the same size as that of an adult male that was charging towards him. Monster, Goblin Chieftain. Level, 50. HP, 100,000-100,000-100%. MP, 40,000-40,000. Description. An evolved species of the goblin warrior that is known for its robust and immense physical force. The goblin chieftain is considered to be the third strongest existence only below that of a goblin general. It knows how to lead an army of goblins to assault towns and villages. It is said that if goblins are becoming organized and raiding towns or villages in an orderly fashion then there is a goblin chieftain in the vicinity giving them commands. The goblin chieftain about to charge recklessly towards Adrian when the two goblin warriors that were level 45 stopped it by uttering some words in a language not familiar to Adrian. The goblin chieftain stopped its charge and instead the two goblin warriors were the ones that are going to confront Adrian first because the goblin mage told them that the demon has exhausted all its mana just in conjuring up that spell. The goblin mage was right now Adrian only had about 100 or so mana left and he was out of mana potions which he forgot to restock due to being too excited to level up. Adrian was only now relying on his mana regeneration to restore his mana. The two goblin warriors were glaring at Adrian as they charged towards him. Adrian activated Geoforce and enlarged his demi gauntlets. Due to his level rising the demi gauntlets dealt more damage now that they have dealt before. The goblin warriors were using good coordination and what's more they were buffed by the goblin chieftain. The goblin chieftain used chieftain's valor. All subjects under it have 15% stat increase and will deal 5% more damage. The chieftain glared at Adrian before heading towards the goblin mage to assist it since it was having a hard time fending off the dragon that was spewing fire at it as it continued to be in the defensive rather than chanting spells. The goblin chieftain obviously knew that the demon before them was a summoner and the easiest way to defeat a summoner's monsters was not attacking it but directly dealing with the summoner itself but the demon in front of them was different. Not only was it incredibly adept at using magic but he could also sense immense physical strength from it which was expected of a demon because their goblin ancestors always viewed demons as the incarnation of destruction. The goblin elders always recount their story of ancient times about demons having immense physical and magical prowess that it could put any goblin king to shame with just one flick of its finger. The goblins know of the difference of demons and devils since their goblin kings was afraid of demons not devils and that message was passed to their generation time and time again. Yet. The goblin chieftain did not fear this demon in front of him because its horns are yet to emerge. In their stories the demons have imposing horns filled with power and a presence that would make others bow down before them but this one did not. The goblin chieftain decided to aid his other commanders first so that it would be easier to take out the demon invading them. Its two summons were also strong because it was the a mighty great lizard and a dog of destruction. Chapter 75, An Elf's Tale While Adrian was busy doing his dungeon run, 
a certain individual has already returned to his church and is currently planning his strategy on how to tackle a certain mission. Quest Notification Uncover the Truth I, Link Quest The Church of Life has concealed the records of history containing the creation of the world. Retrieve these records and make sure that the higher-ups of the church do not know of your identity. Clear Condition, Find records of the real history of the world without being suspected. Reward, Random Epic Skillbook, Priest Job Class. Failure, Excommunicated by the Church is aligned with good. Final Link Quest Reward, Unique Job Class Envoy of the Twin Gods. Time Limit, None. Levin Cloud, A.K. Marlin, was pondering this greatly as how he would do this quest. As a child of Gia, he has access to certain documents in the church that would not be available to other ordinary priest job class players. But that did not mean that he has full access to all of the church's records. Though he is a child of Gia, he only has started training as one and is still not that influential in the church of life. In terms of hierarchy, he is like a bishop with his current standing and he needs to be at least a cardinal to access the records that he needs. He figured that important records such as the history of the world would have to be in the main cathedral which is in the elven village but it would be impossible for him to actually just waltz there because even the elves did not take players as trustworthy. The inhabitants of this world tolerate them because they believe that the gods have sent them to aid them and some did while some do not which is why the relationship between NPCs and players is shaky. Nevertheless there are some NPCs that are easy to increase in intimacy while others are downright impossible. What Marlin had in mind is visit old abandoned churches of the Church of Life and investigate from there. He had a hunch that there should at least be some king of records left in them even if it is just incomplete. Which is why when he arrived at the main cathedral of the Church of Life in the Elven territory he went straight to get pilgrimage missions. Pilgrimage missions are missions in where the devotee will travel to locations of other churches be it new, old, or destroyed to check about whether the church is operating properly or needs to be rebuilt. The main cathedral of the Church of Life is located in the elven country of Neo-Alfheim. It is where the world tree, Yggdrasil, or the Tree of Life, is currently planted in this world which is why the surroundings here is clean and pure because of the world tree that purifies polluted mana and refreshes the surroundings. It is also a famous place for spiritualists, a job class advancement for shamans, to go because elemental spirits love to visit places with pure mana. The houses in Neo-Alfheim is quaint and blends well with nature and tree houses are common here due to the elves wanting to be close to nature. Unlike what is told in old tales that elves do not use fire and eat meat here they do because according to them a person would not be able to live just by eating vegetables or fruits alone especially if one was to go in battle. The main cathedral is located near the world tree and is actually the second tallest tree in the area and is said to have been made by the ancestor of the elves a high elf with powers to manipulate nature itself. The entrances and the windows of the main cathedral were not carved but it was like a natural hole that the tree itself made and is considered as one of the most mystical place in the poles according to the pandemonium community. The lighting used for the insides of the cathedral and the other houses were of the lumen lion. The lumen lion is a plant that is similar to an orchid that absorbs some of the light from the plant it is grafted into and would only shine when it is dark. It could remain lit for seven days even after it was plucked. It looks like a giant dandelion about the size of a bowling ball with little bulbs that emit a radiant white glow at the end of its seed head. Levin Cloud hurriedly went to the church administrator to look for pilgrimage quests. He went to a room where an elf that could be seen with wrinkles in his face could be seen. An elf naturally stops aging at 50 years old but that did not mean they would retain the look of a 50-year-old man. Elves age differently compared to other species. At ages 1 to 15 in human years, the elf would look like a child of age 8. At 16 to 30 human years, the elf would look like a premature teen. At 31 to 45 human years, the elf will look like a teenager. At 46 and above the elf will stop aging as he will look like an adult but a special case would be when an elf is nearing the end of their long lifespan of generally 400 to 500 years old. The elf would develop wrinkles signifying that their long life will soon come to an end. Of course on how soon, even the elves themselves do not the definite answer but it would usually be in a year or less than a hundred years. Elder Willow, it is nice to see you here and very healthy I might add Levin Cloud said starting a conversation with the old elf. Levin Cloud, my apprentice, it seems you are doing fine and even became stronger than when you left. How may I help my apprentice Elder Willow said in a fatherly tone. Elder Willow was the elf which introduced the test for being chosen as a child of Gia to Levin Cloud and ultimately became his master because Elder Willow taught him the ropes on how to be a good priest in the Church of Life. Levin Cloud encountered him when he saw an old man and helped him carry the grocery that he was struggling to carry. 
Little did Levenklaub know that he was actually helping an elder of the Church of Life but also an esteemed elf who could use nature magic which is one of the reasons Marlin took the earth element as his master did the same to attain nature magic. Levenklaub looked at the old elf with deep respect and appreciation like what he would do to his grandfather if he actually known his grandfather. Also Elder Willow was one of the most caring elders in the church and had no prejudice when it comes to matters regarding on who could be a candidate for the child of Gia position or not. I want to go take pilgrimage quests to old and abandoned churches Levin Cloud stated. Oh. Why do you want to my boy? There are barely anything useful in our abandoned churches anyway and they are usually located near danger zones. I can't assign paladins to you if you were to go to some. They have been infested by monsters after all. Elder Willow said after raising a brow because of the somewhat ridiculous request of his apprentice. I want to purify the lands from the monsters there so that weary travelers could rest upon the abandoned churches even if they are not being manned. I want to prove myself that I am useful to our church Levin Cloud said having a slightly nervous tone. Elder Willow knows that the boy before him has another agenda but from their past interactions, he could most definitely say that it is not harmful to the church because the child in front of him was too pure to do evil schemes. So he opted to indulge the boy in his decision and him as any wise master would to his apprentice. He breathed a sigh and passed the boy a piece of paper containing a pilgrimage mission that is appropriate for his power. Quest Notification Pilgrimage to the Blue Valley The Church of Life wants you to see and investigate the ruins of an abandoned church in the Blue Valley that has been abandoned for a few centuries when a beast flood suddenly attacked that area. Requirements, Level 50 and above. Clear Conditions, Submit a report on the state of the abandoned church. Failure, Decrease in Reputation to the Church of Life. Time Requirements, None. Levin Cloud thanked and bowed to the elder for giving him a favorable quest. He departed after saying his goodbyes to his master and restocking on supplies. He hopes that the place he would visit have traces of the world's history. Little did he know that his master sensed residual aura of the goddess in him and sent him to a place where he may or may not find some clues. Chapter 76, Slayer of Goblin's Eye the goblin chieftain went towards the direction where Kenlon and the goblin mage were fighting in order to assist its fellow goblin commander. Adrian who saw this tried to chase after the goblin chieftain but was unable to because of the two goblin warriors blocking his way. Adrian was only able to one-shot a goblin warrior before due to aiming at its head and the high damage modifier that the skill has and also the penetrating effect. His current mana is 233 and is currently rising one point every three seconds which is already considered fast in terms of his level grade. But the real reason for the great mana regeneration is his accessory items. Adrian had no choice but to kill these goblin warriors first in order to aid Kenlon so instead he told Cena to support Kenlon for the time being and the albino magpie flew towards her fellow soulbound. Adrian is now facing two buffed goblin warriors by himself but he looked excited instead of scared. He immediately used a salt charge towards one of the two goblin warriors and they were caught by surprise because their attention partially shifted when Cena flew towards the goblin mage like their chieftain. You have dealt 3,548 physical damage to a goblin warrior. The goblin warrior that was not targeted immediately tried to stab Adrian but he cast chrono lag and the movement of the slash became slow that Adrian was able to dodge in time. Thankfully, he has full stock of essences and is currently having a 10% buff on all his stats due to the soul collector passive skill. Adrian then bashed his gauntlets on the goblin warrior who performed the slash since it still performed it even though it was slowed down. The goblin warrior was not able to dodge the punch Adrian had thrown because of the weight of the rebound of the sword. Adrian managed to hit it right in the face. You have dealt 5668 physical damage to a goblin warrior. It seems that hitting their head was more damaging than Adrian thought it would because the goblin warriors did not even wear helmets to protect themselves from harm. It was only the goblin chieftain who wore a skull helmet of an unknown reptilian creature. Adrian had to finish this quickly because Kenlon's health bar was being drained though it would rise a few times, the decrease was greater than the increased value meaning it was only a matter of time before both Cena and Kenlon fall in battle. Even if Adrian has the rewind skill it would be useless if he was not in the vicinity. He started getting more aggressive in finishing the buffed goblin warriors rather than paying attention to his health bar. Meanwhile, a few meters away from Adrian's location Sirius was having a battle with the goblin ranger. Their battle was more on the concept of the hunter versus the hunted as the goblin ranger would install traps so that Sirius would not be able to come close to it since a goblin ranger is weak in close range battle. It seems that the tactic was working and Sirius was now ton the defensive without Adrian guiding it fully it was not able to maximize its fast speed and destructive power. Adrian as if feeling the indecisive nature of Sirius started to give some commands albeit not directly since he does not know of the situation of Sirius battle. 
Instead he told Sirius to use Portal Assault if he is cornered and once the Goblin Ranger was in range for Phantom Rush use it to his advantage. He also told him to not use the Ragnarok skill as they would need to use it later for the Chieftain. Sirius now had concrete instructions albeit Vig had an idea on how to deal with the Goblin Ranger. Sirius now tried to be on the offensive as the effective target range for the Goblin Ranger is 50 meters. Sirius tried what his master said and used Portal Assault to close in the gap between him and the Goblin Ranger. Using Portal Assault, Sirius could travel a maximum distance of 10 meters but he could only close the gap by 7 meters because the Goblin Ranger would increase the gap by 3 meters since it would retreat. Sirius did not give up and continued his pursuit triggering some traps along the way which reduce his health since it was mostly spike traps. When Sirius was now 10 meters apart from the Goblin Ranger, he immediately used Phantom Rush and started bombarding the Goblin Ranger with scratches and bites. It did not take long for bleed status to stack upon the Goblin Ranger and Sirius's agility stacks to go up thus making it a fearsome opponent to enemies who are alive. Phantom Rush ended and the remaining health of the Goblin Ranger was only one third of its original health. Dot. Sirius used Portal Assault once again to close the distance but it seemed that the Goblin Ranger has predicted where Sirius would appear from and fired an arrow towards Sirius that has a brown energy. Sirius was knocked back by 40 meters and the Goblin Ranger took some distance towards him but it seems the hunter has now become the hunted. A few meters away from Adrian another set of battle is going on. This battle was between the Goblin Mage with the Goblin Chieftain and Ken Lon with Sina. Random bursts of fire and magic being hurled could be seen in this battle with the occasional sword slash coming from the Goblin Chieftain. Ken Lon was pressuring the Goblin Mage on the defensive at first but things changed when the Goblin Chieftain entered the battle. Ken Lon now had to juggle with two enemies thankfully Cena rushed to his aid and healed him but the fight was still difficult. The Goblin Chieftain was now blocking his breath attack due to it being buffed by the Goblin Mage it is fighting and Ken Lon was also getting hit by dark bullets and other bullet like elemental magic that was not fire attribute since he was immune to the fire attribute. When Ken Lon was finished firing its breath attack, the Goblin Chieftain would jump towards him and slash his scales with his sword. Even if dragon scales were extremely hard as the legend says that could not be held true if it was just a newborn dragon and a low leveled one at that. Dragons were creatures that do not associate themselves with lower life forms since they pride themselves as the strongest race. Newborn dragons would be well protected by their parents since they are still not mature enough and beings higher leveled than them could easily kill a dragon which is how some characters or NPCs in the game possessed the dragon slayer title. Even if it was child it was still a dragon which is why they were eligible to get the title but the stories did not explain what happened next. What happened next was the parent of the dragon angered at what the NPC has done devastated the country erasing it from the map which is why there is no longer an NPC with the title of dragon slayer alive at least that is what Pan told Adrian when Ken Lon hatched. The goblin chieftain managed to scratch Ken Lon's scales because it was higher leveled than him and Ken Lon was still a juvenile in terms of dragon age. With magic attacks and physical attacks bombarding Ken Lon it was not a mystery why its health points was already down to half even with Cena's continuous healing and even Cena was also losing stamina since in terms of strength it was the weakest of the three soulbounds because it was still a magpie despite carrying a mythical bird strain. The fight was not one-sided though as Ken Lon would counterattack every time the goblin chieftain would slash at it and the high mana pool of the goblin mage was now only one-fourth of its original. It consistently formed mana barriers on itself before the goblin chieftain came to its aid and it also depleted a lot forming attack spells and enchantments which is why its high mana pool was now a measly one-fourth of its original. The goblin mage was desperate in killing the dragon before it because it could sense the goblin ranger's waning life force as it was low. The goblin mage started casting mana burn which would deal the same damage as the mana expended in exchange for bringing the user's health down to 10% of the total maximum health. Mana Burn is called the Glass Cannon Suicide Skill for the Mage class job because of its drawbacks. Not only does it lower your health to 10% of the maximum, it also puts you in a weakened state and permanently lowers your intelligence stat by 3% but mages still get this skill in case of emergencies and their guilds also encourages them to get it. The Goblin Mage was supposed to finish chanting the Mana Burn skill when a Dark Crescent Energy managed to hit it despite being blocked by the shield of the Goblin Chieftain. Chapter 77, Slayer of Goblins 2 Adrian now having dealt about half of the health of the two goblin warrior as damage now had enough mana to use his summon, Psyche Armament skill. He put some distance between the two goblin warriors and shouted the skill name. Summon, Psyche Armament Sword. What occurred was what usually happens when he uses that skill in which his demi gauntlets but he forgot to cancel the geoforce effect because he was too focused on battle. The sword appeared in front of him but instead of the previous small version that first appeared when he first used the skill, the great sword version of the weapon appeared. It seems that whatever effect was applied to his current weapon would also carry out to the Psyche armament. 
Adrian took hold of the great sword and contrary to its looks, it weighed nothing at all. But to his enemies that the great sword would strike, the sword would weigh a lot. The only way to counter Adrian's weapon was a disarming skill but even that would only work by a 50 to 50 chance because of Adrian's skill to ignore status conditions. The two goblin warriors did not charge towards Adrian because they were wary of the weapon the demon in front of them was suddenly holding. The great sword looked heavy due to its immense size but the demon in front of them was swinging it like it was a stick. Before the two goblin warriors could snap out of their confusion, a black crescent energy was already heading towards them. The two goblin warriors who had about more or less 50% of their health points was reduced down to merely 20% of their health with a single skill shot. Meanwhile even the one who released the skill was also flabbergasted due to the immense damage that he had dished out. Not only did he manage to hit the two goblin guards but he also managed to damage the goblin mage and goblin chieftain because they entered the extended range of the skill. You have dealt 17,368 physical damage to the goblin warrior. You have dealt 17,388 physical damage to the goblin warrior. You have dealt 10,955 physical damage to the goblin mage. You have successfully managed to cancel the spell casting of the goblin mage. It cannot invoke spells in the next 10 seconds. You have dealt 8,257 physical damage to the goblin chieftain. Adrian was surprised because the damage modifier of the skill that he used was not high but on top of the skill damage, he also consumed some essences to strengthen the skill. What Adrian used was not the third skill of the Psyche Armament but its first skill which is why even he was surprised. Skill, Soul Searing Crescent Wave. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, Send out a dark crescent sword wave of energy in front of you that deals damage equal to 150% of your total physical attack as physical damage and travels up to 10 meters. Cannot be blocked using physical defense skills as it is treated as a magic projectile despite dealing physical damage. Cooldown, 10 seconds. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 10. Adrian further empowered the skill using 20 essences and was gladly surprised by the large damage that he dealt. It seems that essences greatly increases the damage of the skill and he would need test how much amplification can the essences could give him. He thought it was impossible to empower the Psyche Armament skills but it seems he was mistaken but if one thought about it would be called as extremely wasteful. Using Psyche Armament skills meant that he would consume essences when casting them and if he consumed some more to amplify the damage he would be mostly left with nothing. He needs to balance cost and effectiveness if he was going to use this strategy. The skill also traveled more than 10 meters unlike what the skill description has stated which means it was probably due to the essence and the geoforce status of the sword. The sword wave was much bigger due to the area of the arc that he made when he swung the sword sideways. It even traveled all the way to the place where Ken Lon and Sina was taking place which was about more or less 50 meters from Adrian's location. Adrian was now full of confidence due to his high damage and charged towards the two goblin warriors. The two goblin warriors were surprised by the action of the demon because there was clear bloodlust in its eyes as it charged towards them. The two goblin warriors did not face Adrian combined but rather one at a time. The first one would parry the sword while the other one would strike at the opponent while the first one was holding the Adrian down. What happened was contrary to what the two goblin warriors thought of what should have happened. When the first goblin warrior tried to hold down Adrian's sword, the goblin warrior was blown away instead because of the sheer weight that collided with its sword. The goblin warrior was flung 5 meters away and it even let go of its sword. The second goblin warrior was too stunned to do a follow-up attack and became a frozen with fear. Adrian then swung his oversized sword towards the neck of the second goblin warrior and was greeted by a notification that was pleasing to the eye. You have successfully executed the goblin warrior. Experience has been earned. Even though Adrian had a permanent 1% chance to execute any enemy that did not mean that he would be able to execute one enemy out of every hundred or so enemies. The probability is defined as he has a 1% chance to execute an enemy individual and this is for each individual. It does not mean that if he has not executed the first enemy then that would mean he would get 1 out 99 chances. Take for example when he cast Vortex, he dealt damage to hundreds of goblin recruits yet not even one of them was executed. It was all for Aran Xus to decide if he wanted to grace Adrian with an enemy execute. Adrian now charged towards the remaining goblin warrior and finished it off by overpowering it using sheer strength and the weight of the sword. It did not take long for it to fall and become specks of light. Adrian now looked towards serious place of battle and he could see that he was in an advantage. Adrian was about to look towards Ken Lon and Sina's place of battle when something came crashing towards him. Adrian was knocked back 10 meters away and has received damage equal to 20% of his total health. 
he caught a glimpse of the attacker and it was no other than the goblin chieftain. It seems furious and charged towards Adrian when he was not paying attention which was a mistake on Adrian's part because he thought he would be safe because Kenlon was in battle with it. It seems that all the aggro was shifted towards him when he killed the two goblin warriors. He could also see that the goblin chieftain was buffed by three kinds of buffs from his inspection. The goblin chieftain even became enraged despite having 90% of its health points remaining. Monster, Goblin Chieftain Status, Haste Increased Regeneration Strengthened Enraged When monsters become enraged they usually exhibit double the power and with all the buffs the Goblin Chieftain has it was a no-brainer why Adrian was flung 10 meters. The Goblin Chieftain continued its rampage towards Adrian and the latter responded by charging towards it also. The two swords clashed and sparks flew. Adrian thought he had the upper hand but he was pushed by two feet which means the strength of the Goblin Chieftain exceeded his and the weight of the Geoforced Sword combined. Adrian retreated immediately but was not given much breathing room because the goblin chieftain kept following it. Adrian's brain was working on fast mode and he decided to cast chrono lag to slow down the pursuit of the goblin chieftain. The debuff worked but the goblin chieftain was easily covering the distance. Left with no choice, Adrian decided to use the second skill attached to the sword psyche armament. Twin fang form Adrian stated. The great sword split into two parts in the middle and became two single edge blades. Adrian became faster due to the effect of using this form. Skill, Twin Fang Form. Tier, Legacy. Type, Toggle. Effect, splits the double-edged sword into two to become single-edge blades. While in this form, the wielder is granted a 10% increase in damage and a 20% increase in agility. The active skill Soul Searing Crescent Wave will release one sword wave each blade but would deal half damage each compared to the original. If activated again, it would combine the two single edge blades once again to form a double edge sword. Cooldown, 0.5 second. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 5 per form change. Chapter 78, Slayer of Goblins 3. Adrian now holding to two blades that still is big considering it is bigger than Adrian himself. It seems that the goblin chieftain now put him in the priority list rather than helping its fellow commanders. It deemed it necessary to finish off Adrian rather than aid the Goblin Mage. Adrian was now in a fierce one-on-one -on -one battle with the Goblin Chieftain. Due to his increased agility, even the enraged Goblin Chieftain is having a hard time attacking Adrian. Adrian was weaving through the battlefield as if he was doing a sword dance and his strikes started becoming illusionary which confuses the Goblin Chieftain as he could not parry some of the strikes. Although Adrian weaving his body in a circular motion to cover all the surroundings of the Goblin Chieftain is proving effective, it also greatly drains his stamina which is why he decided to use the twin fang form of the first skill of the sword to hasten killing the goblin chieftain. Skill, Soul Searing Crescent Wave, Twin Fang Version. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, Send out a dark crescent sword wave of energy in front of you that deals damage equal to 75% of your total physical attack as physical damage and travels up to 10 meters. You can fire one dark crescent sword wave per blade. The skill cooldown will only take effect once both sword waves have been fired. Cannot be blocked using physical defense skills as it is treated as a magic projectile despite dealing physical damage. Cooldown, 10 seconds. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 10. Adrian fired off the first sword wave using his left blade and aimed it at the right ankle of the goblin chieftain. The goblin chieftain was unaware of what hit him and suddenly wailed in pain as it looks at its right leg having been damaged. You have dealt 5,763 physical damage to the Goblin Chieftain. Due to the increase in damage and his soul essence stacks having been full, Adrian now dealt serious damage even to the boss monster. Adrian did not fire the second sword wave because he caught sight of the Goblin Ranger. He was only about 20 meters away from it and he suddenly had a great idea that could be beneficial for Sirius. Adrian taunted the Goblin Chieftain by smirking in a condescending fashion and it proved useful as it started following him. Adrian led it near the area where Sirius and the Goblin Ranger were fighting and when the Goblin Chieftain was in striking zone for the skill, Adrian smiled and if he did not notice his smile could give someone the creeps because he smiled just like a demon. Sirius used Phantom Rush Adrian ordered using the Soul Link. Sirius disappeared in place and broke the world's limits and attacked the Goblin Chieftain continuously until the bleed status effect has maximized and it was full of bruises. Adrian did not stay idle though as he used Chrono Lag on the Goblin Ranger as it entered the maximum distance and used the remaining Sword Wave to strike the Goblin Ranger. You have successfully slain the Goblin Ranger. Experience points has been gained. You have leveled up. 
The Goblin Ranger died just like that but Adrian did not take a break or look at the drop loot because a notification suddenly appeared that worried him a bit. The Goblin Chieftain has entered Berserker mode. All its status values will increase by 20% but it will not differentiate between friend and foe. One of the most annoying mode for a boss is Berserk mode because it has a great rise in stats but also the hidden effect for aggro. Any boss monster who become Berserk will not have an aggro function and would attack anyone who strikes at it. Some would say this is beneficial but others would argue because it is not useful for small parties especially in the case of Adrian right now as the Goblin Chieftain is bashing Sirius and is in the brink of dying. Adrian decided to switch the target to him so he while the Goblin Chieftain was busy catching Sirius and not paying attention to him, he went into a sprint and then jumped. Adrian then plunged his twin swords at the shoulders of the Goblin Chieftain. The leather armor that the Goblin Chieftain showed a bit of resistance and he was only able to plunge the two swords about three inches deep but still the Goblin Chieftain wailed in pain. The Goblin Chieftain tried to shake Adrian off immediately and it was successful. Adrian did a circular motion in the air and unfolded his wings to regain balance and land safely. Adrian also ordered Sirius to recuperate at Cena's side and help his fellow Soulbounds in dealing with the Goblin Mage. Sirius reluctantly agreed as it was now only running on a quarter of its max health. Adrian was reserving his invigorate skill when all of them are facing Goblin Chieftain as his Soulbounds would be the one tanking damage when they arrive. Adrian looked at the health of the Goblin Chieftain and he saw it was still at 65%. It seems its regeneration is as a lesser troll. It must have a skill that toughens itself and increases regeneration when undergoing Berserk mode. Adrian decided to stall the Goblin Chieftain since the Goblin Mage is now struggling with Kenlon's barrage of attacks that included its breath attack and tail strikes. The Goblin Mage's mana was visibly going down as it continued to cast its mana shield when blocking Kenlon's attacks. It was now hanging on to its 5% mana as a last resort and when it was about to be emptied out, the Goblin Mage casted an immediate spell and consumed 30% of its health to regain 30% of its mana back. When Kenlon noticed the phenomenon, he became visibly irritated as the prey managed to hang on by a thread. Kenlon was irritated but it knows that the enemy before them was only prolonging the fight as it could no longer attack them because the Goblin Chieftain suddenly charged towards its master. Kenlon has perfect trust and knows that its master is capable to hold the Goblin Chieftain at bay. Kenlon was unleashing its breath attack at the Goblin Mage when it saw its eldest brother, Sirius, going towards them, the soulbound hierarchy will be explained in the succeeding chapters. Sirius growled and Cena who was perched on top of Kenlon flew towards Sirius and casted its healing skills at the former. A few minutes passed and Sirius was back to 55% maximum health and joined the assault towards the Goblin Mage which converted 15% of its health once again as mana. The Goblin Mage was keen on protecting itself using its mana shield but did not expect its worst enemy to appear. Sirius immediately used Phantom Rush the moment he was able to and its field of view became colored in grey. Sirius started off with a swipe attack to the Goblin Mage's face then bite attacks at its arms and legs. The Goblin Mage did not know what was attacking it or how to defend against it as its health was visibly reducing. To make matters worse, the Goblin Mage was hit by the breath attack and was losing health faster. It was no longer able to cast Mana Shield because of its lack of concentration. It did not take long for the Goblin Mage to become specks of light. The Soulbounds hurried towards Adrian's location as they could feel that their master was fatigued. The first to reach was Kenlon as Sirius was somewhat tired from the recent battle. Kenlon immediately striked the Goblin Chieftain with its tail and managed to knock it back. The Goblin Chieftain suddenly shifted its aggro towards Kenlon and it suddenly used a skill. The Goblin Chieftain jumped high that it almost reached the cave ceiling and hurled itself downwards like a comet. Kenlon was caught off guard and was pinned to the ground. Adrian saw what happened and immediately ordered Sirius to use Ragnarok as Kenlon was being pounded continuously back towards the ground. If others saw this scene they would be in disbelief as a goblin was able to pin down a 10-meter dragon. Though Kenlon was only taking moderate damage but it was constantly getting affected by the stagger status effect. Sirius was visibly angered as he could see his little brother getting pinned towards the ground which is why it activated its Ragnarok skill immediately. The silhouette of a giant wolf-like creature appeared as Sirius charged towards the goblin chieftain. The goblin chieftain sensed the killing intent and looked towards the source but was not able to defend against the attack as it hit the goblin chieftain's body directly. Goblin chieftain roared in pain and a visible hole can be seen on its stomach but it still had 10% of its health remaining. It was then a giant ghoulish sword materialized above its head and it plunged down creating black smoke and generated a shockwave that blew debris and small stones away from its location. Chapter 79, Ominous Title You have successfully slain the goblin chieftain. Experience has been gained. Player Equinox has leveled up two times. Soulbound Sirius has leveled up three times. 
Soulbound Ken Long has leveled up three times. Soulbound Cena leveled up three times. Weapons Mastery has increased in Skill Mastery. Player Equinox has achieved the title Goblin Slayer. When these slur of notifications showed in Adrian's vision he sighed and laid on the ground because his stamina bar is already in the red. He was smiling as he gazed at the dungeon ceiling. It was an electrifying feeling when he used the last skill for the Sword Psyche Armament. Skill, Soul Avenger. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, Deal damage dependent on the amount of health the target has lost. Damage starts from 500% physical damage to 1500% physical damage to a single target. Enemies near the target will also be damaged by 70% of the total damage that the target was dealt with. Cooldown, 3 hours. Cast time, 3 seconds. Skill cost, 50 essences. It was Adrian's last attempt since if he prolonged the battle any longer his stamina will plummet and then his satiety will go down further and he would lose health even just by walking. Now he knows why this skill costed 50 essences just to activate. The skill itself was devastating in terms of damage especially the area of effect is pretty useful during swarms of enemies. Adrian rose up from the ground when his stamina bar was recovered to almost 30% and proceeded to take all of the loot that he previously did not pay attention to. He picked up tons of coins and even managed to amount about 105 gold pieces which was a sizable amount. If a raid party were to equally distribute the gold collected for 20 persons since a maximum of 20 people could enter this dungeon scenario then they would be given a measly 5 gold in return for a lot of work. This is one of the reasons that players usually avoid farming humanoid enemies or NPCs because they drop items in smaller amounts compared to beast-like monsters. The goblin recruits dropped some armors and weapons but it was mostly of common and uncommon quality which was useless in Adrian's eyes since players at this stage had at least one or two rare quality items. What caught his eye though was the items that each boss monster dropped. Each boss monster dropped an item and a skill book each. It was due to the first explorer reward that increased the odds of dropping items. The goblin ranger dropped a rare quality crossbow and the skill book for knockback arrow which is also rare quality. The goblin mage dropped a rare quality robe and a rare quality skill book for chain lightning. The most prized of all that Adrian has looted was an epic quality broadsword and an epic quality skill book for stampede which is for warriors. Adrian looked at the description for each item and weapon while he was still resting. Weapon, Red Sparrow Crossbow. Tier, Rare Level Requirement, 45. Description, A red crossbow with its tip shaped like a bird's head and is reminiscent of a bird gliding. It is the favorite weapon for rangers who wants faster fire rate but lesser damage compared to a traditional bow. Damage modifier, 50 to 60 attack speed, 1.2. Weight, 20 units. Restrictions, bow mastery or ranger job class or weapons mastery. Armor, darkness magus robe. Tier, rare level requirement, 45. Description, a robe infused with dark attribute magic and is mostly used by practitioners of dark magic. It is dreary and might give the wearer bad luck but it is not proven. It may be uncomfortable to wear but it is light on the body. Dark magic resistance plus 10% light attribute resistance 5%. Dark magic mastery plus 1 dark magic damage plus 5%. Weight, 5 units. Restrictions, magic related job class. Weapon, tribal broadsword. Tier, epic level requirement, 50. Description. A broadsword used by chieftains of a certain species as both a weapon and a ceremonial artifact. Only leaders who have proven their worth can wield this sword. Damage modifier, 100 to 120 attack speed, 0.75. Generate skill, war cry, details. Weight, 80 units. Restriction, sword mastery 5. Adrian checked the skill war cry and was amazed because with this skill embedded in the broadsword its value would become higher. Skill. War Cry Tier, Epic Type, Buff Effect, Produce an invigorating yell that empowers you and all your allies that are in the vicinity or is able to hear your shout. Doubles the caster's stats for 10 seconds while his slash her allies gains 50% stat increase for the same duration. Cannot be used during silenced state. Cooldown, 10 minutes. Cast time, Instant. Skill cost, 10 stamina and 10 mana points. A skill that not only doubles the user's stats for 10 seconds but also his allies is very useful especially for those who loves to be in hunting parties. 10 seconds may not be a lot of time from a non-gamer's perspective but for professional gamers or any gaming enthusiast would say that every second is precious because it only takes a split second for someone to turn the tides of battle in their favor. 
He then looked at the skill book's descriptions. Skill book, knockback arrow. Tier, rare. Type, arrow enchantment. Effect, charge your arrow with a force capable of knocking back your opponent by 10 meters. Deal 75% of your total physical damage to the target. Cooldown, 3 minutes. Cast time, instant. Skill cost, 50 mana points. Restrictions, bow mastery or weapons mastery. Skill book, chain lightning. Tier, rare. Type, active. Effect, call forth the power of lightning in your hands and cast it 10 meters in front of you. The first enemy hit will be dealt with 100% of your magic damage while succeeding targets receive 5% less magic damage per enemy hit until 50% magic damage decrease. Succeeding targets must at least be 3 meters near the initial target for the lightning to spread. Max number of targets, 10. Cooldown, 10 minutes. Cast time, instant. Skill cost, 300 mana points. Restrictions, magic class related job class. Skill book. Stampede. Tier, Epic. Type, Active. Effect, charges your body forward in a straight line while increasing your movement speed by 200%. All enemies that collides with the user will be stunned for 1 second and be dealt 120% of the caster's total physical damage. Cannot be affected by movement status conditions during the charge. The caster can end the skill early. If the caster collides with a wall or other terrain, he slash she will be stunned for 0.5 seconds. If the user carries a shield it could chain this skill with shield bash. Maximum travel distance, 20 meters. Cooldown, 15 minutes. Cast time, instant. Skill cost, 50 stamina. Restrictions, warrior related job class. Adrian was unable to learn two of the three skill books that he has obtained but he was not disheartened because when he picked the demos race, he already knew the pros and cons. Although he could use the knockback arrow skill book, it could only be used when he summoned the Bao Psyche armament which would be a waste so he decided to just sell the three weapons and the three skill books. He would also check if he could trade them to other players. Now that he has seen all his material gains, he decided to take a look at his newly acquired title. Title, Goblin Slayer. Description, So you like killing goblins hey. Effect, Deal 50% more damage when damaging goblins or goblin related enemies. You are considered the mortal enemy for all of goblin kind. You will be hated by all goblin NPCs and they would choose to kill you rather than help you. This title can be upgraded. Adrian did not know whether to laugh or cry because the title's only benefit is the additional damage towards goblin type monsters while the rest is more of a punishment. The only silver lining is that the title could be upgraded and it might decrease or erase the downsides of the title. He could only sigh and give up being friends with goblins in this life. Adrian then walked towards the cage where the prisoners were being kept. When Adrian was in front of the cage, Instead of being relieved the prisoners were acting all scared and some even peed themselves. They muttering words to Adrian while kneeling in the ground. PLEE sir. Spare us. Do not hurt us please. One of the girls who was still able to speak begged. Do I look that terrifying? Was the thought that floated on Adrian's mind as he has completely forgotten that his glamour was dispelled and he currently looks like a demon. As he was pondering why the prisoners were afraid of him. His soul bounds gathered towards him and as if pouring more water in a breaking dam, some prisoners fainted because of Sirius and Ken Lon's presence. The two soul bounds presence was the final nail on the coffin for some of the prisoners to retain their consciousness. Chapter 80, Returning to the Paradox Plains Adrian was waiting for the prisoners to calm down before he broke the locks on the cage. The prisoners were also looking at him with worry and fear in their eyes as they fear that the demon in front of them will feed them to his pets. Adrian sighed as he realized that may have been scared by him because he saw his image reflected on a prisoner's eyes and he was in original form. He was thinking casting glamour again but that may become a poison to his race as humans would know that their race could deceive the eyes of humans. Adrian then did not wait for the other prisoners to get relaxed as he crushed the lock of the cage. When he inspected the lock on the cage it said that it had details on how to open it. Item, Common Lock. Tier, Common. Description an iron lock that can be forged by any beginner blacksmith. It is made using a combination of metals but mostly iron. A specific key or master key is needed to open it. In order to break it using force, at least a hundred strength points is needed. Since Adrian's strength stat already exceeds a hundred, he casually crushed the lock with his bare hands which increased the fear and terror of the prisoners that kept inside the cage. Some started prostrating and some cried to be spared. 
Due to their reactions, Adrian frowned as in their eyes he was a terrifying being able to kill them just with his bare hands. Adrian then decided to command them rather than tell them amicably on what they should do. All of you leave this place and be careful on the way out. A few minutes of walk from here would be the main road on which would take you about an hour to reach the nearest city. When Adrian spoke those words, the prisoners started thanking him but there was still fear in their eyes because some think that the demon was only spouting sweet words before he kills them all. Despite Adrian telling them they could leave, the prisoners were still rooted in place because of the fear that those who leave will be struck down and become fodder to the demon's pets. Adrian could only sigh because he could read the prisoners' faces and could more or less guess their judgment. Adrian could no longer linger around here anymore since he already looted everything and the surrounding barracks were devastated because of the black hole his skill generated. The only things rooted were the heavy objects like lumps of metal in a bundle and the metal cage which housed the prisoners. Adrian decided to bid farewell to them first by just walking away from them since he already broke the lock anyways. He was walking away from the prisoners about 30 meters away from them when a notification popped up in his field of vision. You have successfully cleared the hidden mission in the Save the Prisoners in Secret Thrall Plateau Goblin Encampment Outpost. You have been given 100% experience points as a result. Due to your experience points multiplier you have gained 300% experience points. Player Equinox has leveled up three times. Congratulations you have now increased your level to 51. Sirius has leveled up three times. Ken Lon has leveled up three times. Cena has leveled up three times. Adrian was very happy with the unexpected reward that he was given. No wonder there were prisoners there in the dungeon. It was set up as a hidden mission for those who finished the instance dungeon as a reward if they were observant enough. Adrian tore up the teleportation scroll leading to the paradox planes because he would as a scholar on how to refine his core. Little did Adrian know that saving the prisoners would give a small ripple in the country that the dungeon was located because he did not investigate that one of the prisoners was actually a daughter of a noble that was reported missing. If Adrian did not wreck the place, he would have seen the piles of armor and weapons bearing a crest of a noble but alas he concluded that walking away was the most he could do since the prisoners feared him. Adrian and his soulbounds was teleported back to the Paradox Plains. Adrian was still exhilarated at the sight of the Paradox Plains because the place felt mystical in a way. The sky was like gazing at the cosmos itself and the houses were of a crystal that absorbs light and twinkles that gives the effect that the stars themselves fall down and shine their beauty to the surroundings. Adrian was supposed to head straight to a scholar's abode when he realized that he is running empty on potions department so he first headed towards Gina's shop. Due to the hotfix, the potions were also updated. Back then healing and mana potions could sustain a player's health and mana every 25% interval up to 100 but now the developers scrapped that ever since players hit the upper hundreds in terms of level. Potions were now updated to heal a specific health or mana point number unlike the previous percentage health or mana restoration. There was tension between the player and the developers at first because of the big change but the developers reason was valid. We updated the restoration potions because we concluded that it was not productive to rely on potions as a measure of healing oneself. We hope that by updating and adding more potion recipes, the players would think more and plan more of their upcoming battles rather than charging head-on since they knew that they have a fallback plan. The developers did not erase the percentage health potions but only increased the crafting mastery for the creation of one. At the beginning low recovery potions that healed a person's health or mana by 25% can be crafted by a beginner alchemist. Now only intermediate alchemist mastery 7 can craft low recovery potions. Only Master Alchemists can craft medium recovery potions and so on. The players who stock up on these percentage health potions thought they could score an easy way of getting money and they did but realized that they lost more since now only NPCs can craft them and these NPCs only craft about a hundred. There was only a handful of players in the Intermediate Alchemist department which some are already affiliated with guilds. Also there was still no one who has achieved Intermediate Mastery 7 in Alchemy according to the player base. The highest known is a player known as Smoking Grass that is an Intermediate Alchemist Mastery 3. Sub-job classes that focuses on production was difficult to increase in mastery unlike some adventurer type sub-job classes like the Explorer or Forager sub-job class. In order to increase to an Intermediate Mastery in production classes, one needed weeks or a few months of successes and failures in crafting. But once someone hit Intermediate Mastery, one would need perseverance and a lot of resources which is why only large guilds could hire these types of players because the large guilds could give them access to resources. Adrian arrived at Gianna's shop and was greeted by the same promiscuous person herself. Adrian chatted a bit before looking at the things that are for sale. As he suspected, 
the potions were changed and now it included different potions that restore both health and mana at the same time or potions that increase a bit of health and damage. The shop's catalogue is now full of different potions. The percentage recovery potions were still there but only low on stock and now more expensive than before. When Adrian mentioned a golem core that he got when he defeated a golem, Gianna's eyes sparkled and told Adrian to show her the core. Gianna took great interest in the core and decided to buy the golem core from Adrian since she told him that it was still usable since a bit of life force is retained which was rare for golem cores. Once a golem dies, the golem's core would just become an empty husk with no life energy inside but the mud golem core was different. Adrian exchanged it with five complete recovery potions that was increased from three due to Adrian haggling the price. Adrian also bought a lot of potions worth 100 gold which two of them was the low health recovery potion. He thinks it was a good investment as he might not have more chances on stockpiling potions when he spends a lot of time at the field. In 30 minutes anyway, the execution blade skillbook would be sold since its price did not increase any more for the past hour. The cost now exactly is 18,500 gold which is quite hefty for an epic skillbook. Adrian wanted to sell the legendary skillbook in his inventory but decided to put in a player auction instead as the commission fee would only be dependent on the merchant hosting the player auction. Adrian chatted a little more with Gianna before bidding her goodbye and walking towards his scribe master's workplace. Adrian decided to ask his mentor, Ernas, if he knows how to form his core since Gianna's answer was it is about love or something which Adrian did not understand since she was either being cryptic or teasing Adrian. Chapter 81, Forming a Core Adrian entered his mentor's workshop and looked for Ernas. He called a few times and did not hear an answer so he looked near the bookshelves and discovered a child sleeping with a pile of papers over him. Adrian nudged the body to check if it was dead but the body suddenly jolted up and yawned. Adrian heaved a sigh of relief as it seems Ernas was just sleeping due to exhaustion. He asked what happened and it seems his guess was correct as Ernas told him that the latter was just asleep because he got too engrossed on his research that he did not sleep for ten days. So what brings you here my dear apprentice? I have not called for you which means you have something that needs my assistance. Ernas inquired. I was just wondering if you have any idea on how do I condense my core. I was hoping on getting an idea from you since you are probably the most learned person here. I asked Gianna but all she said was just about love and stuff. Adrian said while adding a bit of praise. Ernas chuckled before he answered, she told you that because Gianna is an Eros or in layman terms a love demon. One must look inside in order to become stronger that was is the saying that is most sacred in our race. Adrian was still puzzled and Ernas felt his apprentice's lack of knowledge so he spoke more. Unlike other races that evolve, our race changes are glaringly obvious. A lesser demon cannot overpower a greater demon more so if it is an archdemon and there are only three archdemons currently living with us. When we evolve our species also changes which means the very cell structure of our body changes but not our souls thus we retain being demons. Ernest said. That still does not answer my question. Adrian grumbled. What I am trying to say my dear apprentice is that only you by yourself can further improve yourself because it is not something I can help you with. Try to look inside you and see for yourself on what you can do to become stronger. In the end, you can only rely on yourself as all life adheres by the context of survival of the fittest. Ernest said with a stern tone. Adrian bid goodbye as he did not have any more questions and he doubts if he would get a clear and concise answer as even the smartest NPC was being cryptic. He mulled over the words of his scribe mentor as he knows that there must have been clues as Ernas would not just tell him something useless. Adrian tried to rack his brain on what could he do but he did not have an idea for about an hour and his alarm to eat ringed which he decided to log out of the game first. Adrian was eating his snack when his mother joined him as they enjoy each other's company. Adrian was in deep thought and his mother could read it on his face. Adrian's mother asked what is troubling him and he told her that it was about the game. A vein popped in Adrian's mother's head as she did not expect that his son was so troubled by a game and not about his future but she controlled herself and asked her son what the specific problem is. I am troubled because I do not know the meaning of the words, one must look inside in order to become stronger. Adrian said honestly. I think you are reading too much into it as it has always been your problem to overthink things. From my perspective, it just means you must evaluate yourself from the beginning to what you are now. And what is the best way to re-evaluate yourself? Adrian's mother said. What is the best way? Adrian pondered and he arrived only at one conclusion which is also the simplest way of self-re-evaluation and Adrian mouthed the words, self-meditation. I think you have already arrived to the conclusion his mother told him as she took a sip of her tea. Thanks a lot for the advice mom. It was very helpful. Love you. 
Adrian said as he excitedly headed towards his room. It was nothing and do not rush as you might get into an accident. His mother shouted towards the fleeting silhouette of Adrian. Adrian logged back in the game and started with his hunch as in other spiritual beliefs there is a concept of inner demons that reside in each individual's heart. The self-meditation is what triggered this idea from Adrian as he calmed himself in order to enter a deep meditative state. In some novels that he read there is a concept that one must conquer or defeat their inner demons so that they could become stronger than they were before or block a wall that inhibits their growth. Adrian was not entirely sure if this would work out but it did not hurt to try. He sat in a meditative position and tried to empty his thoughts and he got system notifications but strangely enough he could read them even with his eyes closed. You are in meditation. You have entered a deep meditative state. You have earned the skill meditation. Adrian then tried thinking about all his experiences when he suddenly heard another system message that was abrupt. You are in a perfect meditative state. All parameters are met. Your consciousness will be transported to your inner world. Adrian felt like his mind became a blur and he felt something akin to motion sickness as his view changed from darkness to a place like the Paradox Plains but he was standing on what looks like a floating island. The island was made of dark purple rock with no signs of life growing from it. If Adrian looked around him all he saw was a sky devoid of stars. Adrian looked at the dark sky and tried to pierce it using his evil eye but nothing came through. It seems that the darkness was swallowing the light as the color was pitch black. Adrian was looking at his surroundings until he heard a voice called him over. Hey! You there! Equinox! The voice said. Adrian was startled and turned towards the direction of the voice. He was shocked because what caught his eye was not some random stranger but an actual doppelganger of himself. The individual looked a lot like Adrian from his face all the way to his feet. It even had the same equipment that Adrian uses. The only difference is that the doppelganger's horns were bigger than Adrian's as it looked a lot like a greater demon's horn. The doppelganger then walked towards Adrian. The doppelganger stopped about two meters in front of Adrian and they both stared down each other. Adrian got a clear look at his doppelganger and got chills. It looked like a perfect carbon copy of him but only with its horn grown. The horns on the doppelganger's head was six inches in length that dwarfs Adrian's horn by a long shot. Its horns are also pointed unlike Adrian's that is only curved. Adrian did have to admit the horns looked badass. Welcome. Uh, how am I supposed to address you? Main man, head honcho, the one. The doppelganger pondered. Adrian was confused by the doppelganger's question and it noticed that Adrian was in thought. The doppelganger then bursts Adrian's thinking bubble when he told Adrian the answer to a question that he was about to ask. You see as you have guessed. I am you and you are me. Well technically speaking we are the same entity but different in attitude, yada yada. The doppelganger said. How can there be two of us at the same time? Adrian asked. This is your inner world and you could call me one of your three inner demons. The doppelganger said. Adrian was assessing the details the doppelganger said when he managed to catch one peculiar detail. Wait, did you just say one of my inner demons? Adrian abruptly asked. That is right. Pew pew pew. Woohoo. We have a winner. The doppelganger teased. Care to explain how can I meet the other two? Adrian asked with his arms folded as he was not amused by what the doppelganger did. Well there are two more besides me. You could call me the weakest of the bunch as I am you but better. You are still devastatingly weak which is why you cannot meet them yet. The doppelganger said as he charged towards Adrian with its enormous gauntlet. Adrian dodged the incoming attack and suddenly frowned as he managed to read the system prompt that popped out. Well this is a bit unfair Adrian grumbled. You are forbidden to use your soul bounds during this battle. Your summoner skills are sealed during this battle. Chapter 82, Battling One's Inner Demon Adrian immediately took distance in order to prepare himself for combat against his doppelganger but was unable to do so because it seems that the doppelganger became faster than him by a little bit. His doppelganger managed to hit him but he managed to barely block it by immediately activating Geoforce and crossing his arms to block the hit. Even though he managed to block the hit from his doppelganger, Adrian was still sent flying and had been damaged by a lot. You have received 101 damage from your inner demon. Adrian received about a hundred damage which is astounding because a block decreases the damage received by a player to only a quarter of its original damage which means he was supposed to get 400 damage with his defenses that decreases damage. Adrian suddenly got a chill in his spine and got a premonition that fighting this inner demon was not a walk in the park. Adrian's inner demon then used what is similar to Adrian's assault charge skill and went hurtling towards Adrian like a comet. Adrian who was still knocked away spread his wings and used the same skill as that of his inner demon. 
Adrian even used his pair of wings to propel him faster toward his inner demon. The two clashed mid-air and both cancelled each other's skill but Adrian noticed the difference. Adrian and his inner demon was both knocked back due to their clash but the former was knocked back farther by about half a meter. Adrian now knew that he lacked in the strength department or more specifically in the status point department. He was lacking in both strength and speed which means the only thing that would separate him from this inner demon would be his way of thinking. Adrian now had to outsmart a better version of his game avatar since this inner demon seems to be fitted with a special artificial intelligence like his soul bounds. Adrian started the battle once again and his inner demon was surprised because of the sudden change of attitude from its original self or host. Adrian the started a fist fight with his inner demon to check whether the inner demon has specific attack patterns in that sense. Adrian started with a punch to the gut while his inner demon retaliated with a strike towards his right shoulder. Adrian cleverly used his debuff skill chrono lag to delay the punch headed towards his right shoulder. The inner demon was going to block Adrian's strike using its left arm but it was also delayed using the debuff skill Adrian used. You have dealt 352 physical damage to your inner demon. The inner demon was knocked back a few inches due to the force of Adrian's blow but with that strike alone Adrian was able to deduce by how much the differences in stats lie since both of them are wearing the same equipment. His inner demon probably has a skill that increases his damage by a variable of 10% or decreased damage by 10%. Even if 10% might seem a small percentage to some people it was still a game changer that decides whether you win or lose. You might come short on a damage for a boss when both of you are fighting with both of your health bars in the red but you only managed to do 100 damage and leaving the boss with 10 health points left. The boss was able to defeat you because you were a little bit short on the damage you dealt thereby leaving with you the regret of losing because you were only lacking a bit. Outside of Adrian's consciousness, his body was in a meditation position and was floating about a feet above the ground. His soul bounds were spread out and was guarding him especially in the case of Sirius and Ken Lon as they looked imposing guarding Adrian. Adrian looked like a demon god because there was a faint aura surrounding his body that was grey with specks of black in color. The picture looked perfect except that Cena was perched on top of Adrian with a look saying I am the most beautiful bird in existence. There were also some of the Demos race children trying to play with Adrian's soul bounds as they thought that Sirius and Ken Lon looked cool. Some of the children already interacted with them during the times Adrian walked by the town square so they do not fear them as much and they also did not go near Adrian who was meditating because of his aura. Some kids tried to come close but they suffered from weakening when they were about 2 meter near him. When the patrolling officers spotted what was happening just outside of the city proper, they immediately told the children to go somewhere place else to play since their elder brother over there is having a very important moment in his life. Even the patrolling officers themselves were shocked because they could feel the strong aura surrounding their fellow demon. The aura surrounding the imp that was meditating was fierce unlike his look that he has on him because a cute fat bird was perched on top of his head. The elders say that the darker the aura surrounding the demon undergoing their personal trial the more it jumps on difficulty. According to the statements of other demons, their trials are different and is dependent on the type of color the aura they spread during meditation. Some take only minutes but some are said to even take days in conquering their first inner demon and the second inner demon is even more egregious than the first one which is why only the elders are the only arch demons in the paradox planes. For becoming a noblesse, it would only be a pipe dream as only the most determined could become an existence that is close to a god. The patrolling officers warned all the other residents not to disturb the young imp that was undergoing his personal trial as it might derail him of his chance becoming a fully pledged adult. As age does not matter towards the demos race as they do not age beyond a point and cannot die due to old age, they determine someone as an adult when they ascend to become a greater demon. A greater demon has a more likely chance in surviving the outside world when they are caught by the other people in this world since they are considered as enemies that must be exterminated at all costs. Adrian had a vague idea why demons or the five Asmodian races were considered as enemies when the war ended and it was that someone manipulated behind the scenes to make it happen. This idea popped in his head when he listened to a scholar's ramble that it was dangerous in the outside world for them since they have been deemed as a must-eradicate existence. Alas, Adrian put that idea in the back of his mind since he had a lot on his plate when he thought of that idea and he would never really know that he was so close to the truth but that story is for another time. In a certain mountainous area, a woman could be seen in tattered battle armor and had a messy look to her but that did not hide her beauty and elegance from showing. She held a long spear with a tip that was chipped that one could doubt if it could even do damage to an opponent. She had cerulean blue eyes that looked like a sparkling pure lake and gold color hair like that of the mineral itself but was not shining due it being covered in dirt. If any person was to see her they would only say the word beautiful to describe her as she was truly like a goddess descended from the heavens. 
Her body proportions were perfect for her height that was 175 cm and she looked like an international model if people were to guess what her job was if asked. This woman was none other than the most famous and most powerful female player in the game, Frey. Frey is considered as one of the top female players not only for her beauty but also for her unyielding battle style. She was given the title War Goddess by the Pandemonium community because of her being in the front lines and slaughtering enemies during a castle siege. She charged towards the front and decimated her enemies using a spear bigger than herself and even mesmerized her enemies because she was seen as if she was dancing with her spear on the battlefield. She was in EIR mountain range because of a prerequisite for her second job class advancement which was Valkyrie. She must reach the peak of this mountain in the condition that she must not change her equipment or even use potions to heal herself as Valkyries and myths were said to be the most powerful women warriors that could even use a pebble to kill a great monster. She used about a month in real time just to conquer the mountain and she was relieved that she finally conquered it. She sacrificed not only her epic grade equipment but also five levels which decreased her rankings in the leaderboard but she did not mind those minor details as she was only a few steps away in becoming the first player hopefully to earn a unique second class advancement. Chapter 83, Dog Fight Inside the consciousness of a certain demon, two similar individuals were fighting each other with explosive force that each of their blows constitutes a deafening blow if one were to be near them. The one with small horns that have not sprouted was very exhausted that he strains to even continue clashing with the similar looking demon with sprouted horns. The two demons were Adrian and his inner demon which is a greater demon version of himself. The two demons were basically having a showdown of power and did not notice that their immense power was already leveling out the ground. Adrian was below 70% health points while his inner demon is below 80% in health points. He realized that a match that focused on taking time will not give him an advantage. Adrian started using his brain in overdrive and finally smiled but his smile looked sinister because he started to forego fighting with honor. Adrian scooped up some dirt suing his enormous gauntlets and immediately thrown it at the face of his inner demon. The inner demon tried to close his eyes but Adrian used his chrono lag skill to delay the responses of his inner demon. Adrian really loved this debuff skill especially when he realized the flawed nature of the skill and now it was his ace in the hole during close range combat. Skill, Chrono Lag Mastery, V Tier, Uncommon Type, Debuff Effect, Slow down the time of an enemy using temporal manipulation. The target is slowed down by 80% for 3 seconds can be dispelled. Cooldown, 30 seconds. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 100 mana points. The skill was broken because of the 80% but it was balanced by the low duration and it could be dispelled. Adrian also noticed that his inner demon does not nullify half of the debuffs that it was hit which means the title effects must not be in effect. It is a pity that Adrian had no other debuff skill that could help him take the advantage. A few minutes into the brawl the inner demon was also using the same tactics that Adrian was using. The inner demon was getting smarter and is learning how to fight from Adrian himself by witnessing firsthand on what his combat tactics was. The AI installed must only have some of the parts of his combat simulation from his interactions with his other enemies. The inner demon must not have all his titles or probably the effect for some titles are locked which means the inner demon must not have a free revive like him or this match would be much more difficult. Ha, huh, I do not really care anymore. Adrian muttered after exhaling loudly. Oh what do you not care anymore? Asked his inner demon mockingly. The two once again started exchanging fists but Adrian just straight up went ham and even tried claw attacks. Adrian did not think through what his next attack would be or even calculate it because if it would all be learned and copied later so why bother? He did not care about tactics or his teachings with Bronx about fighting styles. He just straight up did nose punches, uppercuts and even threw soil just to disorient his inner demon. Adrian's inner demon tried to cope up with the wild attacks and managed to block some of the strikes in some type of way that even Adrian himself did not do. Adrian was now sure that his inner demon was also equipped with a martial artist's basic defense. When Adrian was watching tutorial videos on the Pandemonium streaming site, he made sure to look at all the known job advancements and its advantages and disadvantages so that he could choose a suitable battle style. Although he picked the newly released summoner job class in the end, that did not mean he does not remember what each NPC job instructor did. The inner demon would sometimes redirect Adrian's punches using the backhand of the gauntlet and distribute the force towards the ground since the gauntlets were enormous and a slight tap of the same power would easily divert it. The inner demon also relied in kicks after averting Adrian's punches which put him in the least advantage. Now that Adrian's fighting became erratic in nature and no longer had patters, the inner demon took much longer time to comprehend what Adrian was doing. When Adrian's punch would be diverted, 
he would suddenly follow up using a headbutt or strike at the chin. When Adrian's kick was avoided, he would claw the ground and suddenly toss soil and dust towards his inner demon. If a spectator were to look at their fight, one would even doubt who the real demon is in this bout. Adrian did not care if he looked petty or unrefined as a fighter and it finally paid off when he looked at his inner demon's health points and compared it to his. Name, Equinox, Inner Demon. Race, Demos. Species? Greater Demon. HP, 1000-3000. Name, Equinox. Race, Demos. Species, Imp, Lesser Demon. HP, 1731-3000. Adrian was winning the fight and only needed to land a couple more hits in order to win the fight but his inner demon suddenly backed off. Adrian was supposed to catch up with his inner demon but his body would not move. The system prompts even tells him that he is under stasis. You cannot move your body because you are in stasis. Adrian did not know what was happening and only managed to return to a calm demeanor when his inner demon talked to him because the adrenaline must have gone through his head as he was smiling while beating down his inner demon. I must say I did not expect then host to be this savage and unrelenting. His inner demon said with a surprised tone. Adrian could not mutter a reply since he could not move but his senses was still fine. The inner demon continued speaking as if he knows not to expect a reply from Adrian. I am proud of you because now I know that you have the mentality of doing what is necessary in order to win. From my observation, you always needed to calculate your next move or overthink a strategy and that is part of your weakness but our battle proves that you can overcome your over-decisive nature and release all inhibitions. I might have been speaking a bit too much but nevertheless you have passed my trial. His inner demon said with utter delight. Adrian had a mixture of doubt and dismay as he finally was enjoying trampling down on others. Maybe a little too much as he suddenly shivered that he might have that tendencies. He suddenly closed his eyes and prayed that he must not become a battle junkie like his best friend told him he was during their past video games. Adrian put that thought immediately into the back of his mind and continued listening to his inner demon as it was still not finished from speaking. Although you have passed my trial that still leaves what kind of greater demon you will become. As I have no control over that since you need to look further unto the power sleeping inside of you to become Stringer. You can think of me as a gatekeeper if you will. His inner demon said as it made some hand seals and a door appeared. The door was something akin to a mouth of a demon beast with sharp teeth with horns at the top of its head. The demon's mouth had sharp teeth and visible pair of fangs that close up. The demon gate's eyes were even closed. His inner demon touched the demon gate and it suddenly opened its eyes revealing black corneas and violet pupils. It started opening its mouth bit by bit until a swirl of grey and white energy reminiscent of the aura that Adrian was releasing was seen when it fully opened its mouth. This portal will lead you to your heart or core if you will. Each time that you pass the test, you will be sent there to commune with the energies inside your body. From there, we your inner demons no longer have say on what you do as it is only our role to open the gate if the host is worthy. His inner demon explained. Adrian was not able to move again and started to ask questions. So you are saying that it solely depends on me on what type of energy that I will commune with using my body? Does that mean that I could also get nothing if I fail to do so? Adrian asked. Not necessarily as you will still elevate into a greater demon even if you fail to commune to certain types of energy, it's just that even I will not know what you will become. The inner demon said. Adrian now had the qualification but he did not know if what this commune with an energy was and he is now looking lost as he does not want a random evolution because it might become either a blessing or a curse. Adrian was lost in thought until he heard what his inner demon said to him and gave a shocked face like that of a famous mim. Chapter 84 Communicating with Unknown Energies Once you enter try to feel the remaining energy that the god of death, Abaddon, has left. There should still be lingering traces of his powers in our body. You could probably use that to reinforce our core. The power of a god is still a power that came from a literal god regardless if it is just bits and pieces of it. Adrian's inner demon said nonchalantly. His inner demon just said such a big bomb to Adrian like it was no big deal. Adrian was speechless and was still processing the information that was given to him. Adrian took a few seconds to successfully reboot his brain and immediately bid goodbye to his inner demon. It was nice knowing you but I have this thing that I need to do so you know. Duty calls. Adrian said in an impatient tone and run towards the gate so fast that he entered it without ceremony. Adrian entered the swirling vortex without second thought. Even his inner demon did not need to read his gestures or facial reaction to know that the host was too excited. His inner demon only sighed as his host was shameless enough to not even thank the one who gave him the information. 
At least the host craves power which means the other two inner demons would like him when he has finally got enough strength to meet them. Adrian's inner demon muttered as it used hand seals again to close the gate that it had summoned. Adrian who suddenly jumped towards the gate was assaulted by a heavy feeling and fainted due to experiencing a dizzy spell. When Adrian woke up, he surveyed his surroundings and he was surrounded by darkness. Even if imps have night vision, his eyes could not pierce the veil of darkness so he did what anyone would do in a helpless situation would do and that was grumble. Is there anyone in here that could like produce a light source? Geez. Why is this game not set up in a futuristic place or something? At least place some lamps or something. Adrian grumbled and as if someone was listening to him a flash of light filled the room that blinded him for a bit. Adrian instinctively covered his eyes with his arms to shield himself from the sudden flash of bright light. He opened his eyes moments later and was astonished because the place he was in was a crystal. In the middle of the crystal where he is currently standing was a magic circle that even Adrian himself could not decipher. The magic circle was drawn on this small floating island in the middle of the crystal. A few feet away and there would be a ridge that if someone falls, no one knows if you will really fall or just wake up from meditation but Adrian was not foolish enough to try. Adrian observed the magic as if he was drawn to its mysterious nature or if it was something he knew deep inside that he must go inside of it. Adrian headed towards the magic circle and when he was situated in the middle of it, the world grew silent for a few moments. The silence was broken by the numerous chains that wrapped around Adrian's arms and legs. He tried struggling but it was no use as the chains would not budge. When the chains suddenly lunged at Adrian, it kept him distracted and he was not able to notice that someone was standing in front of him. It only took about five seconds for Adrian to notice that his inner greater demon was the individual facing him. Adrian was about to ask a question but his inner demon held up its hand that signaled Adrian to not speak as it will explain itself. You suddenly sprinted away before I could even explain to you what to do but it seems that you already knew it instinctively. Well, evolving was ingrained in the blood of the demos but more so for Asmodians. I will now help you undergo the communal process so try hard to detect the energy that you want but any energy would do if you ask me. Adrian's inner demon said as it tapped its index finger on the middle Adrian's forehead. When his inner demon tapped Adrian in the middle of his forehead, his eyes became rolled into the back of his eyes while the chains that previously wrapped around his arms and legs crawled towards all of his body to encase in a sort of cocoon. The magic circle lit up and from it spewed forth blue fire with an eerie but magnificent power or what others call a demon fire. The demon fire became a tornado that melted the chains spread out on Adrian's body until it became a smooth casing. After the chains melted and became smooth, a demon's mouth emerged and swallowed Adrian's encased body and it shrunk until it was situated on the region where Adrian's face is located. The mask is reminiscent to that of a Hanya or a Japanese demon mask. The mask has a white face with yellow corneas and a black pupils. It had no hair on it and from its temples grows horns that are about a ruler in length. The mask also has a grinning facial expression with its full row of teeth showing that shows of its fangs that are about two inches in length. Adrian's consciousness floated somewhere in his subconscious mind. He did not know what his inner demon did to him but it hurt like hell when it touched his forehead. Adrian tried to get up but realized that he could not because he was floating in something like space and before he knew it, he saw three large statues that was about a hundred meters in height and that was only an estimate. When he tried looking down, he only saw darkness as if it was an abyss. The statue's height did not bother Adrian but it was their faces. The three statues were carved with his face on them but each statue had a different facial expression. The three statues were facing each other and also have their palms stretched towards the space in the middle and that was where Adrian landed. Adrian had a vague idea what the three statues mean as he has read that a certain philosopher separates the subconscious mind into three parts which should correspond to the three statues. The statue that has a deep grin and a happy expression should represent ID. ID is the primitive and instinctual part of the mind that contains sexual and aggressive drives and hidden memories which basically are desires so it makes sense that it is wearing a grin that was unbearable to look at. The statue next to it though is wearing the saddest expression that anyone could see even Adrian doubts he could make that face. That should represent the superego. The superego is the complete opposite of ID and represents a person's or operate as a person's moral conscience. The last of the statue has a stoic expression and that should represent someone's ego. The ego is the realistic part that mediates between the desires of the ID and the superego which means in the end it gets to decides on which of the two will have their idea granted or will there be a compromise. In the end that was just Adrian's theory and it might not actually be the real meaning of the three statues. If Adrian were to vocalize this to the developer, the developer would probably praise him and thank him that someone was like-minded as him slash her. Adrian now floated toward in the middle where the three statues palm intersect. When he was located exactly at the middle, 
he landed and the three statue's eyes that were previously closed opened up simultaneously as if it was waiting for Adrian to land. When the three statues opened their eyes, four different multicolored flames suddenly appeared. The colors of the four flames were green, blue, violet and gray. Adrian observed the four flames and each one was of a different size and something seems to be inside of each flame. The green flame was only about two inches in size and in the middle of it was a small plant that was yet to grow. The blue flame was about a feet in size and in the middle of it were gears and clocks that even produced sound iconic ticking sound of a gear clock. The violet flame was the same size as that of the blue flame but inside of it was a vast endless space that just by looking at it one would be sucked in. The last of the flame was the grey coloured flame. It was smaller than blue and violet flame but bigger than the green flame and when Adrian looked at the contents of the flame, it gave him shivers. Chapter 85, Becoming a Greater Demon Four different flames were circling an individual that has blue-tinted skin and small horns. The individual surrounded by four different types of colored flame was Adrian. He is currently in shock because of what he has just felt when he observed the last flame. The gray-colored flame was smaller than the blue and violet flames but was bigger than the green flame. When he looked inside its content, he felt pressure as if his soul was being strangled. He once again checked each of the flames in order to see if he would get the same reaction from the three but the blue and violet flames did not elicit the same reaction. Adrian tried looking closely at the green flame and he felt a tingle. It was a slight reaction but it was there and it had the same pressure that the grey-coloured flame had. Adrian focused even harder and he was able to feel it. When he focused so hard a system prompt appeared to tell him what he was doing. You are attempting to commune with the green energy of life. Do you wish to proceed? As the energy is lesser than what is required there is a chance of failure. Do you still wish to proceed? Failure to successfully commune with the energy will destroy the energy that has been built up and the host will have to accumulate this type of energy again. Adrian furrowed his brows because he was dumbfounded since he did not know if he should gamble his chance because if this energy was related to life energy that the goddess of life, Gia, uses then would he not get overpowered healing abilities. It seems that he can choose which energy to commune with so he tried focusing on the other energies if he would get the same system prompt. He tried focusing on the blue flame that was floating near him and just like with the green flame there was a system prompt that appeared. You are attempting to commune with the temporal energy of origin. Do you wish to proceed? The energy that has been accumulated is in the acceptable levels and would give success. Do you still wish to proceed? It seems that the bigger the flame the higher the chances for it to succeed. I should still look at the others even though I already have an idea on what they are. Adrian thought to himself. You are attempting to commune with the spatial energy of origin. Do you wish to proceed? The energy that has been accumulated is in the acceptable levels and would give success. Do you still wish to proceed? You are attempting to commune with the grey energy of death. Do you wish to proceed? The energy that has been accumulated is in the acceptable levels but it would still not guarantee absolute success due to the nature of the energy. Do you still wish to proceed? Failure to successfully commune with the energy will destroy the energy that has been built up and the host will have to accumulate this type of energy again. Out of the four energies only the two flames, blue flame, and violet flame, would give absolute success because time and space which is the basis of origin magic is the lifeblood of the Demos race. The Demos race sacrificed using elemental magic in order to wield the volatile origin magic. Adrian decided to try and fuse the temporal energy of origin and the spatial energy of origin since the two came from the same source. He touched the blue flame with his left hand and the violet flame with his right hand. He did not expect to succeed or he did not know if his wild idea would give results but he was surprised. A system prompt appeared when he tried pushing the two flames together. You are not yet strong enough to fuse the two energies together. You must at the very least be a greater demon in order to attempt to do so. Failure to fuse the two energies will result in the destruction of the toe accumulated energies. Never in his wildest dreams did he thought that his idea would actually be feasible but it seems he underestimated the degree of freedom that is given in the game. He also tried fusing the two energies for life energy and death energy. He expected the same system prompt to appear but this one was much more different. You are not yet strong enough to fuse the two energies together. You must at the very least be a greater demon in order to attempt to do so. The two energies are compatible in nature but due to the large difference in accumulated energy, it is not possible to fuse. Failure to fuse the two energies will result in the destruction of the toe accumulated energies. Due to Adrian's curious nature, he now knows what is needed in order to fuse two different energies together. The energies must both be compatible and almost similar in accumulated amount. 
Adrian would try to attempt fusing the blue and violet flame when he comes back here in order to become an archdemon. Adrian put fusing the energies in a corner of his mind because now he needs to choose whether to pick the green flame or grey flame. Both are a gamble because the two energies do not guarantee absolute success but one is better off than the other. Adrian weighed the pros and cons because he could try the green flame first and if he fails he could just try the grey flame. He then remembered the words of his greater demon that the energy from the god of death was but a mere fraction of his power and it could wither away. Adrian was also hesitant in trying the green flame because he is not sure if he could even regenerate the lost green energy of life which is probably only here because of his title that was given by the tree of life and death, Yudrasil. Adrian had a headache because of his daring personality that challenges odds. He was still scared that it might backfire and leave him with nothing which is why he told himself that this is a very important choice. It was a choice between life and death. Literally. I cannot risk it this time because I do not know if I could regenerate it again. I should look at it like I am taking care of a sapling. I need to slowly and carefully cultivate it in order to enjoy the fruits of my own hard work. Which is why. Adrian thought to himself as he eyed the grey flame. Adrian steeled his resolve and made the decision to commune with the grey flame. He focused his intention on understanding the power of this grey flame and the previous system prompt appeared once again. You are attempting to commune with the grey energy of death. Do you wish to proceed? The energy that has been accumulated is in the acceptable levels but it would still not guarantee absolute success due to the nature of the energy. Do you still wish to proceed? Failure to successfully commune with the energy will destroy the energy that has been built up and the host will have to accumulate this type of energy again. Yes. I wish to proceed. Adrian answered. Do the energy being comprised of different parts of the other energy from various realms of death, a higher comprehension of the energy will harness a more powerful version of the energy. The three flames or energies that Adrian did not pick vanished from his sight and the grey flame hovered on top of his head. The flame then split into eight and formed an octogram. The flames then skittered and left a trail of fire before returning from their initial position. The eight flames drew a magic circle of unknown origins and when that was finished, Adrian felt gravity inside of the magic circle became heavy that he was forced to crouch. The magic circle of deep comprehension has been drawn. You can now try to comprehend the energy that you have chosen. Current comprehension rate, 0%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Adrian did not even bother reading the last system prompt because when he immediately meditated and tried to not mind the increased gravity. He focused all his mental fortitude in sensing the energies that were running wild in the magic circle. Adrian started to feel different types of energies but there was one thing that they all shared. The energies coming from these are filled with dread. Adrian could feel his skin crawl just by accepting the energies in his core. The system prompts are also agreeing with what he is doing because it was rising by the second. Current comprehension rate, 1%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Current comprehension rate, 2%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Current comprehension rate, 3%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Chapter 86, The Death Realm's Eye Current Comprehension Rate, 20% You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. When Adrian reached 20% on the comprehension rate something strange happened, his vision became white and it became a world that was dark and damp. He had his eyes closed so he was wondering why he could vividly see his surroundings and even his body. Adrian wandered inside this cave-like dwelling and it was a passage that was illuminated in darkness. He did not know how long he was traveling inside the cave's tunnel but when he arrived into what looked something like a city inside of the vast cave structure. When Adrian looked at what seemed like a city structure, he felt his skin crawl and his bones tingle. He did not know what was happening until he looked at his system messages and he was puzzled. You have entered the realm of fear, Zibalba. It is one of the many death realms that Abaddon has control over. Those who gaze at the city located at Zibalba will always be feared regardless of immunities. You have been afflicted by pure terror. All stats are reduced by 30% during your stay in Zibalba. As you are not physically present and only have your spirit body in the realm. The status reduction does not affect you. You are in a state of astral projection due to your immense focus on communing with the energy from another realm. Adrian had no idea how this was possible because he was not even sure it was possible. He checked his body and it was no different from his physical body. His body did not even have a ghostly look like when he used his skill that turns him into his spirit form. 
Adrian was busy observing himself when he heard a voice that crept in from a dark side of the cave. Well well what do we have here? A soul lost in his travel or an unexpected visitor? Why do you have the same aura as the Almighty God of Death? The voice said. The voice sounded so creepy and horrific that even Adrian himself refused to look at the direction that the voice came from. Adrian tried not to look at the direction of the voice but his curiosity got the best of him and he was not able to stop the urge. He was able to see a silhouette in the dark but was unable to see the entity's whole body. Adrian was not able to walk to the voice's location because he finally knew the entity that called out to him due to the system prompt that appeared. You are in the presence of the subordinate of the God of Death and God of Decay, Apuk. You are petrified because of the immense power of the God of Decay. You are unable to be afflicted by the Decay status due to having a spirit body. Your soul was able to cancel the soul break effect due to the remnant power of the God of Death Abaddon that you are channeling. Adrian looked at the God in front of him with both amazement and terror because just by being in its presence, you are already in danger. If other players would encounter this God of Decay, then without a doubt they will die. They will die without even knowing how they died. Is it not disrespectful to not answer a question that an elder has told you? Apuk said with its shrill voice and it stepped out from the shadows that it was earlier. Apuk revealed his body and Adrian felt that it was both regal and terrifying. Adrian took a good look at Apuk and unlike his title of God of Decay, the god was not grotesque. He still looked pale like a person with pinkish skin color. He did not wear a crown but was wearing an ornamental mask like that of Mayan origin. Apuk mask had a crown of feathers of different colors. His scleras are red and his pupils black. He also had deep eye sockets that would give all that meet him in the eye with pure terror. Apuk did not wear upper armor but had tattoos carved in his torso. He also wore a lower armor like that of a skirt with feathers. He wore golden bracelets in his upper arms, wrist, and ankles. He had a bone necklace that had a skull of a small monster and fangs of various sizes. He also held a wooden staff in his right hand that has feathers and carvings of his mask. He walked in a slight hunch towards Adrian. Name, Apuk. Title, God of Decay, Subordinate of the God of Death. Apuk's hand almost reached Adrian when his vision once again blacked out. When he regained his vision, a system prompt greeted him. Current comprehension rate, 40%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. He once again looked around his surroundings and he was on top of a mountain that was on fire. He could hear the screaming of people from down below the mountain. He tried looking at the bottom of the mountain and he regretted it. He saw people on fire and screaming in agony with lines like Please forgive me and I need water. Adrian read the system prompt wondering if he could know the place he was spirited away from. You have entered the prison realm of death, Tartarus. You are inflicted by the status eternal silence. You are not able to use skills when afflicted by the status condition. You can still gain the benefits of your passive skills but active skills will not work. Your mana is being drained by 1% every one second due to Hecatonchires domain. Adrian wondered who this Hecatonchires was and a giant head suddenly popped out from below the mountain peak that he was standing on. Adrian looked at the giant's full body and he was surprised because the giant had 100 arms. The giant looked like a handsome man that originated from Greece minus the fact that he had about 100 arms. He also wore a tunic and had bright blue eyes and golden hair. What do we have here? A visitor? I was not expecting someone as your soul is too pure to even be called upon here in Tartarus. So tell me young one. Why are you here? Said the giant as he closely looked at Adrian and he suddenly flashed a surprised look. Strange. Why do you have the same aura as the almighty god of death? The giant said as if genuinely curious. Adrian was in awe because of what the system prompt told him. You are in the presence of the warden of Tartarus, Hecatonchires. You are petrified because of the immense power of the Warden of Tartarus. You are not affected by Hecatonchires might due to having a spirit body. Your soul was able to cancel the soul prison effect due to the remnant power of the God of Death Abaddon that you are channeling. Adrian was awestruck due to Hecatonchires immense size and power that he could not mutter a word which was different from how he felt in Apuk's case. When Apuk was walking towards him, Adrian could not speak because of pure terror but now he was in pure awe with his jaw dropped. Before Adrian could calm down and become able to speak he was whisked away again and another system prompt appeared before him. Current comprehension rate, 60%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Adrian's vision returned and he could see a different realm this time that was vastly different than the two previous death realms that he visited. This reel was high up in the clouds and had structures with ancient Greek vibes. 
there was even a building that looked like that of the Parthenon. The Parthenon is a former temple on the Athenian Acropolis, Greece, dedicated to the goddess Athena, whom the people of Athens considered their patron. Adrian was walking in a paved road that headed towards the Parthenon and he could see people of various races that interact with each other. This realm was so peaceful and full of bliss that they did not even mind Adrian as he was walking on the road. Some inhabitants even greeted him and he greeted back because it would be rude not to do so. Adrian was wondering where he was because he was really curious this time as this was a death realm that was full of beauty and peace. Adrian checked the system messages so that he could see where he landed this time and he guessed accurately. You have entered the realm of death where heroes rest, Elysium. You are inflicted by the status eternal bliss. Your health is healed by 5% per second and mana regeneration is multiplied tenfold. Any harmful status condition is washed away. Chapter 87, The Death Realms 2 Elysium, also called Elysian Fields or Elysian Plain, in Greek mythology, originally the paradise to which heroes on whom the gods conferred immortality were sent. In classic books, there are many types of interpretation on who was the creator of Elysium. Some books say that Hades created it for his wife, Persephone, because she told him to create a paradise for good mortal souls while some say that it was the Titans that did. Here in Pandemonium, it is clear that Elysium was created by Abaddon the god of death. Adrian was in awe because if one were to call some place paradise, this would be it. Clear skies, plentiful trees and plants and clean water. No violence but only harmony. This was Elysium the paradise for fallen heroes and an eternal paradise. Adrian was happily wandering about in this beautiful realm when an old man came towards him and stopped him in his tracks. The old man was wearing a blue robe with gears as decorations. He had long white hair that reached his back and a long white beard that reached until his belly button area. His hair was white and he looked old but he was brimming with life and vigor that one would doubt if he was really old or just wearing a disguise. I am pretty sure that you are not an inhabitant of our realm, young lad. How were you able to come here? Only those that Abaddon allows can enter this realm or else your soul will scatter through the void and never to be seen again. The old man said and observed Adrian a bit more and he had a face of shock and awe. Interesting. You his aura in you. I do not know if it was brave or foolish to try and absorb the power of a god in your body. Usually a mortal body would already be breaking down due to the immense power that a god has. Are you sure your body is all right after trying to absorb the body of a god? The old man said with a tone of curiosity. Adrian was also curious if his body was doing okay and not breaking down this instant but he was more curious of this old man in front of him. The old man feels like someone he knows and even his immense power could be felt by Adrian even if he was trying to hide it. As for the old man's identity, Adrian has an idea when he had a glimpse of the system logs. You are in the presence of the great titan of time or father time, Cronus. You are locked in time because of the time lock aura of Cronus. You have been released of the effects of time lock aura by Cronus. You are not affected by the unique status effect spirit deterioration of Elysium because of the remnant power of the god of death Abaddon that you are channeling. Adrian was in the presence of Father Time himself. He was not that shocked because he imagined Cronus to be more menacing and such because in myth he ate his children but maybe this Cronus and that Cronus in Greek mythology are different due to Pandemonium's own lore. Adrian looked intently at Cronus as he was sure that his aura seems familiar. It was in the tip of his tongue but he could not say it. Cronus combed his beard using his hands and then the idea suddenly flashed towards Adrian's mind. Of course. Now I know why you seem so familiar. You have an aura just like that of that eccentric old man, Caron. Adrian said while he clapped his hands together. When Adrian said the name Caron, he felt like time stood still for a small amount of time like a nanosecond. It was so quick that Adrian would have not felt it if his mind was drifting. The aura around Cronus changed a bit and the curiosity in his tone was almost gone. How do you know that name young man? I am just curious that's all. Cronus said with an overbearing aura. Adrian did not know why there was a sudden change of attitude towards this old man but it seems that should he lie, he would probably be done for. Um, that oh well, I mean he is one of our village elders, your godliness. Adrian said nervously and if he could sweat right now then he would have sweated buckets already. I see and is that one well? Has he not told you that he is looking for someone of the sort? Cronus inquired. Well. Adrian was speaking but he was suddenly transported away before he could even finish what he was going to say because a system prompt greeted his eyes. He did not know whether to be pleased or to be ashamed because he escaped that situation there. Current comprehension rate, 70%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. 
When Adrian looked around him, he was in a land or more specifically standing on air. The surroundings were foggy and with only a pale light illuminating the area. The surroundings were a mix of white, grey and yellow light and even what he was standing on could be seen as a mist. He did not know how he was even standing right now and how he was going to return but the system prompt scared him. You are in the edges of the death realm and called the land of the lost, nether. You are losing 1% health per second the longer because no souls are allowed to come at the ends of the death realm. Adrian was scared because he could see his health visibly draining per second. He did not want to fail in evolving but now there is one problem. Adrian did not know how to return. His inner demon did not even said how to go back as he already accumulated enough energy to undergo his evolution to become a greater demon. The only good thing is that as his health decreased by 1% his comprehension rate also increases by 0.2%. He would get full comprehension but he fears that it would not be worth it because he would fail. He did not want to fail after going this far and maybe getting unnecessary attention from powerful individuals and maybe angered some and they would claim his soul as revenge. Nevertheless, he does not want to fail now he has gone this far. Adrian was now racking his brain on what he needs to do in order to get away from this realm and all he could do was pray. He did not know why he came up with that conclusion but this was the only thing that he could come up. If he prayed to the twin gods maybe they could fetch his consciousness from this realm where souls are not welcomed. I know that it is very shameful of me to ask for your help since I am in this fickle situation but please. Can you like use your godly powers and like whoosh me away from here? Adrian prayed or more likely shouted from the wind. Adrian waited for an answer to his prayers, questionable. He was waiting for the twin gods to save him but his prayers was not heard or more likely he could not be saved due to even the twin gods recuperating due to using their powers on the mortal realm. Adrian waited and waited but his health was dissipating quickly and he was left with 40% of his health. The good news though is his comprehension rate is rising. Current comprehension rate, 82%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. He was losing hope when he saw four lights that were the size of candle wicks. He was not sure if it was a hallucination due to him becoming hopeless because the four lights were moving towards him. When the four lights were close to him, he finally saw the clear image of the four lights and the person carrying them. The person was a woman or more precisely a blind woman. She was pale as white and wore an evening gown that was black as night with an adornment of silver, gold and raven feathers. The woman also wore a veil that teased her beautiful body. She had a fascinator which is a formal headpiece for women, a style of millinery, originally of lightweight knitted fabric. It is also woven from some kind of black shiny fabric. When she walked, she had the shadows trail behind her as if she produces the shadows herself. The woman holds a candle abram which contains four lights that glowed blue. Well. Well. Look who we have here. I did not have a visitor in ages. The woman said in a melodious but cold voice. Adrian could only look at the woman in front of her and shiver because the person in front of him was not an ordinary person but a goddess. You are in the presence of the goddess of night, Nox. Chapter 88, The Death Realms 3 You are in the presence of the goddess of night, Nox. That sentence alone brought shivers to Adrian as he did not expect a goddess to find him in the land of the lost. His health was almost at 1% and his health bar was already flashing red. He was prepared to accept his loss this time and try again with the other energies in his body. Adrian was about to be logged out of the game but he felt a cleansing light course through his body and enveloped him and he could see his health bar stay stagnant at 1%. He closed his eyes because he was prepared for the inevitable but he was not logged out. Adrian touched his body to check if he really did not log out and it was true. He jumped for joy and danced on the spot. He completely forgot of the goddess that was in front of him and when he snapped back to reality, he became so embarrassed and acted shy. The goddess of night, Nox, did not mind the sudden outburst of joy from this traveler because she knew what this realm does to lost souls who venture out into the edge of the death realms. She even chuckled because it has truly been long since she saw a mortal soul. After the war with the dark gods, she was forced to rest because she used a lot of her powers. The nether realm was the realm that Abaddon himself found just for her as it was peaceful and could restore her primordial energy. The nether realm was different compared to the rest of the death realms because the nether realm was claimed instead of created. This death realm was an anomaly realm because it just suddenly popped out of nowhere when Abaddon was creating the death realms. It was a realm that enveloped all of the other death realms. In terms of layers, it could be said to be equivalent to Earth's atmosphere. The death realms are not limited to the other realms that Adrian has visited. With so many types of worlds in the Pandemonium universe and also other types of intelligent inhabitants, 
it makes sense that they would have different views on what is the place after life. Adrian only visited the death realms that Abaddon has recently went through and if he got 100% comprehension rate then he might have been transported to the Twin Gods Divine Realm, Paraiso. Adrian did not know what to do but he was sure that his health was neither falling nor his comprehension rate rising which is why he was dumbfounded. He was not sure what the goddess Nox casted on him but it saved him from his current predicament and that is dying. He checked his system logs since he wanted to know what happened to his comprehension rate. It is not that he was greedy in getting 100% comprehension rate but if he could why not do it is what Adrian thought. You have been affected by light and darkness. Due to the effect of the skill, you can no longer absorb energy from this world thus ending the effects of forever lost. Current comprehension rate, 99.8%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. You have exceeded the needed comprehension rate in order to evolve. Adrian relaxed his mind and took a closer look at the goddess that saved him. Her eyes was covered by her fascinator but Adrian could feel that she did not even need eyes to see. It was as if the goddess was staring at his soul even though he is all soul at this point. He could feel that she could tell if he was about to lie before even speaking so he did what any person would do to their savior. Adrian got down on both knees and spoke his sincerest thank you. Thank you benevolent goddess for helping this feeble person. If not for you I would have been done for. Adrian said while he kowtowed. Adrian did that because he read a very dangerous message that nobody in pandemonium would want to see. If you die in the nether realm, you will die forever. This was the most stressful system message that Adrian has ever read because even other games dared not to do this. If he really did die then that means it is an existence wipe or in gaming terms the character will be deleted. Adrian did not know if the developers have it out for him but he does not know that this was the ploy of the game Super AI, Dias. Dias, the Super AI that controlled Pandemonium from behind the scenes, ensures both balance and rewards. If the player tries hard enough then it would guarantee that player the necessary compensation. In Adrian's case, the AI was not able to predict Adrian's unyielding focus and determination as it only calculated that Adrian would end up at exactly 70% comprehension rate. Adrian should have been sent back by Father Time, Cronus. Adrian produced a variable and that was him uttering Karan's name to Cronus because according to lore, Karan was Cronus' direct descendant. This produced an effect which delayed Cronus' spell to return Adrian to his body. Still, Adrian was still transported to the nether realm because it was Abaddon's previous coordinates. The AI Dias did not stop the teleportation because it was not game-breaking and in the acceptable parameters as the creator of Pandemonium told him to give free reign to all players. The AI Dias just decided to observe. Adrian was now looking at the goddess Nox clearly and he could see the features that he previously were not aware of. The dress she wore was not made of dark fabric but shadows themselves or something like the dark starry night itself was her dress. Adrian was so curious that he held his hand out without even thinking but it was flicked by the goddess. I think that is a bit rude to do that to your savior, Equinox. The goddess Nox said while she smiled lightly. Adrian was shocked because he did not even tell her his name but she actually knew of his name in Pandemonium. Adrian was wondering if he actually blurted out his name out of panic but he did not. Adrian was about to ask but the goddess spoke first. Do not worry as though I do not know what is happening outside of this realm, I at least have acquaintances that do know. The god of death speaks fondly of you because he says you are unpredictable but kind and does what is right even without compensation. Only he and I could traverse this realm freely because even malignant gods fear this realm. The goddess Nox said to Adrian as if it was already set in stone. So why are you here, young one? I am very sure that you were not told to visit me because if you did the god of death would have gave you an enchantment that protected you from visiting this place. The goddess Nox inquired. Are all gods this talkative or are they just bored? This was the thought in Adrian's mind. Adrian finally mustered the courage to speak once again this humble demon thank the benevolent goddess in saving this poor one's soul. As for why I am here, even I do not know why because I was just suddenly transported here when I was absorbing the remnant power of the god of death Abaddon. When Adrian told the goddess Nox the truth, she was surprised because this was the first time a demon and not even an arch demon tried to absorb the power of a god even though it was only remnants of it. The goddess Nox was smiling because the demon in front of him was an anomaly just like the nether realm. She even thought of something even more fun and that was helping the little demon in front of her power. Adrian did not know what the goddess was thinking as the goddess only smiled back at him. Adrian was about to ask for the goddess help to leave the nether realm when he was given a proposal. Well, I did not know you were such a fun existence. As you know, 
I do not have much entertainment here and I am still recuperating as I am not in full capacity to return back. In exchange for helping you, I want you to transport a certain individual here at the nether realm. Is that acceptable, Abaddon? The goddess Nox said as she looked behind Adrian and there stood a man. Adrian looked behind him and he saw an incredibly handsome man that looked like he was in his me-twenties. He wore the same armor that Abaddon had but he was not wearing a helmet. Adrian could clearly see the face of the god of death. Unlike his title, his face was healthy with it akin to be sculpted by the finest sculptor. He had black hair that had a shine to them and grey-coloured eyes that was enamoring to look at. No woman will be able to resist this man's charm. Chapter 89 the story behind the war's conclusion. As long as your task for my champion is within acceptable boundaries then by all means give him the task. Take it as repayment for the favor that you have given him. Abaddon said casually to Knox. Then I shall take that statement as a promise. My task is very simple and it does not have a time limit since even I do not know where that person is currently hiding. Find my former herald and drag her to my location. The goddess Knox said with a mixture of anger and disdain. Adrian was wondering what the former herald of the goddess of night did as she exuded killing intent when she talked about dragging her here to the nether realm. If Adrian's guess is correct, the former herald must have betrayed the goddess during the war with the dark gods. Unlike Argent who was only punished for her misdemeanor and was later judged to be executed due to becoming allied with the dark gods, the goddess of night's herald must have done something to greatly weaken the goddess as she needed to be hidden in a mysterious realm just to recuperate. From the looks of it, you might have already guessed why I want her to be dragged here. She was the reason why I lost great power during the war or to be precise, we would have won easily if the other heralds did not betray their patron gods. Though only small in number, their betrayal was a significant blow on our fighting forces as they weakened some of us. The goddess Nox said as she was seething in anger. A system prompt then appeared before Adrian after the goddess was finished explaining what happened. Drag her to the abyss. The goddess Nox wants you to find her former herald that betrayed her and drag her to the goddess location. Use whatever means necessary as long as you finish your goal as the former herald is a threat to the world itself. Reward, Oblivion Skill Book. Requirements, find the former herald of the goddess of night and drag her to the goddess location in the nether realm. Failure, none. Time limit, none. Do you wish to accept the quest? Adrian did not bat an eye and accepted the quest since there was no failure punishment and there was no time limit because if gods have one thing that any other mortal wants that would be time. Gods are eternal beings, they may become weakened but they could revive again even if they were severely damaged. There were some exceptions of course and that would be if they were hit by the twin gods synchro skill that erases anyone from existence be it mortals or gods. How will I find her then since I do not know what she looks like? Adrian asked honestly. This will aid you in locating her. The goddess Nox said as she took one candle from her candle Abram and gave it to Adrian. She then further explained, keep this candle in your subspace. It will react when my former herald is in the vicinity. Do not force yourself just yet as your strength is not yet on par with her even if I struck her with divine punishment. Divine punishment was a word that is familiar to Adrian as he has seen what happened to Argent. She became a nameless entity and was classified as a monster. She might not have been trapped in a dungeon because the goddess was weakened but it might have been enough to transform her into a monster. Adrian took the goddess words to heart as even she tells Adrian that he was not strong enough and only strike when he knows that he could succeed. He gladly took the candle and looked at its description before putting it in his inventory. His eyes widened when he looked at the stats for the candle. Item, Candle of the Goddess of Night. Tier, Divine. Type, Quest Item. Durability, Infinite. Effect, all stats will rise by 50% during night or in areas where sunlight is absent. Holder will be immune to mind control or any mind attribute attacks or status conditions. The effect triggers even if it is inside the inventory. Description, a candlestick from the candle Abram that is held by the goddess of night. It was imbued with her godly powers so that it could locate her former herald that betrayed her. The item is bound to the player Equinox. Adrian was in disbelief because the effects of the item was beneficial to him even if it was only during a certain part of the day. The immunity to mind attribute attacks and status conditions was a great bonus since in the shaman job class there were status conditions that confuses or makes illusions. Adrian was happy but also wary because if the item boosted his stats during night or in dark areas then that would be the same for his opponent. The item given to him was probably given to shorten the gap between them since the opponent was a former herald of a god. The former herald must have mind attribute abilities and he was given immunity to counter that but of course the former herald should still have its fighting prowess since ancient times. 
the one thing scarier to face with is an enemy that far outclasses you in terms of fighting experience. Adrian shook the tension off since he would fight that monster in the far future when he would be strong enough and since there was no time limit that means he could take his time. Adrian would build up strength so that he could crush any enemies in his wake. Adrian was eagerly waiting for that day. There was still one question that popped into Adrian's mind. How the heck am I going to drag that former herald into the nether realm? This was the question that popped into his mind because even he himself does not know how in the blazes he came here. Adrian was too shy to ask this question as he was given an extraordinary item just to complete a task. The goddess Nox sensing Adrian's distraught talked to him and asked him if he wanted to clarify something. Is there something bothering you champion Equinox? The goddess Nox asked. You see. This has bothering me for a while now and I am too shy to ask this but since you already bothered to ask me my predicament, I would not beat around the bush. How can I even transfer the former herald in the nether realm when even I only came here by chance? Adrian said with a puppy dog face. The god Abaddon and the goddess Nox looked at each other before chuckling a little. Adrian did not think that what he said was funny so he felt disturbed that this was their reaction. After a few seconds they already returned to their stoic faces and told Adrian the reason why they chuckled. We mean no offense champion Equinox as we thought you already know what would happen when you return but it seems you are clueless. Therefore we ought to explain. The goddess Nox said with a smile. Once you return from here you would have already assimilated the energy in the nether realm thereby using the Demos Ray special link with origin magic, you can create a portal from the mortal plane to this realm since your spirit body has already started to fuse with the energy from the nether realm. You will turn into an existence that has probably never existed before in Pandemonium. The god of death Abaddon said as if there was excitement in his tone. It seems that Adrian was sensing what was on the gods' minds and thought to himself, they are bored all right. If the gods were to know what Adrian was thinking then he would have been smacked silly already. So how am I going to return then? Adrian asked with curiosity because they have not told him that yet. Since you are in a state of astral projection, you only need to focus and reconnect with your physical body. All you have to do is focus on where your body is right now and a path will light itself up. The goddess Nox said in a nonchalant tone. It was that simple. Adrian shouted in surprise and the two gods just laughed because of the reaction that the young demon did. We must also warn you young champion. Even if we support you that does not mean other gods will. Even us gods have their factions and are only in a non-aggression pact. The only time we the gods of this universe ever helped each other was when the great invasion happened. I am telling you this so that you must only mind your own business and not get tangled by other gods. As our champion, your actions could possibly reflect our standing on the mortal realm though I do not know a god foolish enough to mess with my sister and me but your title carries a heavy duty. Remember that and always take of yourself because it has been decided that we are not to meddle in the affairs of mortals. The case of Argent was a special case. Abaddon warned Adrian. Chapter 90, Is a World Boss Spawning? Adrian knew what the god of death was telling him and that was to not involve himself with other religions as him being a champion is equivalent to being a herald of the twin gods. His actions could be seen as a challenge in the face of the other gods if he were to involve himself with their practices. Although when Abaddon said that he also interpreted it as if you want to be free from the oppression of other gods in the mortal plane then become much stronger than them so that Adrian's very presence itself would become a deterrent. Adrian bowed towards the two gods as he has already took too much time just by staying here in the nether realm and he was already given the mission. Thank you once again benevolent goddess of Night Nox for coming to my aid when I thought that I was already a goner. I will also heed your advice almighty god of death Abaddon as I am still immature in my ways, please guide me again if we ever cross paths again or use a divine message like you have before as I am always grateful for the advice that you give. I have already spent so much time here and my soul bounds are already becoming antsy which I can feel from our connection. I shall take my leave first. Adrian said as he focused once again in the physical body of his game avatar. When Adrian focused on returning to his physical body, a path made of white light that only he could see appeared before his eyes. He took the brave step first and did not look back as if he looked back he might lose focus. A few seconds later his spirit body finally drifted and faded from the nether realm which if he looked back he could see the two gods smiling at him. It seems that the spirit of those who sacrificed themselves during the war is present in that young child, Abaddon. The goddess Nox said. Abaddon smiled and closed his eyes before replying, when the valiant warriors of our world sacrificed their existence to produce the realm barriers, my heart sank as well as my sister because they were our precious creations. We later found out that not all of their essence was erased or destroyed but parts of their soul was separated into tiny pieces. We, the twin gods, 
tried putting them back together to reform their broken souls but it was not working. The goddess Nox listened attentively as this was information that was new even for her and she asked, So what did you two do then? Abaddon put on a wry smile and spoke, As they have valiantly sacrificed their own essence and we could no longer put their broken souls together, we decided to bless the fragments themselves. Wait do not tell me they are. The goddess Nox said in a shocked tone as if she had a sudden realization. Your guess is correct. They are what the inhabitants of this world call the cursed people or blessed people depending on their perspective. We, the twin gods, decided to use the fragments of their soul and dedicated a special system in which the egos that sprout from their soul fragments to live once again and live freely. Each fragment contained an ego but they could not sustain living in the mortal plane for a long time and need to recuperate after every 30 hours or if their physical body gets killed. Abaddon said with a tinge of sadness in his tone. You were right to give them free will when the egos descend back to the mortal plane as their former selves have sacrificed too much just for us to win the war. Even if not all of the egos become good persons, we just need to right the wrongs they make. We, the gods of this universe, owe it to them. The goddess Nox said to comfort the god Abaddon. Adrian who was following the path of light he was trailing was seeing flashes of images from other realms. He could see images of a realm located above the clouds where white-winged people gather. He could also see a realm underground with lava flowing and people with two horns that sprout from their temples with bat wings and a pointed tail. He could also see images of a realm that could only be described as mystical as the inhabitants were the classic description of a fairy. Adrian was seeing these images but he only focused on the path and never strayed from it as he was afraid of his soul being lost and be trapped in a harmful dimension which no benevolent god will save him. He followed the path and without him even noticing, he already arrived in his subconscious space with his inner demon looking at his cocoon with a tinge of worry in its face. Adrian did not stand in ceremony and walked towards his cocoon with a Hanya mask on the head section. When he touched the cocoon, the Hanya mask's eyes ignited with blue flames and its mouth opened and sucked Adrian's spirit body and closed back up after. The inner demon noticed this and heaved a sigh of relief as that signaled that the host has already completed assimilation. Current comprehension rate, 99.8%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. You have succeeded the minimum comprehension rate requirement. Would you like to evolve now? Adrian said yes and a new system prompt appeared before him. Demon Pioneer Comprehension Bonus plus 10%. As you are the first player to evolve into a greater demon, you have been given a bonus. If Adrian knew this was going to appear then he would have been satisfied by just accumulating it until 90% but then again he was still thankful for the extra mission he got as a side quest. Also he would still be transported to the nether realm regardless. Current comprehension rate, 109.8%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Commencing evolution now. Gathering the energies and fusing it with the host body. When those system messages appeared, Adrian suddenly experienced a headache. He then nagged again that why does this always happen to him. His inner demon that was outside of his cocoon was suddenly turning to particles and was being absorbed by the mouth of the Hanya mask. Instead of being terrified, it was actually smiling. At last, I will finally be one with the host. Were the last words it spoke as it turned into particles of light completely and was absorbed. The cocoon in the paradox plane suddenly started pulsating and started releasing enormous energy waves. The first to notice were the three elders and they suddenly teleport to the area as they fear that their sanctuary might have been breached but were shocked to see that a demon cocoon was releasing it instead. They ordered the guards to explain what was happening and they were shocked that a lesser demon evolving into a greater demon was giving off massive amounts of energy. The three elders ordered everyone to vacate the area as it might affect the lower persona demons. A sudden large wave of energy spread throughout the paradox planes and bypassed the dimensional barrier. This wave traveled to the main world and countless other realms which it was then detected by the peak experts of these worlds. The peak experts of the other realms started to search for the source of this unfathomable energy. The three demon elder noticed what happened and immediately transformed to their real bodies. Bronx became five meters tall and his already bulky body turned even bulkier with his horns and body forming black scales. Karan transformed into a blue djinn that had a youthful body and many gears and clocks circling him. A scholar also abandoned his youthful appearance and became a hot young man in his twenties. He turned into two meter tall young man with fair skin and held an astrolabe. His wings were two pairs or golden frames with two vortices like black hole. When the patrols saw the elders transforming to their original selves, they became serious and ran through the location of the entrance portals of the paradox planes. Bronx channeled power into his horns and released something like thunder from it towards Adrian but instead of harming the latter, 
it formed a barrier of kinetic force around Adrian's cocoon. Karan then muttered a spell and a child holding a clock appeared and tapped the clock its holding to the kinetic force barrier and another layer of barrier was created with clocks as decor. A scholar observed if the two barriers were enough but another wave of intense energy spread out. He then chanted his ultimate sealing spell. Spatial Isolation A violet barrier enveloped the two barriers once more and was able to prevent the waves of energy to spread out. The three demon elders finally breathed a sigh of relief when a universal message rang out to all the beings. Every entity in Pandemonium heard the voice of the universe. The universe is joyful. A new being is about to be born. The players who heard this had one thought and that was, is a new world boss spawning. Chapter 91, A Unique Greater Demon Adrian was unaware of the ruckus he has caused in the mortal plane and is currently undergoing a minor headache due to the evolution process. Seriously, does the developer have a grudge against players that every single time I will experience a transformation pain would be induced? was Adrian's shout but he did not know that it was already toned down by a hundred times which means the NPCs that experience evolution of the persona have fatality rates. After Adrian was finally satisfied ranting to a non-existent person, he finally noticed that his body was changing. From the outside of the cocoon, they could only see the cocoon pulsating and giving of intense energy that they could see the energy manifest into a black and grey streak. From the inside, Adrian could feel his body adapt to the power that he has accumulated. He could also see the system messages tell him about it though he just glances at them due to him experiencing a minor headache. Current comprehension rate, 109.8%. You must have to comprehend at least 70% in order to succeed and evolve. Due to exceeding the maximum needed comprehension rate, the user's body will be transformed to perfectly adapt to the energy absorbed by the user. Higher tier racial skills will be locked due to the user's low level. Injecting seed of calamity onto the user's body. Injection completed as the body has become completely compatible. Adrian saw something that bothered his eyes but he just shrugged it off because he was focused on the energy entering his body. He could feel that his horns were growing because there was a sensation that it was getting pulled. All the markings or symbols that was glowing on his body was also moving towards the crystal that emerged from the center of his chest. The crystal was an octahedron and pulsated in grey and black light. This crystal was the Adrian's demos core. When a lesser demon evolves to a greater demon, not only do their horns grow but the core inside their body emerges. The reason their core emerges is that a greater demon evolves using the energy they comprehend. From that, their core will automatically form a connection with that form of energy absorb that kind of energy from the surroundings. The core's color also decides what type of energy the greater demon has communed with and Adrian is no different. The three demon elders was looking at the cocoon that was in front of them and prayed to the twin gods to protect the young demon undergoing his evolution. When they heard the universal message, they were ecstatic because the young demon comprehended an unknown energy and would evolve to become a being that was a unique demon. Usually unique demons only appeared when they become arch demons but now a unique greater demon was about to be born. A few seconds later, they could hear a cracking sound from the demon cocoon. The Hanya was the first to crack and then it trailed down to all parts of the cocoon until a deafening sound was produced when the cocoon exploded. There was a shockwave of massive energy that broke the kinetic barrier first and then the temporal barrier next. The massive energy wave diminished in power but it was not enough for the spatial isolation barrier to hold. The massive wave of energy was perceived by all the demons in the paradox planes and they felt refreshed. It was the blessing of the universe that washed over them and the three elders knew that this would be useful for all the demons affiliated with the one bestowed with the blessing. A voice rung inside the demons affiliated with the paradox planes both located there and those outside of it. The demos race of the paradox planes have been given the blessing of the universe. All individuals connected to them will be cured of any illness and would be have their experience multiplied by two for one week. This was the message that Adrian received since he was the only player in the location. The NPCs received a different message and they were different from players. The demos race of the paradox planes have been given the blessing of the universe. All individuals will have a higher conception rate and will have higher chance of growth rate for one week. The three elders and all of the demons cheered when they heard this message as the demos race were low in number due to being hunted outside and the low chance of producing an offspring. In the game it is said that the longer the life of a being, the lower the chance to produce an offspring and with the demos race having indefinite life then their chances are astronomically low. It would be a celebration if two demons would be born in a span of a century. In the near future, they would not face this problem. When the universal message was heard, there were traces of greed and fear on the peak experts. Greed because if they find the source and the individual was weak they could steal it from that individual. 
fear because they did not know who that individual is and it could slaughter them when that individual finds out that some bugs were eyeing it. The energy wave bypassed the dimensional plane but it was already weakened so there were only faint traces of it and the peak experts from different realms lost the source and decided to turn back though some still waited to feel that amazing energy again and hopefully find its source. Some peak experts who were knowledgeable of space magic tried to look for the traces of that energy using the skill memory of space but was unable to receive a reaction. It is already funny enough that they tried using that when the demos, the masters of origin magic, was the one they are up against. Even a lesser demon will have greater understanding of space magic than them who only barely scratched the surface for space magic. When the debris cleared away, the three elders saw the greater demon for the first time and they were astonished. The horns on him had scales with cracks that pulsated a violet light and was on fire but the fire was colored grey instead of red. The horns were now six inches in length and was no longer dull but pointed. The runic symbols on his skin were no more and his skin became pale white with a little tint of blue that was almost unnoticeable. The most striking thing was that its core was unlike anything they have ever seen. It glowed in black and grey light and when they tried to pierce though it using their ocular skill, they felt terror. The wings on the greater demon was no longer bat-like but was something feathered dragon's head but instead of multi-colors, the feathers were black and shined when light hit it. Upon taking a closer inspection, the feathers were emitting black smoke but they were actually shadows. His wingspan is now 4 meters in length. The presence of this greater demon even put shivers on the three elder demon's skins and they were arch demons. When the greater demon opened its closed eyes, a wave of fear crept up the three elder demon's heart but it was only for a second. Powerful this was the thought present in the minds of the three elder demons. When Adrian opened his eyes he could see three demons that were familiar but he swears he has not seen them before. He did not know who they were until he used his ocular skill on them. Name, a scholar. Level, 300. Name, Karan. Level, 300. Name, Bronx. Level, 300. Eh? What are you doing here elder? And what are those forms? You guys look awesome. Was the first words that came out of Adrian's mouth. The elders were dumbfounded because the pressure they felt from Adrian disappeared like nothing happened at all. They returned to their old looking form and sighed. Even if Adrian became a unique demon he was still immature in the ways of the Demos race which is why he was acting like a child impressed with his new toy. A scholar even hit him in the head because of his immature side. Ouch. What was that for old man? Adrian said as he rubbed the part where he was hit. A scholar's vein popped because of Adrian's question and he retorted with another smack before saying, that is for the trouble you have caused. Seriously who performs their evolutionary process in an open field like this? Are you crazy? Next time tell me when you are ready to evolve. Seriously. This kid is a pain. The other two elders laughed at a scholar and Adrian's interaction because deep down a scholar was just worried for Adrian because he was the one Adrian met first and he grown attached to the young lad. So then enough with the suspense and tell us what kind of greater demon are you? A scholar asked. Oh just wait. I will see Adrian said as he opened the status bar and said in a casual tone, it seems I am called a Netheros. Chapter 92, Netheros. When Adrian looked at his status it showed his new species and it also showed that he is now a greater demon. He did not bother to look at the system messages just yet because the three demon elders were in front of him and a scholar asked him a question. It would be rude not to immediately reply. Name, Equinox. Race, Demos, Half Asmodian. Species, Netheros, Greater Demon. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods, Undead Killer, Liberator of the Forgotten, Dragon Tamer, The First Scribe, Demos Reserve Soldier, Goblin Slayer. Job, Soul Summoner. Sub Job, Scribe, Beginner. LVL, 51. It seems I am called an Ethiros. Adrian told the three elder demons. Usually a greater demon will have a species name with the energy that they have absorbed which is why the three elders asked Adrian. They heard the answer but was not sure what king of energy that his species name was derived from. Do you know if there is an energy called Nether? Asked a scholar to the two elder demons beside him. I have no idea. You both know I am not the research type of demon unlike you two who bury themselves in their own study. That guy in particular. Bronx said while pointing at Karan. How dare you? I for one only spend 16 hours a day in research. How could you say that I bury myself in my own work when is already a small time frame? Karan protested. Uh-huh. You even slow time just so you could finish whatever you are reading so you cannot fool me. Bookworm. 
Bronx said as he had a staring contest with Karan. Karan stared back more fiercely as if not wanting to lose. A hemischolar cleared his throat because the other two were getting ready for a brawl so he asked Karan if he knew any type of energy with the name Nether because he is the most knowledgeable of the three demon elders. Stop behaving like children. Karan do you have any idea on what that nether or whatever energy is called? Something like its properties and composition. It is dangerous for the young lad if we do not guide him to use his powers as it might backlash. A scholar asked. I do not know apparently but it might have been in a realm even we are not allowed to go or to set foot in as I know all the energies in realms where living beings survived. It is probably from a higher plane of existence. I do not know how that brat had his hands on that type of energy but he is lucky that his body did not break down and scatter in the wind. Karan said as he looked at Adrian like a specimen for an experiment. Since we do not know what energy he has communed with, we shall observe him for a while when he is on missions. That is why Equinox brat, you must visit back at the Paradox Plains if you feel you are not well or your powers are not working properly. We will conduct an inspection on your body after you have collected yourself here so that you know the properties of your new found power. Also get some clothes on, how can you be so shameless and still not get dressed properly? A scholar said as the three demon elders went back to their respective tasks. Adrian on the other hand has finally been aware that his clothing was gone and he was in the default underwear. He suddenly felt very shy and looked for his clothing in his inventory. He retracted his cool new wings and equipped his weapon, armor, and accessories back on before looking at the system messages. Congratulations player Equinox for successfully becoming a greater demon. You have successfully gained the title Greater Demon. You have successfully gained the title First Greater Demon. You have successfully gained the title First of its kind. The skill Demos Core has been transformed to the Nethiros Species Exclusive Skill Nethiros Core. Equinox has obtained the Nethiros Species Exclusive Skill Nethiros Bane. Equinox has obtained the Nethiros Species Exclusive Skill Nethiros Domain. Equinox has obtained the Nethiros Species Exclusive Skill Nethiros True Form. The skill Nethiros True Form has been sealed due to not having a high enough level to use. Equinox has obtained the Greater Demon Exclusive Skill Blink. Equinox has obtained the Greater Demon Exclusive Skill Chrono Shift. The skill Flight has been upgraded to the skill True Flight. Adrian was overwhelmed by the system messages that he read because there were many of them. Not only did he get three new titles, he also obtained six new skills. He also got his Flight Skill upgraded as a bonus. He was already excited to go into combat but he had to look at all his new skills first in order to know their effects. He would look at the title last as he was more excited to read the skill descriptions. He looked at the skills exclusive for Greater Demons first. Skill, Blink, Demon Version. Tier, Persona Exclusive, Greater Demon. Type, Movement. Effect, Travels on the specified destination that is within 10 meters of the user's location. Can be used two more times. Cooldown will only occur after the two extra blinks have been consumed. User must have Vision PF the specified in order to use the skill. Cooldown, 30 seconds. Cast time, instant. Mana cost, 500 mana points. Skill, Chrono Shift. Tier, Persona Exclusive, Greater Demon. Type, Buff. Effect, uses temporal magic to coat the body and accelerate it for 10 seconds. Movement speed, attack speed, and reaction time will be accelerated by 100%. Duration, 10 seconds. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Cast time, 1 second. Mana cost, 300 mana points. Skill, Nethiros Core. Tier, Nethiros Exclusive Skill. Type, Passive. Effect, Absorb energy from the Nether Realm using the core of the Netheros body. The owner of the skill will have a new gauge added to the user's interface which is called Nether Gauge. Nether Gauge, the owner of the skill will have a gauge that tells the accumulated amount of Nether Energy present in the user's body. Nether Energy is used to apply the Nether Attribute into the user's attacks. The more energy is used, the more powerful the enchantment. Nether Energy is accumulated 1 stack per second. The Nether Gauge increases by 100 every 50 levels. Nether Gauge, 100-100. Cooldown, none. Cast time, none. Mana cost, none. Skill, Nethiros Bane. Tier, Nethiros Exclusive Skill. Type, Passive. Effect, applies the Nethiros Bane on targets that have been damaged by the Nethiros. Targets will be applied with the weakened status effect that decreases their stats by 10%. Players, 
and 20%, monsters and NPCs, when the targets have been applied with 10 stacks of Netheros Bane. If the Netheros kills the target with Netheros Bane stacks, the Netheros will gain Nether Energy stacks corresponding to the number of Netheros Bane stacks that the enemy killed had. It is not affected by immunity. Cooldown, none. Cast time, none. Mana cost, none. Skill, Netheros Domain. Tier, Netheros Exclusive Skill. Type, Domain. Effect, Summon a part of the Nether Realm to spawn in the Mortal Plane for 20 seconds. The Netherose skills will be boosted by 50% and the Netherose stats would be boosted for 100% in the domain. All enemies inside the domain receive the debuff Paranoia. Paranoia, all skill shots made by enemies will have a 50% chance to miss the targets. This will affect enemies regardless of immunities. Cooldown, 72 hours. Cast time, 10 seconds. Mana cost, 2000 mana points. Skill, Netheros True Form. Tier, Netheros Exclusive Skill. Type, Transformation. Effect, Release the limitations put upon you by the Mortal Realm and transform into the true form of the Netheros. All skills and attacks will deal splash damage by 50% of the original damage. All enemies affected by paranoia will have the mind break status afflicted to them. Currently sealed. Must be at least level 100. Mind break. All enemies who cast spells and abilities when in the vicinity of the Netheros will have their spells and abilities cancelled. Duration, 10 seconds. Cooldown, 72 hours. Cast time, 3 seconds. Mana cost, 3000 mana points. Skill, True Flight. Tier, Legendary. Type, Movement. Effect, Unfurl the wings in order to take flight in the air. Movement speed will increase by 20% during flight. Can cast skills while in flight. Cannot fly if wings are damaged. Cooldown, none. Cast time, none. Mana cost, none. Adrian who observed his skills rubbed his eyes in amazement because all the skills he got was powerful and very versatile. Although the Netheros true form was sealed, he imagined him transforming into a last boss type of player. He was most pleased by the Netheros Bane skill because his attacks will weaken his enemies and would also make it easy for him to farm mobs. Adrian was so pleased with what he received that he skipped happily towards a scholar's abode without even paying attention to the stairs he was given. Chapter 93, The Body Has Secrets What do you think happens when peak experts or legendary NPCs come out of their hiding place? Of course, the monsters in the field zones will go back to their homes and go into hiding. The players who were out on a hunt suddenly were perplexed. They could not find monsters in the field zones the whole day. The players who were unsatisfied started ranting in the forums and they were not alone. Numerous field zones had no monsters in it which led them sending a bug inquiry to Atlas headquarters but the only response they got was that it was no bug. The players then speculated it had to do with the world message. The players assumed it was a world message but they did not know that it was in fact a universal message which led those monstrous NPCs to the world of Nebulon. The forums were buzzing and such because of what happened. Adrian also saw it after he was forced to log out of the game due to him exceeding the login limit. He was happily munching on his food when there was emergency news on the Pandemo news regarding the world message and field zone monster disappearance. Adrian activated the projector option of his Halo swatch to watch the news. Hello my lovely viewers. Flash news here brought to you by your flashy MC, Marilyn. The girl MC said as she sported an outfit that was full of glitters and sequins. She really was flashy. According to our source the reason for the monster disappearances on field zones is that some NPCs with staggering levels showed up. Their aura alone scared the monsters stiff on low-leveled field zones such as those with monsters below level 100. She said and gave a wink to the audience. As for what rank of NPC they are, we are not sure but they should be at the very least epic NPCs since they managed to one-shot one of our reporters when they tried conversing with them. She said with glee as they played the video of a level 105 assassin being hit by just a flick of a finger and then becoming particles. Their sudden appearance must have been linked to the world message that we have heard since this has happened before when a world boss spawned during the early days of Pandemonium. All high-leveled NPCs at the time scouted for the whereabouts of the world boss and it was given as a quest to players to subjugate it. Hopefully, it would be the same as the last time. You are watching Pandemonium's Flash News. She said while waving goodbye to the audience. Adrian closed the projection since his mother's eye turned sharp when he saw him actually not paying close attention to his food. The only reason that his mother's slipper is not flying towards his face is because he was currently injured and recuperating. 
If he was fine then that slipper would have come flying a long time ago. It seems everybody is speculating that a world boss is spawning. It would be cool it was low-leveled so I could participate. Adrian thought to himself as he finished his food. He talked to Marlin a little bit and sent him the gold coins that was his share before going to sleep. The next day, Adrian logged back in and summoned his soulbounds then proceeded to cuddle them as he missed them. He was forcefully logged out when he reached a scholar's abode which he complained a lot by the way. Still now that he was here he might as well go inside the place since he was being expected. Adrian was granted passage by the guards when he reintroduced himself to them. They were shocked at first but immediately let him pass since they were familiar with his wolf companion and the elder instructed them to let him in. The guards told him that the elder would be in the courtyard at this time of day so Adrian headed there immediately. Adrian along with his soulbounds saw a scholar as he signaled them to come close to the ladder. When they came close, it felt like they entered a transparent film of some sort. Adrian was about to ask a scholar what that was but he told Adrian the answer to his worries. You have entered the barrier that I just made since we do not want the surrounding to get messed up which is why I created a separate space just for this. A scholar said. For what? Adrian asked. No more dilly-dallying and get ready. Hit me. A scholar commanded. Excuse me. Adrian was dumbstruck. Hit me. A scholar said. Can you keep up? Bab, ouch Adrian started singing when he was hit on the head by a scholar. Why did you suddenly start singing? Did I not tell you that I would test your new body's capabilities? A scholar asked in an angry tone. I thought you were joking so I just went with the flow. Adrian said with pure innocent eyes that a scholar could not take as the latter averted his gaze. If you wanted to be hit so badly old man then do not blame me for being disrespectful. Adrian teased although deep down, he did not actually mean it. Adrian's aloof character suddenly changed and became fierce. Adrian knew that a scholar was telling him to hit him so that he could have a good grasp of his abilities before actually going to the actual combat. Adrian enlarged his gauntlets and aimed to punch a scholar but he was not able to as about a two meters his body was repelled by an unknown force. A scholar's eyes changed for a second because the attack of the kid in front of him bypassed some of the barriers he put up. Granted that he set the strength of the barrier to match the kid's level but bypassing the barriers was insane. A scholar had to reinforce the barrier ten feet in front of him to repel the kid's attack. It seems his body has a special property in which he ignores magic. Interesting. A scholar said as he continued to observe the changes in Adrian's body. Adrian on the other hand started attacking recklessly without using magic since he saw a scholar observing his physique. He tried throwing punches, claw attacks, and kicks but all were repelled. He started getting angry and it showed on his horns as the grey fire started burning vigorously. Adrian really wanted to land at least just one attack but wishes cannot always come true as he became tired a few minutes later. Interesting. Your body seems to bypass the natural order of the world or in other words, the world's mana. All the barriers I made using the mana of the surroundings were not effective and I had to reinforce the barriers to successfully repel you. A scholar said while having his hand on his chin. Adrian who heard this was ecstatic as there was a hidden feature to his body. He was more and more elated that he picked the demos race. Adrian started to laugh as he was absorbed in his own world. A scholar who saw this frowned a little as the lad is becoming overconfident. A scholar was about to hit Adrian's head when the latter suddenly saying words. Fu fu fu. This is not even my final form. Adrian said while making a superhero pose that made a scholar roll his eyes. Brat. I am sorry that I am ruining your fantasy but what do you mean that it is not your final form? A scholar inquired. That is just it. This body is actually not my true form as the world is inhibiting it from releasing. You could say that this body is the seal for my true form. Adrian answered casually. Then how can you regain your true form and unleash it then? A scholar inquired once more as his interest is piqued. Oh. I just have to become stronger and summon my domain skill in which I could transform. Adrian said without even batting an eye. I see then there is only one choice then you must get more powerful. A scholar said as he created a dimensional door and flung Adrian towards it and said, Come back when you can show me your true form. You crazy old man. Adrian shouted as he was flung towards who know where while his soulbounds all followed after him in the dimensional door. Adrian fell with a thud and realized that he was in an area that was a bit foreign to him. He then suddenly looked up and his other soulbounds followed after him and landed right on top of him which he inadvertently said, Oof. He instructed his soulbounds to get off him and when he managed to stand up, a scroll hit him in the head with a scholar's voice echoing from the dimensional door. 
use that to return back to the paradox planes as there are no dimensional fractures near there. Adrian took the scroll and put it in his inventory. He observed his surrounding and he could not find any living plants as they were all rotten. He looked around and all he saw were cliffs. It seems that he was in a canyon. Chapter 94, Cristobal Canyon I Adrian was flung into an unknown place by a scholar. He did not know if it was just chance or was intentional that he was sent to the outskirts of a canyon. The surroundings reminded him of the forsaken cemetery that he was at but minus the tombstones. Adrian scoured the area only to find one wooden sign that staked with letters written in red paint but upon observing it closely it was actually blood. Cristobal Canyon. Where the dead can never rest. Well that sounds promising. And who is this Cristobal guy that he has a canyon named after him? Said Adrian in a sarcastic tone. He then suddenly remembered an item in his inventory that was just sitting there. Adrian pulled out the corrupted spirit stone held in his hands. The corrupted spirit stone was made by combining the fragments together and more fragments means a more powerful sealing stone. Item, corrupted spirit stone, superior. Tier, epic. Type, consumable. Effect, seals the unrelenting soul of an undead monster inside it. The higher the tier, the stronger the sealing effect. In order to use, the sealed undead spirit must be blessed in any church so that they could bless and wash away its instincts to kill the living. In order to get a superior version of the corrupted spirit stone, Adrian had to fuse 10 fragments first to make an inferior version and then 20 more fragments for a moderate version. Finally, he fused 40 more fragments to upgrade it to the superior version. All in all it took 70 fragments to make a superior version leaving Adrian with 12 fragments. He decided to go for the superior version at once to greaten his chances. If there is a unique undead here, maybe I could seal it since I already have two more active soulbound slots available. I would prefer an off-tank or a supporter that could produce barriers since I already have a healer. Adrian thought. Adrian and his soulbounds walked around near the canyon entrance area but there were no monsters sighted which was odd. He checked this morning if the monsters are back in their field zones and they were when he looked at the forums. Adrian could feel his skin crawl because the silence was eerie as not even the wind could make a sound. The surroundings were deathly silent and Adrian could feel that he was being watched. He was getting restless as he feels a looming danger but he does not know where so he instinctively used his evil eye to look at the surroundings. When his eyes changed color, he was able to see it the flame-like substance of the soul and there were dozens of them. He could see them when he activates his evil eye but when turned off he could not see them. What are they? Are they ghosts or specters? Why are they not attacking us? Or maybe if they attack their invisibility will wear off. I could not appraise them since all I see is their soul color. None of them carry a golden soul anyways. Adrian thought. When Adrian got his evil eye, he could see the color of a being's soul as long as it carries one. There are the pale souls that is just misty white color. These souls are considered ordinary. The next tier would be silver souls that slightly stronger individuals possess. Finally there are golden souls which all three of Adrian's soulbounds possess because they are extraordinary. Ken Lon has the deepest golden color with Sirius second and Cena last because she has not activated her bloodline yet. Adrian was thinking on what to do and he thought of a wild and crazy idea. That idea was using his skill soul form manifestation and fight them off as a soul. If both of them were incorporeal, they should be able to hit each other right? Adrian did not want Sirius to sit this fight out because there were about 50 beings he saw. Ghost-like enemies are notoriously fast but low in health so Sirius would be perfect in dealing with them. Adrian casted soul form manifestation on himself first and was shocked because he could finally see the enemies. They were wraiths. The wraiths were wearing full body hooded robes that were torn and there were chains on their pale ghostly arms. Inside the hood was only a pale yellow light and no face. They hovered midair and they had no feet but white smoke was spewing in their lower body. Monster, Wraith. Level, 53. HP, 50,000 slash 50,000. 50, 100%. MP, 20,000-20,000. Description, an undead creature said to be the embodiment of souls of the recently deceased and have come back because of unfinished business. The wraith suddenly charged towards Adrian as they saw his transformation. The only thing that Adrian could think of was that he cursed himself. He clenched his oversized gauntlets and tried punching the first wraith that arrived before him and he was shocked because he could feel a rebound which means his theory was correct. You have dealt 10,357 damage to the Wraith. 
Adrian was not surprised by the enormous damage he dealt because his new titles gave him immense damage also his undead killer title gives 50% more damage to undead. The greater demon title was the most useful of his current titles. The first greater demon gave him additional stats and the first of its kind gave him the luck stat. Title, Greater Demon Description, Title given to those who successfully evolve into a greater demon. Can be upgraded. Effect, Deal additional 10% damage to all enemies and get flat 5% physical and magical penetration. Those whose persona is lower than yours deal 10% less damage to you. Title, First Greater Demon Description, Title given to the first player to become a greater demon. Can be upgraded. Effect, All stats plus 25. Title, First of its kind. Description, Title given to someone who becomes the first player to transform into a unique species. It gives you luck because you are going to need it scrub. Effect, opens the hidden luck stat. Luck plus 5. The player who unlocked the Dragon Keen might have a similar title to my first greater demon or maybe even better. Adrian thought as he was being swarmed by wraiths. Adrian could no longer take the assault of wraiths as he was already getting bombarded with claw attacks despite the 10% healing he gets from his overall damage. He decided to immediately cast Soul Form Transformation on Sirius since the cooldown for the skill just finished. Sirius' body became invisible to the naked eye and became ghost-like. Sirius used Phantom Rush Adrian told Sirius using their soul link. Sirius bombarded the 48 wraiths with incredible claw attacks and even bit them. Now that Adrian has a way to physically harm incorporeal beings this fight would become easier. Adrian also joined Sirius on the fight as he too was being bombarded with attacks from the wraiths as their aggro shifted to him. Meanwhile the two soulbounds, Ken Lon, and Sina, were wondering what happened to their eldest brother and master. Dot. Adrian finally decided to use the Vortex skill as there were too many wraiths to deal with. Adrian summoned a small cluster of condensed space magic and it slowly went upwards. He snapped his fingers and the condensed energy exploded generating a black hole that sucked all the wraiths inside carrying them to oblivion. The two soulbounds who were not in their soul form saw the black hole and were relieved because that means that their master is safe. You have successfully killed the wraith. You have been given experience points. You have successfully killed the wraith. You have been given experience points. Player Equinox has leveled up. Sirius has leveled up. Ken Lon has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. Sina has leveled up. The ding that the level up notification was blissful to hear for Adrian as that was the result of his hard work. He was joyful but he suddenly heard a notification. The cursed wraith wakes from its slumber due to the disappearance of its guards. Adrian then saw smoke surrounding them and gathering at a spot 20 meters in front of them. The smoke came together and made a swirling motion like that of a cloud tornado that was 30 feet in height. It did not take long for the cursed wraith to appear and look at Adrian with hunger like that of the wraiths before it but with more intensity. It looked like a normal wraith but it had dark tattered robes and inside the hood was red light instead of the yellow light that normal wraiths had. It was also 20 feet in height and it had black miasma seeping through it. This was the field boss that spawns when a number of normal mobs are defeated. Adrian was not happy with the field boss spawning because that means there are others present in the canyon and was able to hunt the invisible wraiths. It did not take long to see the people who were hunting the wraiths because Adrian heard a voice from his left side. Daddy, the field boss is there. Hey, it even has summoned some minions. A cute voice of a little girl said. So I am treated as a minion now. Adrian said as a vein popped on his forehead. Chapter 95, Cristobal Canyon 2 Adrian looked at the two visitors that he has and was shocked because they were of a higher level than him. The young girl looked about eight or nine years old and was carrying a red stuffed toy lion with its mane looking as if it was on fire. She was wearing a white dress that was styled in old century France. It had beautiful patterns that accentuate her brown hair and hazel eyes. She looked like a cute little fairy but what makes her pop out is the red hood that she was wearing. Does she like Red Riding Hood that much that she styled herself just like her? Adrian thought. Adrian then looked at the other visitor and it was a man maybe just entered his thirties. The man was wearing a white kimono and topped it off with a blue kamishimo that had cloud designs on the lower part. The man had black hair and eyes with his hair in a ponytail style. He has a single edge bladed sword and a sheath. The sheath of the sword had cloud designs with a dragon coiled on it. He must be the little girl's dad but seriously their outfits contrast a lot. One has an ancient European style while the other has the style of a samurai. Adrian thought to himself as he suddenly looked at his clothes and said, Well my fashion choices are not any better. 
Daddy you take care of the field boss while I take care of its underlings. The little girl shouted as she was sure he could take care of the minions the cursed wraith summoned, A.K. Adrian and Sirius. Okay my little sunshine go get them. The man said. Adrian once again looked at the little girl to clearly see her name as he only saw the level previously. Name, Salile. Level, 71. Job class, Pyromancer. The little girl named Salile was a pyromancer and was 19 levels higher than Adrian but he believed that he will not lose to this girl as Adrian believed that he has the status points of someone 30 levels above him. He once again looked at his stats. Name, Equinox. Race, Demos, Half Asmodian. Species, Netheros, Greater Demon. Title, Champion of the Twin Gods, Undead Killer, Expand. Job, Soul Summoner. Subjob, Scribe. Beginner. LVL, 52. EXP, 83.4% slash 100%. HP, 3470 slash 4000. MP, 593 slash 2200. VIT, 170 plus 5. STR, 195 plus 25. Int, 195 plus 20. AGI, 170 plus 10. DEX, 165 plus 15 and, 163. Adrian even did the motion where he pretended to be blinded by his stats because it was high. Also he still had not used his soul essences and his nether gauge yet which is why his trump cards have not yet been used. Yet, Adrian was not too keen on the fact on engaging with a battle among fellow players as he does not want to PK them as they just misunderstood that he was a monster. The more pressing thing is that why can they see me in my soul form? Normal human players would not be able to see us but how can they? Adrian pondered. This is no time to be in thinking mode. I should just get away a little bit first since it is the field boss that they are after. Adrian thought as he blinked away to his two soulbounds location and Sirius followed suit. The little girl, Solile, did not know what happened because the minion suddenly disappeared when she was chanting her spell. She tried randomly firing fireballs but did not get a reaction which means her targets were no longer in the area. She frowned and threw a little tantrum before going back to her dad that was engaging the cursed wraith. Adrian reappeared on one of the cliffs as he told Kenlon and Sina to get to higher ground as they had visitors and wanted to use surprise attacks if ever Adrian was in danger. Adrian and Sirius no longer in their soul form just observed the situation from afar. There he could see that the father was using a typical quicksword draw style of attacks. He looked at the name of the man as he was curious of how strong he was. Name, Veu. Level. 71. Job Class, Swift Blade. Veu sheathed his sword as there was wind getting collected on the sheath when the sword was in it. He drew the sword in such a fast pace that even Adrian was not able to see the drawing motion. The attack then slashed the air itself and struck the cursed wraith. He even dealt a critical attack. No way. How is that possible? Adrian thought as he knows that physical attacks were ineffective against ghost-type enemies. He also inspected the cursed wraith as he was in disbelief that it was damaged. Monster, Cursed Wraith. Level, 65. HP, 184,730-200,000. MP, 100,000-100,000. Description, An undead creature said to be the embodiment of souls of the recently deceased and have come back because of unfinished business. It was put into torture once more as it became an undead by a mad magus and was cursed to never pass on to the afterlife even if it was killed. The vessel that holds its curse is buried in Cristobal Canyon. Adrian also used his evil eye to inspect the battle closer as Veu tried to dodge the cursed wraith. He then realized why its attack was effective on the cursed wraith even if it was a ghost-type undead. Adrian saw gusts of wind forming around Veu as he continued to dodge the claw attacks of the undead. Upon closer inspection, the gusts of wind actually carried little critters that were about three inches tall. Adrian tried to identify them and he was able to. Name, Lesser Wind Elemental. Description, Newborn wind spirits that are mischievous and sometimes play with humans when they are unaware. If the wind just happened to blow your skirt up or blow your laundry away, it might just be a lesser wind elemental being playful. Elementals are beings that give the world order and sustains the elements of the world. If a natural disaster were to occur it was often said to be the cause of an elemental being angry. This was the first time Adrian has seen a status card that had no level or health. Adrian was actually intrigued by this development. 
Elementals usually have another name and they were nature spirits so it would make sense that the two players he encountered that is loved by them could see him in his soul form. They might have obtained a skill to see the nature spirits or any other ghost-like entity. Back to the battle, Veu was skillfully dodging the blows that the field boss was doing. He would then slash at the arms of the field boss whenever he had the chance. He whittled down the boss health points in this manner. He was gaining the upper hand when the cursed wraith screeched and he was suddenly bounded by chains. He could not even move his feet as he was rooted in place. The cursed wraith was about to plunge its claws on Veu when a sudden tornado made of flames hit it as it screamed with a blood-curdling noise. The fire tornado managed to deal a good chunk of damage to the cursed wraith's health points but it was not enough to incapacitate it as it flailed its hands and managed to hit Solile. Solile's health decreased to half immediately since she was a mage class character as they are known to be glass cannons. The chains that tangled up Veu was still in effect and had no sign of being undone. Adrian who saw this could see that the cursed wraith's mana was visibly draining which means those chains are probably a channeled skill that as long as it was in the vicinity, it could trap one opponent as long as it had mana. Adrian did not want to be rude and kill steal a boss since both of them needed it for something maybe a mission. Adrian who observed the father-daughter duo could say that they are not pro gamers and had just started the game. The father could be said to have some sword skills probably because he studied kendo or something but that would not be enough in this situation where the movement of the enemy is erratic and unknown. The little girl also was treating herself like a superhero declaring things like this and that not knowing that she must not attract the attention of the field boss. I cannot watch this anymore. I better go and help them. Adrian said as he blinked closer to the cursed wraith and his soul bounds followed. The cursed wraith was about to strike at Solile and you could see tears forming on her eyes when the pale hands of the boss slowed down and an explosion suddenly formed at its head area. The cursed wraith suddenly turned towards Adrian who executed his skills chrono lag and quantum space mine. The cursed wraith was then given a face full of flame when it turned its head towards Adrian. Chapter 96, Cristobal Canyon 3 In the Western folklore, dragons are not considered as holy beast but more like an incarnation of death and destruction that must be subjugated. In the Eastern folklore however they are revered as holy beings that could give blessings and are protectors of nature. What do you think would happen when a holy being dealt damage to an undead that rejects the natural course of nature? Ken Lon has dealt 70, 126 catastrophic damage to the Cursed Wraith. The flame breath hit the Cursed Wraith and it wailed in pain as there was some scant amount of holy power in breath as Ken Lon is considered as an eastern type of dragon. Sina flew over to Solile and immediately used its healing skill on her as she lost a lot of health but mainly because Adrian told her to do so. At first Sina protested that it does not want to heal unknown persons but Adrian managed to persuade it. Monster, Cursed Wraith. Level. 65. HP, 89,381-200,000. MP, 731,752-100,000. Although the cursed wraith was wailing in pain, it was still sealing Veu using chains which is why Adrian does not expect support from either of them. Adrian used soul form transformation again on Sirius so he could hit the cursed wraith. The cursed wraith then switched aggro to Kenlon because it dealt tremendous damage to it. The cursed wraith then summoned chains from its two hands and used them as a whip. It targeted Ken Lon who was preparing a breath attack. The left chains then hit Ken Lon's cheek which diverted the flame breath elsewhere while Sirius who used portal assault popped next to the right arm of the cursed wraith and bit it. The cursed wraith who was supposed to do a follow-up attack was unable to because of Sirius' bite. Adrian who was observing the situation finally intervened and summoned the Psyche Armament that he has yet to use. Summon Psyche Armament, Daggers Adrian chanted. Adrian's demi-gauntlets disappeared in his hands and then a dagger one foot long materialized on each of his hands. It looked just like a dagger version of his psyche armament, sword where the hilt was scale-like in patterns and the crossguard had a green cat's eye that moves as if surveying the surroundings. Adrian then used the first skill that the dagger had and immediate vanished from his location because he appeared at the backside of the cursed wraith. Skill, Soul Emergence. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active Movement. Effect. Travel to the location of a desired target as long it has a soul. Appear behind the target and your next attack within the next 10 seconds deal a critical strike. Cool down, 1 minute. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 30 essence per cast. Following his appearance at the back of the cursed wraith, Adrian immediately used the second skill O the dagger psyche armament. The daggers then glowed a blue color and Adrian immediately pierced the back of the cursed wraith. It could only wail in anguish as it was dealt catastrophic damage once again. 
Equinox has dealt 62,768 catastrophic damage to the Cursed Wraith. Skill, Soul Impale. Tier, Legacy. Type, Enchantment. Effect, coats a devastating aura of soul energy on your daggers and deal twice the damage for one attack. Cooldown, 30 seconds. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 15 essence per cast. Adrian dealt two times the damage of a critical strike which enraged the field boss even more because its health was now on the red region. Adrian who was still stuck at the back of the cursed wraith was smiling because his guess that his psyche armaments could target ghost entities. He would have been disappointed if it did not because what is the use of a soul summoner if he could not damage souls. The cursed wraith then tried to shake Adrian off its back when Adrian stabbed again using his right hand. The cursed wraith wailed once again then a shockwave was produced from it thereby sending Adrian flying. Adrian unfurled his wings which shocked both Veu and Solile since based on their memory dragonkins do not look like what Adrian is right now. The cursed wraith then summoned chains from below it and rooted itself to the ground using it. It then waved its hand towards Sirius' direction and then chains suddenly tangled Sirius. Its hood then looked next to Adrian and from below him the same happened as chains sprouted from the ground. Adrian then used his remaining blink to disappear from his location. When the cursed wraith saw Adrian vanished, he then chose his next target which was Ken Lon. It launched the chains on its arms towards Ken Lon who was preparing his breath attack. Ken Lon managed to dodge the first chain attack by coiling his body to the left but it was caught by the second chain that the cursed wraith launched. The second chain coiled around Ken Lon's body like a snake and even muffled its mouth that was still trying to launch an attack. Due to being unable to move, Ken Lon came down crashing towards the ground as the chains that bind him keep getting tighter and Adrian could see that all those bounded were getting continuous damage because of it. Adrian who reappeared a few feet away tried coming closer but chains would sprout from the ground whenever he would move towards the cursed wraith. He had no choice but use the third skill of the dagger psyche armament although he does not completely understand how it works. Adrian initiated the skill and a system message popped. Please throw one dagger towards the target. Adrian thought it was a targeted skill but it was a skill shot. He then threw the dagger on his right hand towards the cursed wraith. It was easy to target due to it being rooted on the ground but it sprouted a chain wall before it to block the dagger. Adrian thought he failed and frowned because he just wasted a skill. The cursed wraith then taught that its defense was successful because it did not tilt its body to avoid the dagger but that was a grave mistake as the dagger phased right through its chain wall. The dagger then struck the chest of the cursed wraith but it did not take damage. The cursed wraith thought that the attack was just an illusion because it did not take damage but then Adrian muttered some words. Soul Seeker Adrian said. Adrian then accelerated like lightning towards the cursed wraith and phased right through its chain wall and then pierced its chest using his remaining dagger. The place where he pierced was the same location where the illusion dagger struck the cursed dagger. The cursed wraith did not even make a sound as its body was once again being sucked towards the ground. You have successfully executed the field boss of the outskirts of Cristobal's Canyon. Player Equinox has leveled up. Sirius has leveled up. Ken Lon has leveled up. Cena has leveled up. Adrian who saw that notification was shocked because he did not know that the skill was that powerful. He once again checked the skill description so that he was not mistaken. Skill, Soul Seeker. Tier, Legacy. Type, Active. Effect, Shoot one of your dagger towards the target and give them a soul mark. If the skill shot misses the skill will then go on cooldown. Soul mark, Activate the skill once again to travel to the location of the target with the soul mark and deal 1000% mixed damage. Enemies with less than 10% health will be instantly executed regardless of immunity. Cooldown, 24 hours. Cast time, instant. Essence cost, 50 essence per cast. The skill was the definition of the perfect assassin skill as it had a high execute health threshold and high damage if the target would not be executed. It was a perfect finisher skill as it was subtle and if the enemy was not aware and do not try to dodge the dagger then they would regret it dearly. Although the skill was only a single target skill and if the first dagger was dodged then you could only blame yourself but for a stationary target this skill was deadly. When the cursed wraith was sucked back into the ground, the chains that strangled the others disappeared like it was just an illusion. So Lyle who came while hugging both Cena and her stuffed toy then looked at Adrian with eyes of admiration and embarrassment. She was too embarrassed to speak so his father, Veu, initiated the conversation. Thank you, young man. As he shook Adrian's hand and continued speaking, if not for you then both me and daughter might have been logged out of the game by now. She is just too embarrassed to say thanks to you because she mistook you for a monster. Dad. 
Do not embarrass me in front of our savior. The young girl said as she pouted and stomped the ground. She even hugged Sina and her stuffed toy tighter. Chapter 97, New Companions Adrian who was only observing the situation between the dialogue of the father and daughter could only smile as it only affirms that the two were close. Adrian could only chuckle as the two in front of him was still going back and forth in their dialogue. When the two noticed Adrian's chuckle, they became embarrassed as they were quarreling in front of their savior. I know that it is not right to ask you this since you save us and all. Could you please give us the labyrinth key if it is in the loot? Of course not for free as I would pay you for the trouble. We need that to access a dungeon for our mission. Veu said as they already used about a week in game just to find that drop as the cursed wraith can only be spawned every two days. The father and daughter looked towards Adrian with great expectations. Adrian felt the pressure especially so Lyle who looked at him with cute eyes. He was a sucker to those stairs as he used to play with the children at the hospital he used to stay in. I am fine with it as I am not the only one who damaged the field boss anyway Adrian said with an expression that he gave up resisting the puppy dog eyes the little girl did. Yay. Thanks a lot big brother. So Lyle rejoiced and headed towards the loot pile. I would not get my hopes up as it would not drop easily since you guys have been hunting it for about a week right? Adrian said as to not get their hopes up. A few seconds later, so Lyle could be seen frowning then started throwing a tantrum. Veu immediately went over and saw why his daughter had that reaction because the key was not in the loot pile again. They had to wait another two days just to try once again hoping that it would drop by that time. Adrian who saw the little girl's reaction could not help but frown. Adrian was about to comfort the little girl when his dad suddenly gripped his sword on the sheath and did a striking motion towards Adrian. Adrian could not believe it. Did he mistakenly judge their character? Or was he too soft? He did observe the situation before helping them and he knows he can judge others' characters really well. Adrian can use blink to avoid the strike but it was so fast that even his eyes cannot see the slashing motion. He was sure he was about to be hit but the sword slash just brushed his cheek and did not damage him at all. Veu then shouted at Adrian to get out of there as there seemed to be a wraith trying to sneak up behind him. Adrian who heard the warning immediately jumped towards the father and daughter. He then faced backwards and saw the wraith that was sneaking up towards him. It looked like the cursed wraith that they attacked earlier but in human size. Adrian was about to attack but he then saw that the name was not in red. Stop. Adrian said which bewildered the father and daughter duo. It is currently a quest NPC look at its name. It is currently in white. I think it will ask for a favor or something which is why it wanted to come close to me. Adrian stated. Hey? How is that possible big brother? I mean aren't monsters just monsters? So Lyle asked. Adrian did not know how to answer the little girl's question so he just said that it was related to his job class. When he said that the father and daughter duo tried to use their inspect skill on him but it was repelled and no details were seen. Big brother, why is your status full of question marks? We cannot even see your name. So Lyle grumbled. So Lyle that is a bit rude. Veu scolded. Adrian then realized that he has yet to introduce himself to the duo and even he did not know why his status are question marks to them because he could see theirs very clearly. Adrian speculated that it must have something to do with his persona that is higher than other people. I am sorry. I actually forgot to introduce myself because I thought you two could see my name. My name is Equinox. Adrian said. The two were about to introduce themselves when Adrian spoke again, I already know both your names, Veu and Solile. Your name finally popped out when I tried inspecting you but your level and job class are still question marks. So Lyle said with a frown. We will handle that matter later because it is rude to keep Mr. Wraith waiting. Adrian said with a smile. He then continued with a serious tone, so what do you want from me then since you wanted to approach me so badly? The Wraith then answered in a raspy voice that as if it was gasping for air, guider of souls. I beckon you to help thyself in his misfortune. I have been tormented for eternity and want to be released from the curse that plagues thyself. Adrian then received a notification for a quest. The quest was given by the cursed wraith itself and it wanted Adrian to free it from its everlasting torment. Quest Notification Free me from bondage. The cursed wraith imprisoned by the mad warlock, Cristobal, wants you to free it from the seal its soul was placed in. Journey to the distorted labyrinth and find the chalice where its soul is sealed. Reward, unknown. Clear conditions, find the chalice and break the seal. Failure, the soul of the cursed wraith will forever be bounded in this canyon and your reputation as the guider of souls will go down. Do you want to accept the quest? 
Before Adrian could accept the quest, he asked the cursed wraith a question. Where is the distorted labyrinth? Adrian asked. As if on cue, the father and daughter duo then said, that's where we need to go. Adrian was startled because the duo became so excited when they heard the words distorted labyrinth that they shouted when they were about only a foot away from Adrian. The eyes of the duo then sparkled and looked at Adrian to ask them to form a party. So the place you want to go to is this distorted labyrinth right? Adrian asked as the father-daughter duo nodded their heads eagerly. Adrian then looked towards the wraith and asked, Can I bring companions along? It is not a problem O Guider of Souls as my seal is being guarded by a malevolent spirit but you could only bring those two as only three could enter the labyrinth at a time. If you bring more than that number then the Mad Warlock might return because I will use my remaining powers to mask your presences to fool the labyrinth. What do you mean fool the labyrinth? Adrian asked as he was extremely curious. The distorted labyrinth was made by the Mad Warlock as a way of keeping my seal hidden from the world. He made it so that the labyrinth was alive and could feel the presence of outsiders to fool whoever goes inside. All who wonder will be lost forever was what he shouted before leaving this place. Before I accept there is one more thing that I need to know. Adrian said. What is it O oh Guider of Souls? The Wraith said while the father and daughter duo was also expecting a very serious question involving a serious matter. Where am I? Adrian asked with a straight face. There was a long silence that if you dropped a pin you could probably hear it make a sound. The father and daughter looked at Adrian in disbelief while the wraith looked like its fading soul was growing much faint. The one who asked the question was showing a V-sign with his tongue sticking out in a cute way. The first one to speak was so lyle as she knows when to break the atmosphere when things get awkward towards adults. We are in the realm of Forsaken that is located at the very outskirts of the spirit realm. So lyle while smiling. I see that old man did not even bother to send me to Nebulon and just chucked me somewhere to train. I mean it makes sense since he gave me a scroll that was different from the last ones I got. Adrian thought. Adrian was brooding over and ranting about a scholar when the wraith once again spoke. Will you not take care of my plight guider of souls? The wraith asked once again. Do you want to accept the quest? Adrian looked at the wraith and then towards the father-daughter duo before he accepted the quest. It was the first time a spirit actually gave him a quest and he wants to examine if it was different from quests from living NPCs. Chapter 98, Distorted Labyrinth I Adrian who accepted the quest turned towards the father and daughter duo and said, So what should we name our party? So Lyle immediately answered with, Free Wraith Kun. Veu who heard that wanted to protest but saw Adrian giving a thumbs up. It seems Adrian was mindful of children's feelings. Adrian asking for a simple thing like the party name would put some importance for the task in So Lyle's mind as she was the one who named the party. She would give her best since she would feel responsible. Veu now knows that the young man in front of him knows how to deal with kids. The party notification then appeared for the father and daughter duo. When they saw the part member's statuses, they were shocked. Their savior was actually 20 levels below them and his job class was question marks which means it is probably a hidden class or the extremely rare unique class. Veu speculated that it must be a unique class as they were only able to see spirits or ghost entities because of the blessing of the spirit king and even that would run out as time passed which is why they are in a rush to finish their mission. Party, Free Wraith Kun. Name, Equinox Level 53. Job Class. Name, Veu Level 73. Job Class, Swift Blade. Name, Solial Level 73. Job Class, Pyromancer. Wow. Big Brother is so strong. You are 20 levels below us but you could deal with a boss class monster. Solial said in admiration. The boss monster was just a bad matchup for you too that is why you could not deal with it properly. I also did not do it alone as I had my soul bounds. Adrian said as he gets shy when someone praises him genuinely. You are too humble young lad. It takes hard work and determination to be able to contend a boss monster. Veu said as even he was astounded. Anyway, let us go to the distorted labyrinth. So how do we go to the labyrinth? Do we need to find the door or something? Adrian asked the wraith. No worries O oh guider of souls. I can manifest the gate here in this location as only the key that I carry is tangible. The wraith said while taking out a rusted key and did an inserting motion in front of it and a door materialized. Adrian was impressed because he did not expect that as in other games you have to usually look for a dungeon's entrance but this was different as you only needed the key. The party then walked towards the door to go inside as the wraith was the first one that entered. Adrian looked at Solyle because she has been looking at him for quite a while meaning she is curious. Is something wrong? 
asked Adrian to Solisle. I know that you are not being weird or anything big brother but how could you understand what that wraith is saying? Solisle finally asked. Can you not hear it utter words? Adrian asked as he was not sure if the girl was playing a prank on him. It was Veu who answered Adrian's question by saying, All we heard are incomprehensible whispers of three persons with an occasional ghoulish laugh. Is that so? Maybe it has something to do with my job class as I can communicate with lost souls and the like. Answered Adrian. There is one more thing bugging me though big brother. What is this blessing of the universe buff that our party has? Solisle asked once more. That is just a two times experience multiplier. No biggie. Adrian said nonchalantly which made the father and daughter duo stop right at their tracks. Even though Solisle was a little girl, she was informed with things related to pandemonium as it was her favorite pastime. Top guilds would scramble and probably beg Adrian to join them for a hunt just to experience a whopping two times experience boost. It was rare to the point that only a handful of streamers ever experience it. Oh wah. I think my lucky star is in the night sky for us to be blessed with this luck. Solisle said in a rather quiet tone. Powerful was the only word Veu said. What are you guys waiting for let's go. Adrian beckoned to the father and daughter duo. The free wraith kun party entered the door and was surprised because usually labyrinths were made of hedges but this was something akin to muscle. The walls were muscle-like in nature and was even pulsating. Even Adrian was grossed out as it seemed lifelike. To the developer whoever made this, who hurt you? Adrian said in a small voice while a man inside a building suddenly sneezed. Are you not sick director? The female attendant asked. I am fine someone must be cursing me or something. The young director said. The wraith then started forming a spell which made runes that were smoky appeared and attached to the party members for it. They all received a notification indicating that they were applied with something. The free wraith kun party members have been applied with shroud. Shroud, disables the perception of the distorted labyrinth to mesmerize and toy with its trespassers. This should keep you safe from the prying eyes of the labyrinth, guider of souls. It is not permanent as it would only last for four hours as my power grows weaker to keep it active. It will also not deter the mindless creatures inside the labyrinth so still be on your guard. The wraith stated. Adrian only nodded and explained to the others what the buff was and its duration. The father and daughter nodded in agreement and became alert in their surroundings. The wraith then said to follow it as it will lead them to the middle of the labyrinth where its soul has been sealed. The walls were very eerie as it pulsated like a heart. When Adrian mentioned this, the wraith then explained how this labyrinth came to be. This labyrinth was made using the heart of a dark god who fell in battle. The mad warlock used it and created this labyrinth. When he learned that there was still a little bit of consciousness in it, he used that to mesmerize and trap all the trespassers of the labyrinth. It would allure anyone and then the mad warlock would use them as lab rats for his experiments. The wraith said with visible anger in its tone. When Adrian heard that this labyrinth was made using a body part of a dark god, he was surprised as it would mean this place was extremely old. It would seem that the gods overlooked the fallen bodies of their opponents and the inhabitants of the various worlds did not bother to look for them as they thought that it no longer posed any kind of threat. Adrian went into deep contemplation when he heard this and thought, doesn't that mean there are others who did the same or maybe even worse? I should not think of this now as I am currently busy with this task but I would report this to the elders later. If your soul is sealed, how can you even be here with us? Adrian asked suddenly. It will take a long explanation but you could say that this body that you see is but an apparition of me. A projection if you will. I will explain later but it seems that we have company. The wraith answered. When the wraith said that Adrian looked in front of him, he saw huge mushrooms that had faces and limbs of humans. They were about four feet tall and released black spores whenever they moved. They did not seem to mind Adrian's party but they were blocking the way forward. Adrian wanted to fly over them but the spores that they released corroded parts of the wall made of muscle which scared him a little. He then inspected what the monsters were and they were elementals. To be more exact, elementals that were corrupted. Monster, corrupted earth elemental. Level, 60. HP, 70,000 slash 70,000. MP, 10,000 slash 10,000. Description. Earth elementals that were corrupted because of the experiments done to it by the mad warlock Cristobal. Due to them becoming corrupted, they no longer have the ability to freely wield the mana present in nature. The spores they release have great corrosive property that not only corrodes living tissue but the mana present in living beings as well. 
Adrian then instructed both Kenlon and Solil to use their fire-based attacks to take care of the five corrupted earth elementals in front of them because they are pressed for time. Kenlon then took a deep breath and spew red-hot flames towards the corrupted earth elementals. He then diverted his attention towards Solil as he saw her not even chanting. Adrian was shocked because she did not even chant some words as five fireballs materialized right away and headed towards the five corrupted elementals. It would seem that Adrian was not the only special person in his party. Chapter 99, Distorted Labyrinth 2 Adrian was amazed by how Solyle used her skills as she seemed like how the demos use origin magic which only used at most one or two word chant. She might have gained a skill to invalidate long chanting which normal mages tend to do. The demos only needed to say the name of the spell in order to cast it but the downside is that they can only use origin magic. Solyle seemed to be using the stuffed lion as a magic wand or a medium for spells since mages need them in order to better control spells. Adrian used his dark blue evil eye on the stuffed lion and he saw a red soul that was on blazing like a very little sun. When Adrian observed it more in depth, the red soul became afraid and the fireballs headed toward the corrupted elementals reduced in power. Adrian who saw this change suddenly had an I am sorry expression written on his face. So Lyle who also noticed it as her bear was shaking as if it was in fear. Although the power diminished, the combined dragon breath and fireballs were super effective that it cut more than 60% of the health points of the corrupted elementals. Adrian then summoned his bow psyche armament to bombard the corrupted elementals with piercing arrows while Veu used his sword drawing technique to finish them off. The enemies were easy because they were like mindless dolls as their eyes contained no color and they just stared into the void while advancing. Big brother did you do something to Regu-chan? He says that he is afraid of you. So Lyle said as they were picking up loot that were mainly miscellaneous items. I am sort of to blame for scaring him a little because my staring probably intimidated him a little. Adrian jokingly answered. If you do not mind me asking young man, what are you? Veu said. Eh, I don't understand. Adrian replied while having a dumbfounded expression. What my daddy meant to say was, what is your race? You cannot be a dragon keen because your horns curve forward rather than curve backward like them. You also do not have a tail and your wings have feathers which is cool. So Lyle said as a matter of fact. Okay then I will answer you if you also answer my question. Deal. Adrian replied. Deal. So Lyle replied enthusiastically. I am from the Demos race or in a much simpler term a demon. Then it is my turn to ask the question, why do you need to go inside the labyrinth? If you could show me the mission that would be fine too. Adrian said with a smile. Wow. Then does that mean you unlocked it by your own? Amazing. So Lyle said as she was so excited to see other races that are not of the starting races. She then answered Adrian's question, we need to beat the boss in this dungeon so that we could also become another race. With Big Brother here, it would then be a piece of cake since you already experience it once. Adrian then calmed So Lyle by saying, I activated mine when I was at the starting village so it could be different for your mission. Adrian had a more important thought which was, there are others who can race change like me and had not unlocked the mission so that new players could use them. It also means that there may be hidden experts that do not broadcast their rank in the leaderboards. Adrian put all that in the back of his mind and told the father and daughter duo that he would help them with their mission in any way he can. The two then thanked Adrian a bunch of times which wasted about five minutes of their time. There was now three hours and thirty minutes remaining before the shroud fades and they were still at the outer edges of the labyrinth. They made good use of their time because the wraith was guiding them to the right directions and they tried to avoid some monsters that can be avoided to minimize the time. Adrian could see his stamina bar being depleted slowly because they have been moving fast to reach the center quickly but the labyrinth was enormous and sometimes they would encounter monsters that attack them suddenly. Monster, Corrupted Fire Elemental Level, 62 HP, 60,000-60,000 MP 30,000-30,000 Description, Fire Elementals that were corrupted because of the experiments done to it by the Mad Warlock Cristobal. Due to them becoming corrupted, they no longer have the ability to freely wield the mana present in nature. They became extremely aggressive and would suddenly charge at other beings to engulf them in flames and turn them to ashes. So Lyle suddenly launched a fireball towards one of the ten corrupted fire elementals but it only seemed to like it rather than be damaged. It also shone brightly compared to before as it seemed to become empowered. Veu who noticed this told his daughter to sit this fight out since the corrupted elementals became excited when hit by her fire spells. 
Veu then started his offensive with Cena's heels as support since the team did not have a dedicated tank but Adrian told Ken Lon to tank the fireballs that the corrupted fire elementals throw at them since he has high resistance. Veu then used the chances he was given to freely attack the corrupted fire elementals. Veu would strike with a sword draw once and if he hits an enemy, there would be a visible wind that swirls on his sword sheath. His next few attacks also became stronger since they defeated the next corrupted fire elemental faster than the last one. Even with the support of Adrian's piercing arrows they still defeated one faster than the other and when Veu successfully hit ten times a twister was released with his sword draw. The twister was about five feet in circumference and it even caught the corrupted fire elementals. The twister was considered as a hard crowd control as it carried the corrupted fire elementals all the way to the path ahead by ten meters. Adrian who waited for the twister to die down used the first skill of his Bao Psyche armament shooting star. You have successfully put the corrupted fire elemental to rest. You have gained experience points. You have successfully put the corrupted fire elemental to rest. You have gained experience points. Player Equinox has leveled up. Player Equinox has leveled up. Sirius leveled up. Ken Lon leveled up. Cena leveled up. The father and daughter duo was really excited by the experience buff because they could see a difference in their experience bar as it becomes filled faster than without it. When they looked at Adrian, he already gained two levels while his soulbounds gained three levels which was surprising. They also know that experience points should be scarce for summoners since he has to share with his soulbounds but did not seem to be the case for Equinox. The father and daughter wanted to ask but it would be rude for anyone to spill their secrets since even Equinox himself does not ask them much. The party continued their journey with much ease but the wraith suddenly stopped to speak, we have reached the midpoint of the labyrinth. We will encounter much more ferocious and creatures only found in nightmares from here so be careful as they could show up anywhere. The father and daughter did not know what the wraith was saying so they could only ask Adrian which the latter happily obliged to repeat what the wraith said. Veu gripped his sword on his sheath tighter while Solyle was gathering the fire spirits around her as a precaution to launch them whenever necessary. Adrian also instructed Sirius to immediately signal them when a threat would appear as it would suddenly become agitated when monsters are near. The previous fast pace they used was no longer there but was replaced by a steady pace as they cautiously proceeded forward. Sirius was in the lead as he assessed the situation. They made good progress despite having two hours and forty minutes left before the shroud disappears. Sirius suddenly stopped in place and took a sniff before suddenly jumping forward and landing on a tile. The tile then submerged which triggered teeth like spikes to suddenly protrude and attempt to skewer Sirius. Siri Chan Solyle shouted while Adrian did not appear worried as Sirius appeared somewhere near Adrian immediately which startled the father and daughter duo. The spikes then slowly withdrew after a few seconds back into the wall and the tile that submerged has emerged once again as if it never went down in the first place. Adrian who did not want to explain the situation just said with a smile as if nothing happened, let's go and do not step on that tile. Sirius once again led the way as it has done earlier but there was a more cautious look on its face as if it was saying, that was close. Chapter 100, Distorted Labyrinth 3 The party was making great progress and now there was only an hour and forty minutes left before the shroud buff ends. The labyrinth was more or less difficult if you did not have a soulbound like Sirius who could detect traps and actually try to activate them even if you detected it. Due to Sirius, the traps that would instantly kill or damage others was avoided beforehand. Adrian was really thankful for Sirius this time and he praised it every time that he manages to disarm a trap. He would also warn others that enemies were approaching. The enemies they faced were the same as the previous corrupted elementals but only more powerful. The corrupted earth and fire elementals became level 70 so they got status buffs but they only showed one at a time which made it easy for the group to dispose of them. The corrupted earth elementals now explode spores whenever they are defeated and poisons whoever was in the vicinity. Luckily, each party member has potions to cure simple status effects but are short in supply because they are more difficult to brew compared to regular potions that restore health or mana. The corrupted fire elementals was the most difficult to deal with as when they die, they leave a fire apparition that would charge towards them and inflict the target with a burn status. The upcoming enemies were not much of a threat because they come one at a time but they chip off the party's health points and status recovery potion because of the damage over time. Due to that reason, they were now running low on status recovery potions. If the dungeon boss was a monster that mainly dealt with damage over time status skills then they would be doomed with a prolonged battle. The good news is that Adrian leveled up 10 times with his soulbounds about the same. Veu and Solyle leveled up 2 times due to the experience points multiplier but they still pale in comparison to Adrian who has a 6 times experience point multiplier. They might not have broken a sweat due to the unique character of the labyrinth as it was not meant to be traversed like they did. 
usually when an entity enters the labyrinth, it would be charmed and be forever trapped into it but the free wraith con party just waltz right in like it was a vacation spot. The only downside is that they have to quickly finish the dungeon in the remaining time they have left which is one hour. With an hour left, they reached the middle of the labyrinth and saw nothing out of the ordinary. If someone were to actually describe the middle of the labyrinth, it would be ordinary. There was a fountain with that did not work as there was no water flowing from it. There was also a gazebo made of marble but it was stained with dirt due to not being properly maintained. If it were to be described it would be like an abandoned backyard of a house but in a place filled with flesh walls and corrupted elementals then this part of the labyrinth would be out of place. This would be the last part of the labyrinth but my seal is not located here as it is located under this place the wraith said. The wraith then walked towards the gazebo and disappeared. When the wraith disappeared, the three of them thought that they were deceived. The party then hurriedly went close to the gazebo and discovered that there were stairs leading down. Adrian was the first one to take the lead and because his soul-bound Kenlon could not fit, he polymorphed him into becoming smaller. Adrian led the way down the stairway and it felt like they were descending to another place as it felt like they passed by a barrier or something. When they reached the end of the stairs, they saw that it was a vast area where the floor was made of muscle. The floor even vibrated to maximize its creepiness factor. Adrian looked at Solyle to see if she was okay with this but then remembered that for kids under the age of 12, Traumatic dungeon layouts change depending on their age. The blood splatters are also non-existent for them. This made the game popular for underage people and not ruin the fun for older gamers. The fact that the game could distinguish age was in fact mind-boggling and amazing. The wraith was there to welcome them and said, This is the heart of the labyrinth and my soul is sealed in a relic here. The relic is guarded by an abomination that was created by Cristobal so be wary because it is powerful. Adrian the disseminated the information that the wraith told him as he was the only one that could understand them. They looked around but there was no boss monster around until they heard chains rattling. The party then heard a bellow in front of them. Steps that came from hooves then came next and then a giant entity that was three meters tall and held a giant axe. It was a minotaur. Monster, Asterian, Supreme Minotaur, Dungeon Boss. Level, 80. HP, 500,000 slash 500,000. MP, 50,000 slash 50,000. Description, a minotaur is a monster that is a hybrid between a man and a bull. It is unknown as to how their kind came to be as they are vastly different from bull demi-humans as minotaurs have the whole face of a bull with having the body of an adult male. Asterion was abducted by the mad warlock Cristobal from his previous dwelling and was brainwashed using torture to protect the seal that keeps his labyrinth from functioning. The party then immediately attacked as they did not want the boss monster to gain the upper ground. Adrian immediately used the third ability of his Bao Psyche armament. He shot three shooting stars towards the Minotaur but was surprised by the damage he dealt. You have dealt 9,128 damage to the boss monster Asterion. You have dealt 10,579 damage to the boss monster Asterion. You have dealt 9,873 damage to the boss monster Asterion. He was surprised that an attack with a piercing effect that negated defense only dealt damage in the 10,000s which means normal damage would only deal about a quarter if they hit it. The Minotaur then raged when it was unable to block the attacks that was sent to it and charged towards them. Adrian instructed Kenlon to ram it with equal force. Kenlon returned to his original form and met Asterion charge a few seconds later. Adrian thought that Kenlon would at least halt its charge by a little bit and he would slow it down using chrono lag. Ken Lon was straight up dragged by the unrelenting charge of the Minotaur so Adrian had to cast Chrono Lag for Ken Lon to escape. Ken Lon has received 6,457 damage. The charge alone decreased Ken Lon's health by half. Fortunately, the Minotaur did not stop its charge and did not attack Ken Lon when it flew away from it. The Minotaur crashed towards the stairway thereby destroying their only way to retreat. Adrian immediately ordered Cena to heal Kenlon as he instructed the others to bombard the Minotaur while it was still dazed from crashing. So Lyle immediately formed a fire tornado and launched it towards the Minotaur. The flaming tornado hit the Minotaur but it was not even phased or had the burn status. Fortunately, Adrian already applied three stacks of Nethirosbane on the Minotaur and only needs seven more for it to become permanent. Adrian immediately casted seven quantum space mines simultaneously since it was now possible to do so. The Minotaur was immediately hit with the weakened status before it could recover from its slight daze. The Minotaur recovered from its daze and it made a charging motion once again. The party was ready to avoid the charge but the Minotaur suddenly raised its head and right hoof simultaneously and activated a skill. The Minotaur stomped its right hoof and produced a tremor that shook the entire floor. 
Player Equinox has received 1,287 damage. Party member Veu has received 1,869 damage. Both Veu and Equinox received but Solile managed to avoid it because she used the fire element to levitate herself to dodge like what she did earlier. Adrian was about to stand up when he saw Giant Axe descending towards him. Adrian immediately used Chrono Shift to increase his overall speed and dodge the attack. The Minotaur blew its nose as if it was not satisfied with the result. It still charged towards Adrian despite the occasional bite and claw attacks that Sirius made towards it. Adrian did not know why it was so hell-bent on attacking him. Adrian enlarged his demi-gauntlets and used both soul essences and nether energy to empower his punch. The Minotaur also used a skill as its axe suddenly had a red glow. The gauntlet and the axe met and a serious shockwave erupted when both weapons clashed but Adrian was still knocked back until he hit a wall. The Minotaur still charged towards him even though it was receiving attacks from his party members and soul bounds. At this point there was only one thought that passed through Adrian's mind. Do not tell me that it is a unique boss equipped with its own special AI. 